Okay. We're officially streaming for the record. Check, check. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. And today we're doing the unthinkable. We got the fucking YouTube legend Shane Dawson in the building. And I'm very, very excited, man. I've become a huge fan over like the last six months, which I was thinking might be kind of offensive to tell you. But then I was thinking he's been making content for so long that it's probably kind of like a good thing that you can still to know that you can still be making new fans. Yeah, it was really shitty before. <laughs> Where, I, I see. I've looked around and I've seen that you, because you've basically like ridden every wave of YouTuber dumb even before I was cognizant of what was going on in the YouTuber space, which I find very interesting. Yeah, I I look back at some of the older videos and I um I like cry, I get really sad. It's really? embarrassing. It's that bad. Yeah, the like long hair. Are, I didn't know we were going already. This is awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. We just Wait, we just snap scared. into now it. I'm nervous. Okay. All well, right. I don't, you can't I don't talk about certain things. Yeah. Okay. Don't talk about like the the dead body in your trunk. Don't want to talk about that. Okay, so we're not. We shouldn't talk about FouseyTube. No, we should definitely talk about FouseyTube. All right. He said he might be coming later tonight as well. I have an Uber. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're the first. Number one, I thought you were gonna come with like a crew of like five people, and like half of them would be holding cameras because typically that's the position you're in in your vlogs. But when I opened the door, you were alone and you were rummaging through the trash. Yeah, I was looking for something. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing over there? Were you just throwing something away? So, okay, before I meet somebody, I get really nervous. I'm a self-conscious person. So I, like, I like go hide a little somewhere, and then I adjust my pants and my underwear and my shirt. I make sure I don't smell, and then you caught me doing that. Wow, over yeah. by the trash can. Yeah. I, I respect that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait, why am I here? This is crazy. This is like everybody in my life, nobody cares about me or what I do, but when they found out I was coming here, they were all like, wait, what the fuck? That's crazy. Really? Everybody in my life is a big fan. You're very respected. Why the fuck am I here? Oh, I appreciate that. I feel like you're a lot more respected than me, or at least a lot bigger than me. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, people always say every time I have like a YouTuber on, like when I had Tan on, when I had James Charles on, it blows people's fucking minds that I am aware of YouTubers, that I know of YouTubers, I'm interested in YouTubers. To me, it seems pretty obvious. Sorry, the second you said Tana, <laughs> just, you got a little triggered. I had like a triggering moment, but then I remembered how I found out about you, which was you having sex in front of Tana. Oh, yes. And then I like Googled you and your girlfriend and I watched a sex tape or a snap tape. I don't mm. know. I didn't pay for it. No, that's okay. Sorry. People have captured our content and just thrown it up on Pornhub. She, she pays like a firm that mo a lot of girls do where they go through all these sites like on a daily basis and search your name, try to remove any links that you don't want up there, et cetera. All right. Because of people like you, pervs like you, really. <laughs> I didn't jerk off to you. Oh, that's good. You know that 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 interests me. I'm not. I don't know if now is the time to get into that in okay. the in the conversation. But just like you know, being bi, yeah. do you masturbate to guys or girls, or like what's the what's the the schedule? Okay. You have like a Monday jerk off to the guy site. Tuesday switch it up. So I am addicted to porn. Wow. Uh, okay. I have been since I was a kid. Um, that's why. Okay. Honestly, on a real note, that's why I was always so confused, right? Because I was like, all right, I'm this guy who like likes to wear wigs and make stupid videos and dress in drag and stuff. And yes, I'm attracted to guys, but I also am attracted to girls and I like having sex with them, but I've never had sex with a guy. So it was this confusing thing of like, am I lying to myself? Probably even more confusing than if you were just gay. Because then at least you know, like, why the fuck do I not want to have sex with women? Yeah. I must be gay. Boom. That's it. Exactly. And every guy, every gay guy around me at the time was just like, they were so disgusted by the idea of a pussy. Mm. So disgusted by it. Do you think they're really disgusted or you think they sort of ham it up for like comedic effect? <laughs> gay guys are funny. <laughs> they like true. to joke around a little bit. Uh, no, they were disgusted, <laughs> offensively disgusted by it. It was, I don't know. But yeah, when, when I would watch porn when I was a kid, I would watch two extremes. I would watch Squirters, mm. Cytheria, Squirt and Queen. Okay. Uh, I had her on my podcast. She squirted. Um, but it was mostly blood. Mostly blood? It's a long story. I found she was, <laughs> I found her later on in her career. It had been a minute since she had done it. She was going to do it for me. It didn't really work. It was gross. But, it, you know, it's still a dream. To sort of just take a, a sidetrack thing with the with the squirting thing, yeah. I remember that there was a porn that someone showed me when I was much younger that was called, like, re reverse bukkake. 
and there was all these women squirting on one man's face. Where he's in a poncho? Uh, no, he's just like laying on a table. But then I remember um, that they were basically like, like I looked it up and realized that like the squirt was, is typically pee. That's controversial. <laughs> right, but in, in in the context of a pornographic movie, I think it's usually I've seen plenty of girls squirt, so I know it's not only that. But I think that the physical compound that comes out is urine, mostly anyway. Well, so the girl that came on my podcast said she had hers tested. I don't know what that means or how what the test is. Is it like a pool when you're testing for chlorine? Is there a dip? I don't. I, I love don't know. this idea. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I want to know more about that. She had her, her shit tested. That's fire. It was weird. So she went into the other room at my podcast. We were at the studio space. They've been shut down since. <laughs> but we were at the studio space, and she had to go into another room and do it. We just recorded the audio. It was weird. She brought her dog with her. She was very adamant about that, which was weird. And then she came out with a glass of it. And I thought I had a disease for a few months. <laughs> just from seeing it? <laughs> no, she handed it to me, and it was blood. And it was all over. And it got in my face. And, you know, I have bad cuticles. So it's in my fingers. You have bad cuticles? Yeah, I bite them. I'm a nail biter too, yeah. although I've gotten a lot better. Yeah. Wow, that's Anyways, crazy. I don't think I have anything, but I don't know. Damn, that's amazing. So I'm by. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that's fire. Um, how do we end up on that, though? I asked you like what you Bye. jerk off sorry, to. You yeah. were saying, oh, you're addicted to porn. Yeah. And you always have been since you were two yeah, or three? I think I've always, you know, I when the internet first came out, you know, Bang Bros was mm. or Bang Bus, really. and we all thought it was real. Not. I mean, I really thought they were leaving girls on, on the side of the road and shit. That is so crazy that that if that happened now, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. what would happen? Well, maybe nothing. But that but. presumably that ver that version of porn where you like they fuck a girl in a van and then leave her somewhere. Presumably that still exists because there's a lot of stuff in porn. Like, just the way they treat black men in porn, yeah. that is so racist. And the behavior would just be unacceptable in any other walk of life. It's super common for a porn star to be like, no, I don't fuck black guys. Or they charge more to fuck black guys. Stuff like that's crazy common. It is weird, too, if you think about it. Like, when you go to Pornhub, if YouTube had the same categories, <laughs> or even, even similar, you know right. what I mean? Like, little people, right. which is even nicer than the way Pornhub puts it. It's nice that they You know that what they I mean? Like, imagine that, if you yeah. went to YouTube and it was like... I'm not even going to say it. Right. You know? Like, if you, <laughs> if you were to be searching for images and then there was just, like, a black tab and everything you look... Because that's how it is on Pornhub. Or a straight tab. That would be considered so offensive. <laughs> but I'm the kind of person, if I'm looking at a porn site, that shit better be 100% heterosexual. Because if I see something going in the other direction, it just feels wrong. It's like a Spanish sentence in the middle of an all-English book, which that's, that's okay. Interesting. That actually wouldn't be that out of the ordinary. All right. But don't, do you feel that way in any way? So I watch a lot of um, homemade straight couples who are in love. See, I think <laughs> wow. I think I just okay. figured it out. I think my sexuality is based on, I don't know how I was born. Maybe I was born this way. But I think mine was based on um, a lot of issues. So I think I get turned on by seeing like couples like in love and like he like kisses her on the forehead. And then she's like, oh. Wow. That's what I like. Something simple that's real. That Homemade, simple. But do you think that that mirrors, like, you know, just like a healthy family environment that maybe you were sort of missing when you were, when you were growing up? I guess I could just jerk off to sitcoms. <laughs> <laughs> just like anything <laughs> with love in it. But you know what's really interesting is that what you just said is considered, like, extremely offensive. The idea that homosexuality could be in any way related to childhood trauma is right. something that I feel like has been sort of like pushed out of any sort of mainstream narrative. And I, I think that's largely because the evidence suggests that people are born that way. But I feel like maybe there's like almost this like, you know, this ignorance to the fact that maybe some people do sort of like develop that taste for what they do sexually in the same way that I'm sure my sexual, you know, preferences are in large part determined by my upbringing. Yeah. Even though they still fall on the heterosexual side of the spectrum. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody's on a spectrum. I think you're born, you know, and you're on a spectrum and some people are really far gay or really far straight. And then I think as you grow up, circumstances can shift it or, you know, a lot of like, so my boyfriend, uh, my boyfriend um, has had sex with girls before mm. and he didn't hate it. He said he liked it, mm -hmm. but he considers himself gay. And I say, well, technically you're bi. And he's like, well, no, no, I'm gay. So that's even confusing because I'm like, all right, well, so there is a spectrum, right, of like we're somewhere in there. Mm. But 
maybe it is controversial. I don't know. If listen, if I was a hundred percent gay and I knew since I was born, I would definitely be on the same train of like the born this way. Mm. Me personally, like I don't know. Like I remember having crushes on girls, crushes on boys a little later. I didn't like I was at four years old being like, I want to jerk off to just this. Right. I mean, I'm, I read Marilyn Manson's uh, biography, and I remember there was a part where, you know, they're talking about how he had this this um, grandfather who was like a real sicko, with like all kinds of weird bondage porn and people getting hurt and tied up. And, you know, probably, I, I think a lot of like cross-dressing stuff in general. And so Marilyn Manson was like going in his grandfather's basement and like digging around in these trunks full of like weird porn and straps and sex toys and all kinds of crazy shit and he was just you know digging around in that stuff and then you look at how he ended up it's like well it's not all that surprising he was exposed to some weird sexual shit from a really young age yeah that's not considered offensive but i think like if you were to say like if if marilyn manson were like a pretty straight-laced gay guy and you were to say like oh he probably like was influenced to become a uh, a homosexual due to looking at all this weird porn that would be considered crazy offensive which i don't know if that makes sense to me I think that's been kind of my struggle with, because I'm one of those people, I'm so open, I don't give, like, I'm so open-minded, like, my brains will fall out, that's what people have told me forever, I just don't give a fuck, like, mm. whatever you like, whatever you feel, whoever you are, I will call you whatever you want me to call you, I don't, I just want everybody happy, not be fucking pissed at me, <laughs> just, like, everybody happy, right? Right. But I do feel like there is this thing of, like, everybody wants a label on everything, and it's, like, controversial to even question, like yourself be like mm. i don't know i said it in my coming out video i'm like i don't know if I, I i don't know i'm confused and i got a lot of backlash like oh you're, you don't think you were born this way I'm like, i don't know right but why is it bad that i even say that i don't fucking know but isn't it funny that you could use your coming out video as like a meme within your own videos now yeah. whereas i'm assuming when you made that video it was incredibly you know torturous ex not not incredibly torturous but it was a big big decision that you presumably took very serious I made that video because I was high on painkillers because I had broke my leg. And wow. I was like... One I second. Chris? <laughs> Yo! Can you adjust, adjust the camera because he's kind of like out of the frame a little? Thanks. Okay. High on painkillers. So that's what made you gay was the Vicodins. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you know what? Yeah. <laughs> no, because you didn't come out till 2015, right? I had like a long struggle of figuring it out. Um, and I think, yeah, I officially came out. The first time I tried anything with a guy, it didn't go well. And I was convinced like, oh, wait, no, I don't, I don't like guys at all. I just like pictures of guys, not mm. real guys. So then I had this whole other journey of bullshit. So I finally realized, I was like, I started dating a guy and I was like, okay, this is working. I'm just going to say something. And then I didn't. And then I was... Pain pillared, pain pilled out at like 6 a.m. and I was crying about something and I just took my computer out and I'm like, let's just get this over with. And yeah, but I guess I wouldn't have done it without them. So without drugs, everything happened for a reason. Well, I know what that's like. I mean, I did acid and I like got a girlfriend, like got way more serious about my content, got a new store. Like I, I got so much more serious about my whole life because I did acid and it made me like tear apart my own mind and just like really look at myself from an outside perspective. And instead of like finding self-love in that moment i became you know very very critical of myself which i'm a very critical person in general but it made me think you know look at all these parts of your life you can't look at these parts of your life as someone who loves himself which you are you have to look at your life from the position of a critic yeah. and figure out like how do i really start killing it yeah no i mean that's i that's why i was nervous to come here i mean i a few years ago i not that you would have asked, but I would have been too nervous to come. I have a thing where I've been hated on the internet the whole time, right? By different people. <laughs> There's always a different section of people that hate me for like a year or two. And then, you know, whatever. Right now, uh, you know, there's still people that hate me. But that's the problem is I, at that moment, I was like, I, so many people hated me from all sides. And I already hated myself. So it was just like, I just have to, I just... Like at that moment, I was like, if I put this video out and my career's over, it is what it is. At least people know like the truth about me. I don't know. But in 2015, you couldn't have really thought you were going to get that negative of a reaction by just saying you're gay, right? Um, I, mean, I thought people would think I was using it as like a mm. a way to get, you know, sympathy points or something. Because yeah. like a bunch of people hated me. 
because I had this movie come out that people, some people didn't like, and a bunch of people thought I was you know, racist, homophobic, this, that. So I thought, oh, people are going to think I'm just like, being like, no, see, I can say anything because I'm part of the LGBT, <laughs> which is not the case. Right. I just was like, I don't want to like, I'm sick of this. If anything, I feel like the, the, the extreme left or like, you know, advocate, uh, ad, you know, activist type people, they're much quicker to eat them, eat, eat each other than they are to right. like, they're not typically getting off fired tweets about Roy Moore most of the year. Most of the year, they're criticizing other people that have extremely similar uh, political views as them. Yeah, and that's always been my problem. I just don't care about politics mm. at all. I couldn't tell you, which I should, I couldn't tell you anything. I don't know. Like, I just, I know people are assholes and some people aren't. That's all I kind of know. And mm. I kind of stay in my lane. But, like, that's that's also been weird. I mean, I don't know how you feel about that. But for me, it's so hard to, you know, people expect you, you know, or me as a YouTuber, oh, you have to say something about this thing that happened in politics. And I'm like, anything I say is, I don't fucking know what I'm talking about. So Right. No, I feel you because, like, I'm interested in politics i spend time you know i'll watch some videos here and there i'll read an article here and there but i don't really choose to like get into it myself on you know in the context of a podcast if somebody were to ask me about a specific thing how do you feel about this policy you know i'll, I'll answer it but i'm not going to go make a video about donald trump and part of that is because i feel like there's just a lot of people that know a lot more about politics that could do a lot better job of explaining things i do feel like you know Everybody has, you know, some sort of like burden upon themselves if they do feel strongly about something like throughout their election. I was telling my fans, like, you know, do not vote for Donald Trump, vote for Hillary Clinton. This is going to be bad. I think uh, today's uh, event with uh, Putin and Donald Trump has kind of proven that to be at least partially right, not to mention this whole entire presidency. But, you know, I just don't feel like I'm the best person to be getting that message out. I'm not the most educated on it. And I realize that my fans don't give a fuck. And I'm sure you probably realize the same thing, too, is that like the more political you get i'm thinking that you're like young fun loving fans are probably just going to be like shane we want to see some fucking fun stuff man yeah i mean and that's that's good because i feel like when i came out everybody expected me to be an activist mm. and i'm like uh <laughs> <laughs> i just wanted to like you know if i got caught sucking a dick in public it's not you know a problem right you knew. yeah um but i don't know uh, maybe as i get older but right now i just like i just want people to be like be whatever you want to be. Who cares? And then, yeah, the political stuff. Like, I did a video with Kathy Griffin, and then I thought I'd get a bunch of backlash from that because she's like, fuck Trump. But nobody really cared. I don't think your fun. your audience is, I don't think, the types who are going to really be, like, worried about something like that. If you did a video with Trump, then, okay, I think that would be an issue for a lot of them. Do you ever do an interview with him? Oh, hell yeah. That'd be amazing. I would be so... Do you think he's a soci... I've been reading up on sociopaths. Because I want to do a video with somebody. So I wanted to read up on what a sociopath was because that word gets thrown around a lot. It's crazy. Mm. Like it's so many people I think I know. Yes. Like the, the categories. Of, All like, these categories that you can rank high or low on. And like I forget there's a book I read about this that was really fantastic. I could find the link for you later. But yeah, like some okay, somebody like Steve Jobs mm. got involved in illegal wage fixing operations with Google while he was at the height of his fucking career that where they basically had this agreement that they wouldn't offer tech employees millions of dollars because they would just drive up the prices of salaries like crazy so they sort of had this little agreement we're not going to totally go off the rails and like have these employees getting paid millions of dollars if you are essentially like a billionaire or you have hundreds of millions of dollars and you do something that you know is illegal because you care so much about making your business fucking kill it on the stock market, then you're probably a sociopath. And I get it because I'm probably the kind of person that would do the same thing. Yeah. I have that like internal dialogue sometimes where I'm like, maybe I should start, you know, shipping pounds of weed back to the East Coast again. Like that was all right. I could use some extra money. Why not? But, but you also <laughs> sociopath, but it makes no sense. If I got caught doing that, it would be like, whoa, this idiot, mm. that, that aversion to like that, that desire to take insane risks. I feel like I've kind of squashed it within myself, but I see it in myself. See, okay. The scariest part about sociopaths is, and play along at home, guys, think about YouTubers or rappers or I don't know, people that you watch on TV and think if this applies to them. If something bad happens to them, mm. they don't care. And that's why they take big risks because they're not worried about guilt because they don't have it or worried about the repercussions because they don't really care about life. 
they are just interested to see what happens. Mm. Almost like, like for example, if I'm you know a YouTuber and I just had a controversy and I'm a sociopath, I don't really care about the controversy. I'm just curious, like, whoa, what's going to happen? Mm. How many people are going to make videos about this? Right. Like, is press going to pick this up or how's this going to pan out? This is interesting. Right. So Tana, Tana, like, <laughs> say. <laughs> This, this is the thing. Tana might not be enough of a sociopath to, you know, shoot up a school to see just what happens. But she might be the kind of person who would not really care that much if an event sort of went off the rails because she could see sort of the benefit of it. See, I don't think Tana's a sociopath because because she is one of the people that I was like thinking. I'm like, because I see, you know, her, Jake Paul, there's certain YouTubers, everybody's like, oh, sociopath, sociopath. Mm. So I was really delving into it. But the reason I don't think she is... It's like certain signs that aren't there, but also she does really overly care what people think about her, which mm. I don't think that's a sign of a sociopath. I also, I think if anything, maybe she's like a narcissist mm. or there's another, you know, category or of something that she probably knows that she is. Sociopath though is like next, next level. That's some like, like, you know, when you meet that person, it's mm. almost like a robot. Did you walk away from making all those documentaries about Tana feeling like, like who, who did you walk away feeling like was the most at blame? Because it's basically Michael, Tana, or the Marriott, right? Marriott's definitely not at blame for anything. I mean, okay, good. I called them and I was like, I called them while I was editing this thing. And every, first of all, everybody was mad at me because they're like, oh, you didn't fucking ask this or do this. And I'm like, you guys don't, like, I literally, the only reason I even did it was because the, I met these two girls and they were talking to me about their experience and I was all fucked up over it anyway. So I'm like, I'm at it, let, let me film this and show it to Tana. Because I was like, oh, I so those two girls that you met with at your house, that was before you even had the idea to do all this, this oh, whole yeah. big thing. Oh, okay. Interesting. I kind of had to fake that part because the way I met them, it was a whole thing, but like I, I met these two girls. They were great, by the way. It was crazy. It was almost like they were actors. It was weird. I'm like, this looks like I cast this, like this fucking perfectly spoken girl just with yes. her perfect sunburn. I was yes. like, what is this? this is oh crazy. my God, that was amazing. But You're making me reminisce about your content now. <laughs> <laughs> just because that girl did such a good job of like showing you that, like, oh, this is not like a victimless thing. Like, there's actually yeah, yeah. people who got fucked yeah. over here. She spent $700, you know, like, she, yeah. yeah. And I just wanted to film it and send it to Tana mm. because I was like, maybe she doesn't understand how fucked up this is, right? Um, and then I just, and then it just went off the rails. And then, like in a 12-hour period, I'm talking to Tana, I'm talking to Michael, I'm going to her house, I'm doing this thing, like. And then I'm like, well, I have to get it up fast, or else people aren't going to care. And I want to show the victims, and I want to. So I edited, you know, with my friend the whole thing in like two days. Like there was no time for planning or like, okay gotta fucking ask this question or this thing i don't know mm. did it literally like that um but anyways since you know i called the marriott i and they were just like we, they're like come on <laughs> <laughs> what i called they were like come on like, we book we like f fucking fifty thousand of these types of well, things every year they were even more like listen we don't even do this shit we have weddings like we do whatever and we trusted everybody to, you know, we thought it was a smaller event than it turned out to be. Like, mm. we don't fucking know who YouTubers are. We just trusted these people. Right. Whatever. But then I had dinner with Tana and Michael the other night. Oh, after all of this? That's the other thing. Sorry, I was getting like weird ASMR cotton mouth. I'm sorry if that sounds off. It's, if it sounds no, awful. I was kind of thinking about that at certain points too. I'm like, is he doing ASMR right now? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, I've been talking to Tan and Michael every day. Everybody's like, Shane, oh, you just put up the thing and you left and you, you just wanted money and views. I'm like, first of all, I don't make money on YouTube. I'm like blacklisted. My ads are fucking awful. So it's never about money. Secondly, I've been talking to these motherfuckers every day, 24 seven voice memos and text and video chats and all this stuff, trying to get everything figured out for the last two weeks, three weeks, I don't know. I think it's almost figured out. I helped get the refunds. Everybody has refunds now, um, you know, but I went to dinner with them and it was, I didn't film it, but it was next level. Like Tana was just screaming at him and we were in this restaurant and like <laughs> the waitress came over right as Tana was just like, fuck you, you fucking liar. And he's just like, <gasps> <laughs> holy shit. And the waiter is just like, it was, yeah. So, well, but what are they even still arguing about at this point? Because from my understanding, she's, not on the hook financially i think she has more she had more to lose 
Um, on a PR pu- level, for yeah, sure, publicly. yeah. Publicly. Mm. He had more to lose. I mean, he already lost everything financially. She, like, won't admit that. That's the thing. That's where I'm struggling. She thinks this is all some master plan, and, oh, he's hiding money. He's doing this. I'm like, he's a 20-year-old with a scarf. Like, he doesn't, he, <laughs> come on. On a segue. That he's rent, that's rented. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, get, cut him a break. That's one great thing about your series of videos is that when I rolled up, and I see the crowds of people, and I see him on the segue, I was thinking in my head, I'm like, Oh, okay. So I'm the only person here who thinks this is funny that he's on the segue. <laughs> and then, like, luckily later on, I found out that you and a lot of other people thought this was as funny. But there's like 5,000 14 year old girls near me, and none of them seemed to think it was funny that he was on a segue. That, by the way, thank you so much for the not clip. suing me or oh, not okay. copywriting me, <laughs> but for filming that stuff because your footage of Tanacon was so incredible. Like, I appreciate that. I use so much of it because it was from like the inside, but like that clip of, yeah, him on the Segway, um, you and the security guards who like, were oh just God. so not security guards. They were just like, you know, kids. Like, you go to any out. like, you know, community college and we're like, you three, <laughs> get over here. Your security guards tonight. <laughs> Isn't that so scary to think like if there was, cause that was what I was most afraid of with Tanacon, which is why I am part of the reason it got shut down. Cause I was mm. calling, like trying to call fire marshals, calling every talking to people at VidCon being like, we need to shut this down because like I've seen images of what security is. Mm. And if some crazy kid comes in there with a gun, like it's over. Right. Nobody can stop that. Hell no, those dudes were high as fuck. I was smoking blunts with them, man. The exactly. security guards were, because they're all like 19-year-old black dudes from the OC, so they all know about my channel and shit, and I'm the o- I'm probably the only person there out of all, out of Emma Chamberlain, they don't know who that is, they don't know who Tana Manju <laughs> is, they're like, Adam 22, they're the only person I know here, let's get high. I'm like, all right, fire. But then their <laughs> boss walks over, and they're like, giving me the blunt stuff. I was like, this is amazing. This is one of the best <laughs> things I've ever been involved in. But I mean, there were so many moments throughout that thing that where I didn't know how historic what I was taking part in was, yeah. which is interesting because yesterday with FusiCon, I kind of knew, like as it was going on, I was very much aware of like, oh, TanaCon was this big crazy thing and this is kind of just like that. Yeah, like, okay, you survived the Titanic, right? Mm. And then you walked right in to, uh, never mind, I was, mm. no, but when you're, another really bad situation. When you're talking <laughs> about the sociopath thing though, it's like, that was how it went in my mind. And my girlfriend was kind of pissed when we were going and stuff. And I'm like, listen, it doesn't matter if it sucks. It's going to be entertaining. Like, it could suck, but it's, gonna, it's still good for us. The only person I feel bad for is Fusi because for Fusi, if it sucks, then, you know, he's kind of screwed. He put See, his whole you're life not, on the line. You're not a sociopath because you thought that. Right. Yeah. I was still concerned about it, but at the same time, I'm like, damn, he, he chose to do this. All I can do is go and try to make a vlog of this whole thing. Now, what, ha- what was I found out about it? like two days ago or something. I didn't understand what was happening. I thought it was a joke because he tweeted me and it popped up in like the verified tab and he was like, mm. come to TanaCon 2. And I'm like, all right, this is clearly a joke. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> but then it was real. And then Keemstar, I saw him at a, at a thing and he was like, are you coming? Or like, what do you? And I'm like, is this happening? And then Drake, is Drake involved? Why is he the poster of it? Or what was... Okay, this is how I understand it. Is that so when Fusi came on my podcast, he was making all these bold claims and there was a ton of like he he told me off camera, he was like, I was just talking to six nine, he's gonna try to make it. DJ Academics is gonna come. I knew that DJ Academics was not gonna come like a day later, but you know, he was still like holding on to that idea. He's like, you know, I think J. Cole might come, I think Fusi or I think Drake might come, blah blah blah. The whole time I'm thinking, you know, like, you know, some of these guys get like hundreds of thousands of dollars to perform live. Like, why would they go to the Greek theater to perform for you for free. Like when you look at what Fousey did and then you look at how a normal show works, it's like normally you book it months in advance, you sell all these tickets for a good amount of money, you take that money, you pay the, the artist to perform, you sell merch, blah, blah, blah. Like it, it was, his whole plan was let's take all of these things that exist for good reason, like, you know, planning a show for months and paying the artists well. Let's throw that all out the window and see if I can fill this venue based off of nothing besides, you know, what he would say was like the message of peace and love. But I think like a more accurate reading might be his own ego. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I, I don't know. I don't know much about him other than, um, the video where he painted his hair, Mm. which Tattooed. I was watching for research because, I mean, this is going to go. Well, that was a brilliant. I, I mean, that those are some of my favorite videos was the ones he made about the whole fake hair tattoo saga. Oh. <laughs> that was great. 
<laughs> Wait, are you saying paint his hair on? Because I think that there he has he he did do like a thing where he got his hair sort of airbrushed, but then there was an entirely different scenario where he was basically at some kind of doctor or whatever, and she said, you know, we do hair tattoos, which is it's not that out of the ordinary. They take a really small needle and they just basically ding 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 and like create a hairline for you and do all the little things that kind of look like follicles. And I guess this is not totally out of the norm, but what he said is that the woman who offered him this service used like a regular tattoo needle. It was way too dark. It looked like a full head tattoo. So I think that then he went and got the whole thing lasered multiple times so that it would lighten up like crazy and then maybe even got it redone on top of the original hair tattoo, which is a little different than the, just the airbrushing, which is another thing that he did. Ooh. Yes. This is a very, very interesting man. That, that is... See that makes me like him because that's that's <laughs> fucked up. Like that's that. Uh, so here's the thing. I know I'm gonna go bald. I know it, right? Mm. And I yeah, first of all, you're not bald. You have hair. Why did you shave? It? Very thin in the front. I just wasn't really feeling how it was sort of starting to look. I was thinking about growing a big ass beard and long hair mm. and rocking a hat all the time, looking like a Forrest Gump type thing. You know. I always wonder about that when I see YouTubers who only wear hats. I always wonder. Because mm. I started going down that road, too. I'm on pills right now that are supposed to give my hair like an extra five years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I yeah. thought about taking those, but then I read that it makes you uh, nut less. I, see, they told me that, but then uh, it actually made it, me, it worse. <laughs> worse. as <laughs> You're grading the amount of cum you produce by like how bad it is. Like, Adam, it's taken over my whole life. I got no room left in my house. <laughs> Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I saw his hair tattoo video. I mean, I, and then he was homeless. Or, every time I see him pop up on YouTube, it's always something that, like, I know is probably pissing people off, but I don't want to, like, watch it because I don't, I don't, you mm. know what I mean? Like, well, when the, I see 25 minutes and the clickbait is pretty appealing, it still takes a lot to get me to click. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, he's going to be homeless, but, like, what does that mean? And yeah. he's not really homeless. And mm. But... When I saw the, the videos of him standing on top of cars, um, that, that to me was like this weird moment of like, okay, is he okay? And also like, is it bad that we're all just like watching? Like, I don't, is it like an Amanda Bynes thing? That sounds rude. Well, it, I don't know him. I'm just saying. He was on psych meds. Like he was on lithium and uh, what was the other one? Um, fuck, he told me. He said, oh, Lexapro. And he talks about that? Yeah. And he said that he was on those, and then he got off of them, and this is sober him, is what he's saying. Now, I, that kind of makes sense to me, like thinking about how people act when they get off pain med or off uh, antidepressants what and is, shit. What does he have? Or what, what was the... I don't know, bipolar or something. I mean, I don't know. Anyone See, who's like, if you've watched his videos, like I, I went through a weird phase where I watched a lot of his videos for a little bit, and like, you know, he's... He was one of like the first YouTubers I ever saw who would just sit there and weep in front of his camera for like 20 minutes and just make that a video. Dramatic ass music on it and shit. Like he's, I mean, really in a lot of ways, he sort of built up his fan base based on sort of like, you know, clickbaiting his own depression. Whoa. Hmm. The bipolar thing. I mean, I don't want to offend him or any anybody. I have a lot of mental illness in my family, my friends, me personally, a lot of, a lot of stuff. So I, I know... That to me make makes sense because when you are on a bipolar medicine and you go off of it, there is a lot of um, side effects of feeling very like big ideas, big plans, powerful. Nothing can get me down. I got this, and then that can actually lead to like mm. a disaster, which I guess it did. But I don't know. I don't know. And, but I think. It, but I think his intentions were probably actually really good. Mm. Like I don't think he went into it being like, "Oh, I want to have the next Tanacon. I want it to be a disaster." But he probably went into it really like, "Oh, this is going to help people. This is." It, that's like the sad part. Right, and you know the the thing that's unfortunate is that you know okay, it went on for about a half hour, forty five minutes. I went on stage and like yelled a little bit. It seemed like they sort of getting them into it. I seen like a couple different rappers who were like pretty small name wise go out and perform a song or two and that got an okay reaction and then boom it was just over i mean there was less than a thousand people there he said there was gonna be 5500 people there and it was going okay for that first half hour or so but i really don't know what would have happened if it went on for another couple hours and there was a bunch of people saying that drake was gonna come but i really i still don't believe that and i, I feel he said that he met drake 
and maybe I can get the full story from him later. He, because the night before he was in this club and he was, had it all as an Instagram story, like I'm looking for Drake. Where's you know I'm trying to find Drake in this club. Blah blah blah. He claims that he talked to him and that Drake told him that if you got two million concurrent live viewers, which is not going to happen, he had fifty thousand. That's impressive. Fifty thousand is a lot. Two million is absurd. But I mean that that was what he was suggesting. Keep in mind he never even made it into the venue. <laughs> like he wasn't even there when they cleared everybody out. Really? Where was he? Uh, back at the hotel. And then once it, once it, everybody left, he comes back and they wouldn't even let him near the venue. And that's why he ended up standing on top of that van and sort of preaching to everyone. And for the record, that, that van that he was standing on the top of was his Uber drivers. And he had met the Uber driver the day before and convinced him that he wanted to be involved in this FusiCon thing. And so the Uber driver was, is on top of the thing, just smoking the blunt with Fousey. And like the, 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 the roof of the fucking van is getting stomped in. And Fousey, I guess, told him that he was going to buy him a whole new, whole new van and everything. I mean, I don't know. See, this is where maybe I am a sociopath because... <laughs> I should be concerned, right? Like, okay, what's next? Mm. Like for YouTube, for YouTubers. But I am kind of interested. Mm. Like what really is, because now with YouTube, you're seeing like all types of people with power do things. Tanacon, Fousey Con, was that what it was called? That's what I'm calling it. It's like, what really, what is next? Mm. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I hope everybody's okay <laughs> with whatever's <laughs> next. <laughs> When you sit down in a room with him, somebody like him, and you're interviewing him and stuff, is do you have a feeling of like this? If I say the wrong thing, this table's flipped, or it, is it chill and calm? Not really, because I have a gun, and also this table's very heavy. Yeah, but I mean, no, I don't. I don't see him as the type to be violent uh, towards somebody like me or anything like that. It's more just. I mean, when he was sitting here the other day, I didn't want to like be too critical because I didn't want to sort of take away any of that energy that he had going in terms of what this was going to be. If he does show up tonight to do a, a, a post interview, I think I'm going to have to go a little bit harder in terms of sort of trying to point out, like, bro, a lot of this shit didn't really make any sense. Blah blah blah. You know. Are you going to bring up the the medicine stuff? I mean, that was already kind of addressed. Like, he brought okay. that up. But, yeah, actually, that was a good point, is that maybe I should bring that up. Just in terms of, like, kind of trying to decipher, like, what his motivations were going into this whole thing and, like, what the ideal scenario was. But, uh, you know, one defining difference between TanaCon and FusiCon, I think, is that the TanaCon fans went there with a very specific goal. They wanted to meet their favorite creators. And then they had a horrible time because they got burnt in the parking lot. With the FusiCon thing... I did not get it that a lot of those kids were having a bad time. To me, I feel like they went, like, largely went into it knowing that oh, a yeah. shit show was very, very likely. They probably weren't going to meet any of their favorite creators. Also, it was no money, and nobody, like, flew in from Denver. Oh, yeah. No, so, they went going to see a shit show. Yeah. I almost, like, I was at dinner, and I was like, should we go to Fousey? <laughs> like, because, like, just, like, as a, because nobody's, I hope nobody's going to get hurt. I think it's just going to be more, like, kind of interesting. Mm. Yeah, Tanacon was different. That, I genuinely, I know I, like, joke about it now, the Tanacon stuff. I genuinely, I was really, really pissed. I was pissed. I was sad. I was angry. I was, like, in a really fucked up place over it, which is why I did the docuseries, because I, like, mm. needed to do something to, like, fucking work through my shit. Because mm. um, it was the most fucked up thing I've ever been a part of. You know. See, when I saw it happening, when I saw you and James Charles sort of uh, being vocal about it on Twitter, my first reaction was to be like, oh, like, how are they going to hate on Tana? Like, you know, her shit is fucked up right now. But like, you know, it's just I'm, I feel like I have such like a loyal spirit that I couldn't say anything negative, like anything seriously negative about Tana. But then as I kept reading it, I'm starting to realize like, damn, like Shane has such a strong connection with his fans and really gives a fuck about his fans that you took this as like a very very personal affront to how she sort of manipulated and used your fan base. And once I saw it like that, I'm like, actually, this makes a lot of sense. Wow, Fusi is here. Yo, I was driving with my girlfriend. Get over here, give him a mic. Please get a fucking chair. I was. I, I just want to. Yo, watch. Shane, Shane. First of all, I love you. Thank when you. I reached out to you, um, it was with good intentions because I knew if there was somebody who was going to tell a real story, it was you because you weren't going to look for like something that would help you in case it did turn into a shit show. 
So the reason I reached out to you was because, not because like, oh my God, Shane Dawson is the king of the internet. I want him to do this. It was like, if I want somebody to tell the story with a clean heart, it's gonna be Shane. Right. So I was driving with my girlfriend right now. My dog's farting in the car, trying to find a place to shit. I see your tweet go live. I'm like, babe, they're talking about me right now. Oh. So she just dropped me off right here and I came to say hi. Hey, how you doing, bro? You know what? Do you I want us to get another mic and a chair so you can if sort Shane of. Shane doesn't mind. Chris, I know you I let's get another mic please. and a chair. Yeah, I think Sh please. Shane. Can we can know Shane likes hug? stuff like this. Yes. Okay. Because Shane, can I? Tell I you was something? gonna tweet you right after I left here can to be like, something? "Hey, can I tell you something?" Yeah. Gang, gang. I spent, can I sit on your lap for a second? Tell the chair. Come. <laughs> I spent so long. I'm very into on this. YouTube, feeling like people like you. And so, all the you know the like, the popular creators who like really support each other really didn't like me because I was a persona who I wasn't. I was Fusi too. I wasn't Yusuf, right? Right. So as a person who goes through what I go through, I always try to find a way to show people my true self. I took, I woke up this morning, since everyone's gonna wanna know how did you feel, I wake up, and you know how everyone's like, he's gonna crash, he's gonna crash? My girlfriend's staring at me, and I just start bursting into tears. And she's like, baby, I love you. Don't worry, it happened as it was supposed to happen. Everyone loves you, just give it time, your story will be out there. The bomb threat was out of your control. The event was going perfect. Adam22 was on stage shouting it out. FaZe Rug was on stage shouting it out. Keemstar was on stage supporting it, texting me saying, you really pulled this off. And I know everyone's confused right now because things got hot in that argument with between me and Keem, but me and him are texting right now. I'm supposed to meet him tonight. That was fire. When he came through the crowd and you so, were like, you! you know, <laughs> but the first thing I, I said to him, that. the first thing I said to him, right now the video's going around viral where I told him your videos made me want to commit suicide. But what they didn't see is when I looked at him in the beginning and I said, I want to say this dead to your eye. Everyone was calm. I said, I love you. I was like, we hated each other for so many years, but I genuinely love you. And I brought you here today you did start to show that, the yeah. world that instead of it being Fusi versus Keem, why not Fusi and Keem? Now, there's one huge discrepancy going on in all this, which mm -hmm. is the diss track. I didn't, it's not a diss track, and I didn't get a chance to explain it on stage. And that's what hurt me so bad. So there was a YouTuber today who I woke up, I'm off social media today, obviously, because I'm protecting my sanity and energy. And I'm just waiting for, you know, for the story to tell itself. There's a YouTuber who's my friend who tweeted very malicious things towards me. Instead of replying on Twitter or anything, I texted another friend who had his number. I called him in the car right now. And I said, as your brother and your friend who I've hung out with you on countless occasions, I would have appreciated if before you went on tweeting about what had happened, you reached out to me, asked how I was doing because it's a, a lot of things going on right now, and asked me personally what happened and had me explain to you because you're formulating your opinion right now based on the unknown. You saw one layer. Everyone's going off saying this is a failure, Tanacon, not knowing that Ticketmaster and Live Nation feel so bad about what happened because they know it was doing so good. They want to help me throw an even bigger and better one now and put money behind it. What? Okay, so okay. as an outside perspective, yes. so I'm going to, a couple things. Number one, I never hated you. And that's mainly because I, I'm so out of the loop that. Like I said earlier, I don't know how much you heard. I saw your hair video. <laughs> like, how is it in I'm real life? Does it look in real life? It looks good. It's, I must have seen an old one. You want to feel it? It's not real. There's no hair. Like it's a well because there was the airbrushed hair. Whoa! Sorry. Wait, sorry, I want to try sorry, not to. There was the airbrush. Oh my god, that's so fucking it's, smooth. Uh, that's it's crazy. SM, it's, it's SMP. No, it's it's oil because I have to. Oh. It's SMP. It's scalp micropigmentation, and I'm not scared to say it because it was an insecurity of mine for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got something to make it so I don't have to walk around like, you know, it's not to say I have hair. I don't. I lost it. I took medications so many years of my life. I lost it, mm. but. This makes me feel good. Yeah. So I, I think it does look better than probably what it would look like without it, to be honest, because it just you. establishes the hairline. Thank you. You know, can, yeah, I, can I say one thing before you ask me anything you want? When I watched the whole Tanacon thing you did and everything, everybody watched it. It was amazing. It was beautiful storytelling. Because what you did, you had no intent in what you were trying to do. You were trying to tell the story. Yeah. There was no profit, no gain coming from you. You were friends with these people. You were a part of this event, yet you still said, I just want to tell the damn story. So the fact that I'm now sitting here and I'm driving and I hear you and you guys end up talking about me, a lot of people, and it's upsetting me so much, and that's why I'm off social media, 
I don't like when people try to self analyze somebody's mental health mm -hmm. on such a grand scale. Yeah, no, it's agree. so disheartening seeing so many people tweet saying, yo, I used to love you, but you're manic, you're off your meds, you should be in a psych ward. They didn't stare at me face to face like you are right now, and I feel energy between me and you right now. What they're calling manic, I'm just calling passionate. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I do tell the whole story of the people involved, how I did meet Drake, how Lenny S, DJ Khaled's manager, was the one mentoring me through this whole thing, how so many big people were supporting me, and this still failed, showed me why it was supposed to happen last night. Anyways, I'm gonna sit back and let you do. Can I get a Diet Coke? He brought that. Oh, he's smart. I believe, fuck, water? I, I, I would say water. They might have waters on the front. Okay, anyways. I Chris? I had one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for not minding, man. I just, Shane wants one too. I was like, you know what I'm learning in life? So I, I gave up the last year of my life. And I wouldn't dare show up to YouTubers. It's not even about you not hating me. My mind and heart convinced me that you did before I even knew if you did or not. And I felt that way with all of YouTube. Because mm -hmm. Fousey 2 became such a bad name. But the whole time, I'm just trying to figure out. So this morning when I broke down and crying, it was because I told my girlfriend, who I love so much, I said, I was so scared to create for so long. I felt like this was the time. And I did it with good intentions. I was ready to show the world, and it still backfires. And she reminded me, she goes, don't worry. She goes, God is building you up for the next one. You're so, like, anyways, it, that gets deep, so. I think, so here's the thing. And this is why I was actually going to reach out to you after I left here. I was hoping I'd run into you. I'm happy that you're In the here. alley or something? Yeah, yeah. something. By the trash <laughs> you should have seen his face. Oh, um, <laughs> because the reason I brought up he said you talked about it publicly with the mental illness thing, which is why I was apprehensive to bring it up. But then because you had talked about it, I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it almost felt like, is it wrong to watch this person possibly be going through something? And we're just like watching him on this car. I didn't actually see. So I didn't know anything, right? Like, I didn't know. Like, Keemstar told me about FuziCon. Three days ago. Hate dies, love arrives. Not Fousey Khan. Oh, okay. It's not a Tana Khan. Well, I didn't you don't know. like that name? I feel like I've been kind of propagating no, no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not about me. So I didn't know anything, right? Except for you tweeted me, but you said something like Tana Khan too, or it's something, right? Right. So that's all I knew. So when I saw the clips and I saw the, the screenshots and all of that stuff, and then when I hear from a friend last night, like, oh, I think he's dealing with something, and then you said that, that's when I get into this weird place because a lot of people in my life suffer from a lot of things, that bipolar being one of them. So I was in this weird place where I'm like, I don't even know. It's so, I feel so uncomfortable talking about this publicly. Mm. But we can have a private okay, conversation if you want, but yeah, I'm for, okay with it being public. For me, I, I know you say you have a story to tell, right? Mm. And I'm curious to hear what that is. For me, it almost seems like the story is YouTube is making it so that we're all dealing with our things publicly on a scale that's like making it worse. So for me, the more I talk about how much I hate myself in my videos, the more I hate myself. The more I talk about how I feel fat, the more I feel fat in real life. The more, and I've been on YouTube forever, right? And today I had like a minor mental breakdown. I was cutting my hair with like a disposable razor because I hated my hair. And then I was like, it, I just had a bad day. Mm -hmm. I came here <laughs> being like, dude, I don't know if I want to do YouTube anymore. Like I really did have that wow. thought today because I was in such a dark place. Wow. And I didn't want to cancel on you because I'm like, I got I can't fucking cancel. I'm not going to cancel. So I, I came. Appreciate that. Um, of course. So when I heard about the thing with you, it made me feel for you as somebody who deals with similar things being like, that's why I don't even know what stance to take. Cause if I support you, am I supporting you going through something publicly and that's not good? Mm -hmm. But what I do support is like, you just being honest about everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so my mom was terrified yesterday because after the, she's watching the live stream, I tell her, mom, I have Drake coming, all this stuff. Like, this is about to be the biggest night of my life. This was going to be the biggest night of my life because of the night before when I did meet Drake, right? When I, I haven't even told that story yet. People are still like, oh, I'm he's, very excited he's for that just story. making up shit now because they didn't hear the story. Well, my mom is terrified because I'm talking with such energy because obviously there's a lot going on. She's like, Habibi, slow down. It sounds like you're going crazy. And it hurt me so bad. So I talked to her as my mother this morning. We just had a FaceTime call. And I said, Mama, listen, 
I have never been more calm, more grateful, more happy, more blessed in my life. I go, I just need you as my mother to trust me in this right now. I know it looks weird from the outside, but I was like, as soon as my speech gets out, you'll know what my intentions were. So right now, the news, everybody, all they see, prank, bomb hoax, YouTuber on top of car, screaming, fight. I sat on that car. I didn't even think of that. The prankster got pranked. And That's kind of like an important. No, no, but you were. Yeah. You know, you kind of got famous for the original. That's what they were trying to say. Like, oh, it was a, p- a prank at the Greek, uh, Greek theater. Um, so, and why that happened, it's so crazy because there were certain people who hit me up to ask if they could come who do attract certain kinds of energies. Mm -hmm. And because of what this event was about, Hate Dies, Love Arrives, no matter what quarrels we had in the past, I invited them, you know, and they were there and people are saying, I don't know the full story yet. Uh, the police are looking into it, all that stuff. But yesterday on that car, and you'll see it, I have videos. I gave speeches to the kids about my year in my mom's basement being suicidal, how I felt like a failure, and how the one time I restored my faith in God and chose to stand up and get my voice back and do what I feel like I was born here to do. I want to be a motivational speaker. I want to create self-help books. I want to help kids who message me saying, I'm depressed, I'm this, but I can't talk to anybody in my family because they'll say like, They'll say, what I went through, I'm 28 now, I went through all that. Mm -hmm. So I was on stage, uh, the stage being what was so beautiful that God created me on top of a car, people surrounding me just listening. And I talked about equality, I talked about love, I talked about, and every message I put out there, I said, I don't care what skin color you are, I don't care what religion you are, I don't care your sexual orientation, I don't care if you, you like girls, you like guys, you like neither, I don't care what label life puts on you. I want you here today out of love. I want to help y'all. I gave off the Louis Vuitton shoes that were off my shoes, off my feet. I brought all the stuff that the kids had been seeing me wear. This was calculated. All the stuff I've been wearing where kids look at, oh my God, he has Supreme, he has Gucci. I looked at a guy dead in the eye before things got crazy and told him I was going to give him this Rolex off my wrist. What people I mean, call Tana would never. What people <laughs> call crazy is me literally just trying to show a true sense of authenticity to the world and being like, don't like my speech. Everyone thinks I did this for this song, right? This I, I released a song against. Um, it's not even against because rice gum is used as a metaphor in oh, the you, song. You put it out. And the music video. Oh, I didn't because realize Because I that. had a plan, and it was going to happen whether the event failed or went through. The only thing I didn't get to do was invite Rice Gum on stage. He was going to be there? No. Oh. And I just saw in the documentary that Keem is making that he said, like, Fusi has no idea what he was doing, and that's fine. But here's what my intentions were. Mm-hmm. I was going to start with Keem. I was going to invite him on stage in front of the world, everybody watching, and say, look, brother, we hated each other. We had fights. Tonight is the night we end that, and I want publicly in front of the world to give each other a hug and say, let's work together and not against each other. I was going to call up Banks. I gave Banks my damn word through text, and I said, if you come, you won't regret it. And I bet right now he hates me, and it hurts me because he doesn't know because obviously he, I haven't got a chance to talk to him. I was going to invite Banks up and say, Banks, when I spent that year in my mom's basement, I would message him for support. Hey, brother, I want to start posting on YouTube again. Do you have any ideas? He would reply right away. I actually got a lot. He would get busy and not be able to reply. One time I got to such a low point, I said, brother, can I be a part of Clout Gang? Laughing. He didn't reply. But I understood there was a bigger picture in that. And I was going to say, Banks, as a brother, I love you, and I hope we can be friends after this. Then I was going to invite Rice Gum on stage. After I gave my speech that I intended to, that my speech was about literally a message to the world. I wanted everybody to come to this event in their country's jerseys, flags, and everything. It was a message to the world. I was going to strip myself off my shoes, throw it in the crowd, my socks, my shirt, and just present myself to the world and be like, what are we doing? Why are we spending so much time putting each other down? Why do we spend time hating on each other in Instagram comments? Why do we, before we even look at somebody's intention, choose to hate and put them down before we choose to understand and love them? Mm. I had a purpose yesterday. And I was going to end the night by pulling up Rice Gum. He wasn't going to be there, I'm guessing. But I was going to say, Rice Gum, Brian, my brother, who I did the Rice Gum punch. And that, yeah, I messed up on that when that happened. But I was going to be like, you were the king of diss tracks. You have so much power. But as your brother, you called me irrelevant on the internet one time. And one, for that, I want to thank you because it fueled my fire and it got me off my mom's basement. 
But two, what he didn't understand is I chose to be irrelevant for that last year, whatever the kids call it these days, because I didn't feel like I was responsible enough to handle the power that comes with relevancy. As somebody who's done fake pranks, as somebody who's done wild vlogs and clickbaited his whole career, I know how to be relevant. But I also understand that sometimes being relevant puts you in a very dark place because you're putting out content that's not you. Mm. You're portraying an image that's not you. You're doing things that you morally don't believe in, but because the views and the AdSense dollars are there, you continue to do them. So I was going to tell Rice to his face, you spent your whole career telling the world why certain people should be stopped with hate. But tonight, I want you to shift that this person should be stopped and explain to the world why this person should keep going, but in the right direction mm. and why we should support people. So I was going to say, for the culture, Brian, and it was supposed to be a fun moment with Banks and Keem and everybody on stage, for the culture to end diss tracks. I made a song to celebrate you that I want us to rejoice in, to not end rice gum, because I want rice gum to succeed for years to come and I want to be by his side, but to end the era of hate and diss tracks because my self-destruction started after the rice gum event where I did the fake punch. But don't you think people are going to see you putting out a diss track as a way to end diss tracks and just say that you're being self-serving and that you just want to have the last word with the diss track? I would have given him the mic. I, I trust me. I spent the whole week thinking about things like this. I was gonna give him the mic and say whatever you want to say about me. You know whatever you want. But it wasn't a diss track. The song is supposed to be like, you know, like sometimes you release art and you don't want to have to explain it. So if you click that video like my friend did and you hear Rice ain't got no spirit, got no deeper layer, one ghost rider, you're like, why is he hating? And I asked my friend on the phone. I was like, brother, did you read my description or did you just listen to the song? He didn't even read the description. He told me he did, I don't think he did because the same stuff he was trying to preach down my throat, I said in the description. I explained why I wasn't trying to put Brian down. I explained the video in the description, but people still are listening to it and not looking deeper into what does this line mean? What does this line mean? J. Cole's KOD album, I hated at first because I was like, why is he rapping about drugs and alcohol when this whole time he's been against this stuff? Until I listened to it four, five, six times. And I was like, I get what he's doing, you know? And I understood how he was trying to deliver his message without having to tell you, you should spread love. You should spell it sometimes. And I was going to say this line to Rice. I was going to be like, at your age and like your character, I know that the only way you know how to communicate your feelings to people is through diss tracks. So as a person who wants to, you would be able to look at as an older brother, this is the way I chose to communicate with you to try to get him to understand what I'm trying to say. And when I do have a sit down with him, because as I told Keem, I texted Banks a video this morning and Keem. I said, I know tensions got high yesterday, but just as I promised you guys, I wanna sp keep spreading on this message of killing hate and spreading love. And I hope I get a chance to sit down and explain to you guys face to face. Do people hate you? I never, so I'm out of the loop. The mm -hmm. prank, I didn't even know you were a prank. I didn't, Originally. the whole prank community, I was mm -hmm. so like, mm -hmm. I was in such a dark place anyways, I wasn't really watching. YouTube during that time period. Um, I was on painkillers, you remember. Oh, that'll do it. So I don't perceive you as somebody that people hate, mm. but may, I'm also probably wrong. But like when I see you on Twitter and even when Keemstar was telling me about the, your convention and I saw the tweets, I didn't see, I didn't get the sense. I got the sense of people being like, ooh, I don't think you should do this. Or like, ooh, you, feeling like You got to remember bad. that like two years ago, Fousey was like what Jake Paul was like three mm -hmm. months ago on Drama Alert and stuff in the sense cool. that like every Drama Alert was like, Fousey fucked up. Fousey Drama, did this, you know? YouTube made me want to like, I literally lived and breathed with thoughts of suicide in my head 24-7. Because last time I was in LA, when this all popped off, Instead of now, I have like a group of 30 friends and family who I paid to fly out here, paid for their stay, paid for everything. Their flight was out today. I said, I need you guys not to leave and just stay with me as your brother because I need love right now. Because the mistake I made last time in LA, I was isolated and by myself because that's what depression and bipolar mm -hmm. can do, especially if you don't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. So while I was going through these mental breakdowns, instead of having my girlfriend kissing me, trying to understand and me understand, I didn't love myself back then. I would self-sabotage myself and just sit and read Twitter and read YouTube. Mm. And it got to the point I was hated on so bad that the way things were lined up, for example, there was a, a supporter of mine, his name was Efren, rest in peace. I'm still in contact with his father to this day. 
Efren sent an email to my email, and his father did, and he said, my son is battling cancer, his dream is to see you. I booked my flights and I flew down there. This happened at the same time, everybody was hating on me. So instead of the world trying to see an intention of what I was doing, it got spinned off as literally the channels, and I'm trying to spread love now, I'm not gonna name them by name, Multiple channels spent months parading the idea that Fusi used a young teenager with cancer for his self gain to get out of the hate. When I'm on his bedside, I'm talking to him off cameras. I'm still in contact with his dad. We still talk about his son. Literally, I started my first motivational tour in Australia, tour in Australia just last week before this whole thing started. I'm on stage, my first ever tour, Melbourne, Australia, and I say, at the end of my speech, my show was supposed to end 30 minutes, I never got the memo, so I kept going. And I was like, I have time to kill. Does anybody wanna come on stage who needs help with something? A boy stood up. I joke around to the audience and say, oh, he's probably gonna talk about why a girl doesn't answer his DMs or why he sucks at Fortnite. I joked around. Comes up on stage, teenager, tells me his father just passed away with cancer, he himself just got diagnosed with cancer, he sleeps with a knife by his bedside, and he, like, I'm his support system. I broke into tears and hysterics right then and there, and in my head, sadly, the first thing I was thinking is this is so surreal, I already, like, because I have evil thoughts, people are already gonna think this is, like, planned. I even judged his intention and asked myself, is what he is saying true, because it was so unpredictable. I invited him and his family backstage, I talked to them, I didn't put it in the video, off camera, private conversation, and we were in tears. His brother hugged me, his brother's wife hugged me, the kids hugged me, they thanked me, and it showed me that I have a bigger purpose. But the problems that I had in the past is I allowed my bigger purpose to be stopped by allowing the opinions of others to define me. So right now, the internet's probably saying a whole bunch of shit about me, but instead of spending my time looking at it, I'm surrounding myself with good energy, with love, and filling my head. As you know, somebody who struggles in friend struggle, you gotta feed yourself the energy you wanna live by. So instead of reading and believing, I'm a piece of shit, I'm a failure, I should kill myself, I'm manic, I'm this, I'm telling myself, I'm compassionate, I'm humble, I'm caring, I, I love everyone around me, I try to treat people with respect. I'm trying to train myself now to be the person who I've always wanted to be. You know, it wasn't easy going through what I've been going through. Let I me, just got off my medications recently. Let, let me ask this. Sorry for talking so much. No, it's okay. Let, it really, it's I, like I think this is an important question. The, so you tried to do this event. It, it looked like it was going to be at least a moderate success. It got taken out by something that, you know, probably we realistically could have expected that somebody was going to fucking call some bullshit in. <sighs> I had no idea. You know, yeah, I didn't think of it like that. But now that I think about it, I'm like, damn, 50,000 people watching. I'm not really that surprised. Some dickhead decided. 60,000 people watching live before the event started. Crazy. That wasn't the actual event. Right. OT Genesis was backstage. Mena was backstage. Dipset was arriving soon. Wi-Fi's funeral was Styles P. Soon. I met Styles P Styles from the locks P for the first time sent there. Me a Very video. exciting. Right? My boys sent it to me because they knew how, how bad I felt yesterday. Styles P sent me a video and said, Fusi, my brother, my love is with you. Styles P. I like that. That's you know what I mean? Me. Why did you do it in such a short amount of... After the Tanacon thing, mm -hmm. my first reaction was like, no matter who you were, right? I didn't have any backstory of you or beef with you or anything. Mm -hmm. You're just, you know, a fellow a peer, right? So I'm seeing that. And I'm like, who the fuck would even, if they had a billion dollars to do it, attempt another thing so close like with such a little amount of time like why not why not do it right and take a long time to make it work and get everybody's schedule aligned and do all that thing and have a success why did you why did you feel like you had to like oh i can have I, to do it can i week? tell you honestly and yeah. this is gonna be embarrassing the internet's gonna laugh at me for this mm -hmm. i had a nose job scheduled for the 19th that's my birthday Sorry. is it happy birthday mm -hmm. happy nose day <laughs> <laughs> Happy 21st birthday. A nose no, job? That thing looks fine. I'm not doing it. Oh, okay, good. I'm not doing yeah, it. I don't know. That's how life works. Right. Oh, Yo, shit. What's up? Keemstar in the fucking <laughs> building. Chris, oh, can we get another oh, mic? This is <laughs> the best day of my life. What is going on? Oh, my God. Chris, let's get one more chair and one more mic. Pull up, pull up. Let's see if you can also take maybe your more investment. Do you see how now, like... Live stream lit. What am I going to title this? I don't know. Now we have a chance to sit down. Grab the small chair. I said, instead of us yeah. going at it from different sides of the internet and trying to manipulate the narrative, let's talk. 
And that's what I feel like is happening now. Keem pulled up, the energy, he felt that he's here. What's up, Keem? What's up, man? How you feeling? I was watching the stream. I Me was... and you were planning on talking, and I figured, let's just get it done now. I believe it, baby. I still can't that see that camera. Question? We got to pull that out. Why yeah. it in the week, or should we hold on? Yeah, I mean, that's... that's so I was supposed to get that on the 19th. I'm not anymore. Keem with the Social Blade shirt, too, by the way. I like that. That's right. Why is it red? Sorry. Why uh, is it red? It should be green. Yeah, I man. <laughs> I, got, I got every color. Keem just, Keem just pulled up in his red shirt, red hat. He said, what's up, baby? <laughs> so, woo. Hasn't even taken his glasses off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. first off, before we start, um, no bullshit. And I texted you this before I even made it public because it was a personal thing. Tensions got high yesterday. Me and you were both there for positive reasons. And you know we both believed in it. And because the tensions got so high, the negativity, the energy, and I was obviously, I had a frustration as I knew the song was going to ruin the meaning behind what was supposed to happen. And I was so frustrated on that car that I took it out and I did take it out on you. Well, I don't know if 100% I believed in it, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I have a, I thought it was going to be a shit show. But I'm uh, glad to hear that no. everyone thought it was going to be a you shit show. Dang. But Anything I mean, that's flickering in the background. Okay. That time. okay. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. But I was, what I said is that I would get people involved. I would tell other YouTubers and I would personally go and I would support it. Mm -hmm. And in the process, you know, we're doing a mom's basement with Shane Dawson. You know, obviously the Tanacon series is the, the greatest thing ever. I was heavily, heavily inspired by that. Mm -hmm. If there was no Tanacon videos from you, I wouldn't have done this. And I was like, if he's trying to do an event in like five days or whatever it is, I have to create a documentary, right? Um, but the thing is, is, I feel like you understood that I was just trying to capture reality. And then once you realize that it flopped, what once you realize that it failed, you knew that the story was going to be that, and then you tried to lash out on me. Um, my lash out was internal anger that I had held in for years that just decided to come out there, and again, I apologize for that. But one thing I want to say, I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say to you, and I'm going to say to you and to the people of the internet, Hate Dies, Love Arrives did not flop. It was a great success. It didn't go in the way I intended it for it to happen, but it went in the way I needed it to happen. Because like I said, I don't know if you heard it, Ticketmaster and Live Nation feel so bad about it being a bomb threat, me investing all my money, me doing this with good intentions. I explained to them why the song was being played, because obviously they're not going to allow me to host an event and end it with hate. But they knew it wasn't a song about hate, because I got to explain to them, which I didn't get to do to you. Um, and I trusted that I didn't have to explain to you before the event because when it happens naturally live at the event, you would understand. But they're now helping me make the next one, whether it be August 15th or October 15th, it'll always land on yeah, the Yeah, but do you think people are going to show up? 100% because what happened in that circle is full of so much love and energy that it's just going to be even bigger and better. I think there was probably about 1,200 people there. You said that there was under 1,000, right? Probably 1,000 would be a Police safe bet. Police reported 1,500, and the main events and artists hadn't even started coming in yet. You know, it's hard to get to the Greek theater. The event was slated to be sold out at capacity. So it was, regardless of that, it was a success to me because let's say I did get on that stage. Let's say I was on there with Drake, but yesterday, it being shut down and the people still gathering around, and now me, you, Shane Dawson, and everybody are now in one room talking about it, Adam 22, I see this as a giant success because the whole movement gets to continue. We're not gonna spend here now, I'm not gonna go back to wherever I decide to live in my life, whether it be with my parents or a house in LA, and be like, I have a grudge against Keemstar now. I don't care how the documentary turns out or anything, I'm going to do everything I can to fix the, this. The thing is, is you, you said Drake was coming on if you had mm -hmm. two million concurrent viewers. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just, n nowhere's even close. We had 60,000 viewers before the event started. Two but million viewers. Two million would, would be like the world record, It would right? have happened. By far? No, the world record is by Red Bull. It's three million. I'm sorry, I'm looking at encyclopedia of the YouTube world. But no. uh, from Red Bull, a, a skydiver, whatever. So, like, it would be in the top three. Or, or top five for sure. Like that's an insane number to get. And Drake playing the and, Fortnite had like three with quarters of a million. What's wrong with setting that? What's no, wrong there's, with there's that nothing wrong with setting that. But I feel like if Drake said that to you, he was basically saying, I'm not Drake coming. Drake didn't say that to me. Drake didn't say that to me. What did he say? Can we hear that story about you and Drake? I will tell that. Okay. I'm deciding whether I tell it 
do I tell it here? Do I tell it in your documentary? Or do I tell it on my own? I met I, Jay. I'm just going to rip this for my documentary if he doesn't mind. Okay. Yeah. The, the day before the event. You want me to tell that story now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and why, yeah. why everybody thought it was manic, why I felt like it was supposed to happen. Also, shout out to Shane Dawson. It's supposed to be his interview. This is oh a little bit God. different. I'm so but sorry, Shane. So much we could totally. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shane. Because me and Shane were having like the best hour long so conversation I'm before sorry. this started I'm happening. We will get. It. Yeah. It was tight before that, too. So just for the record, like this is not like in place of the Shane Dawson. All right, I, I'd love for you guys to hear the story. I wish I had a J or something while we can chill back and relax and talk about it. This story is so dope, Keem. And the best part about it, Keem, I documented everything that happened that night live on Twitter. So I'm just going to open it up to read you my tweets as I tell the story because this was the most fantastic story of my life. Okay. So the Nights whole the round time table as vibes. I'm planning this event, right? <laughs> I'm in talks with Lenny S, who's DJ Khaled's manager, who runs Rock Nation, who manages Jay-Z. I have Lenny S's mentorship in this. Tyler Perry is helping me through this. OVO Johnny, who's OVO Ryan's brother, who's in Drake's team, who gave me this tattoo at OVO's tattoo shop, was FaceTiming me every five minutes to see how it was going. <coughs> but here was the beauty of it, right? Shout out to Bear Woods. That's our weed sponsor tonight. Fusi, if you want to blaze up, we got it on deck. Yo, this story, um, please put this in the documentary. Okay. Can you like this? Yeah. Do you mind? Wait, do you mind? I don't care. He's no, going to no, get no. so high, he's going to freak out. <laughs> I won't smoke. I'll Shane two weeks out. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. No. Why? Well, maybe so, will. I don't know. I leave my house the day before, right? And mm -hmm. there's so much energy surrounding us. And before leaving my house, right, I had knew that I wanted Drake to get there. I knew I was in talks with OVO Johnny. I knew I was in talks with all this, but it hadn't fully happened yet. I leave my house. I take my friends to dinner. We're walking in, TMZ is there. TMZ, I don't know why they didn't post it, um, whatever, but TMZ did a thing. I gave a message to Drake, LeBron James. I was full of love, happiness. Yeah, but even that right there, couldn't someone say, if TMZ was there, how come it didn't get posted? I have the text though with him right now and you can ask him yourself. He, had, he said there's a story, there, the story they're gonna run, and I'll tell you right now, is mm -hmm. my opinion on Logan versus KSI that I did outside the restaurant. Well, the thing is like, there's just all this different stuff, like Drake might come, uh, you know, TMZ, yeah, there's yeah. all this different open-ended stuff that nobody can confirm, and what we can confirm is that like what happened at the actual event. One, it'll, it will be confirmed by the next one, because I guarantee the next one will go exactly as planned. Two, I believe in manifestation, right? So I say exactly what I want to happen, and that's what gets it to happen. So I wanted, I started July 15th a week ago just by putting it on a shirt. And with that one idea and energy and manifestation, every single thing I put is happening, but not in the way I wanted it to. I still get a chance to talk to you. My song still came out. I'm still in talks with Live Nation Ticketmaster, still in talks with Drake's team. Everything's still happening. It just turns shitty. But here's what happens. I finished TMZ. We, me and my group end up going to a club called uh, Lure. We hear Drake is at Delilah. I ask my buddy Country three times, is this where we're supposed to be? He goes, yes, I checked. I pay $1,000 for bottle service just because I knew I was going to be in the same room as Drake. I was going to be wearing a July 15th shirt. The king is back. He would have saw it. I believe the energy would draw me in. I believe that hard. What people call crazy, I, I call belief. So... As we're walking in, I look at the napkin, it says Lure. I look at Country and I go, where are we meant to be? He goes, Delilah. I go, look where we are. I got so pissed off. I just walked away and mm -hmm. I'm just harnessing my energy because I don't want to lash out anymore. And then my, one of my team members, Andrew, who's best friends with, he's literally one of the kings. I'm, I'm going to get to it. No, 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 real quick, real quick. Is it kind of creepy that you're like trying to figure out where Drake is and you're no. like trying to no, you know stalk why? him? I'll tell you why. I'll tell and trying to hunt him down to be like, yo, come no, to no, my no. YouTuber event. I'll like, tell you why. I could have DM them for you. I'll tell you why. So before I even posted the video to P. Diddy and Quincy, I had Alfredo Flores reach out to Quincy, explain my event, and say, Fusi wants to do this. Is that okay? He gave me the green light. I'm not going to post a video to P. Diddy and Quincy without their respect, knowing that I'm going to make them feel like shit if they can't. They couldn't, but they still allowed me to put that energy out there. I'm in DMs with E-40, Mr. Fab, The Game, Snoop Dogg. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That didn't make sense, what you just said. You got permission to ask them on I Twitter? called up Alfredo Flores, who's Justin Bieber's best friend, and I said, brother, I don't know how to maneuver in this industry. Is it wrong for me to reach out to Quincy and Diddy and ask them to come to the event? He said, brother, all you have to do is share with them this energy. I'm sure they're down. Let me hit up Quincy. He hits up Quincy. Quincy follows me on Twitter. They allowed me to post the video. Quincy couldn't make it, but they still allowed me to put that energy out there. I'm in talks with DJ Khaled's manager.
DJ, so you got permission to ask somebody if they would perform to at the event. To put energy out there. These are all guys who believe in energy. But do you understand how this is, doesn't make sense? But it does because I'm talking to Quincy. Just because it doesn't make sense to you doesn't mean it didn't make sense to P. Diddy and Quincy. It just okay. Let me just throw this out as my opinion. It feels like the 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 event yesterday might have got screwed up either way by the bomb threat. But a lot of the things that you didn't do, such as booking it months in advance, paying the artists for them to appear in advance, you know, like doing a, doing it for free. Right, but you know, normally they don't. Like doing all kinds of promotional stuff they would normally do. They put it on the radio, they would do all kinds of, you know, email blasts to try to get more people to come and stuff. Like when you look at the turnout was pretty low, the fact that the artists weren't confirmed and everything, it kind of just makes me feel like, oh, that's why venues book events the way they normally book but that, but events. That, but I would say that except for once you go, just, can we just take a minute for let me finish this Drake story? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you, okay. the thing is, is, like you talk for such a long time yeah. that I forget like, okay, I want to <laughs> yeah. confront right, that. I'll, I'll just go to the Drake story. Okay. Um, we end up at Delilah, Drake's club. I get out. Uh, I see Country go to the front desk. I instantly feel they're not going to let us in. I walk away. I call OVO Johnny, OVO Ryan's brother on Drake's team. And the first thing I ask him, and you can ask him this, if you want to get somebody on Drama Alert, I guarantee you a part of OVO, Drake's team, will come on to back up every word I'm saying. And the first thing I ask them is, brother, I'm outside of the club Drake is at. I'm being creepy as shit. Is this wrong? Should I go home? He said, keep going, let God lead you. Drake's team member is telling me not to give up. Now, here's what's funny. He has a direct contact with Drake. If he wanted to, all he had to do was be like, let me call Drake. But he didn't because he wanted me to do it on my own. As soon as he said that, I go to my team. I say, I need everybody to leave. I'm doing this on my own today. I'm standing outside of Delilah, a guy who literally is scared to be in places like this. I got Drake's team around me, beautiful girls walking in. I'm by myself, no plan. Benjamin Kicks walks up. I go up to Benjamin Kicks. Shout out Benjamin Kicks. Met him that night. Give him the energy, explain to him July 15th, let him listen to the song. He goes, for sure, I'm with it. Another artist who performed last night comes behind me. First thing he says, he goes, Yusuf, I was born in East LA. I don't want to die in East LA. Can I get on your stage? I said, brother, done. He looks at me in the eyes. He goes, anything you need, I got you for life. Instantly, I go back to Benjamin Kicks. That same artist who saw me, found a way in. His old boy was going to get him in through the back. He's running. He goes, Fusi, come on. I'm running through the back. I'm about to get into Drake's event. I, for some reason, I decided to turn back around. I go back, you can ask every person there, they'll confirm the story. I go back to Benjamin Kicks to say something, like bye, whatever. I turn around, the guy's inside. I'm like, shit. Next thing you know, I see the person from Louis Vuitton who sold me the shoes I just gave away to the 11-year-old yesterday in the crowd. And he was waiting out there. I tell him the story. He goes, well, our friends are about to let us in. Wait for us. The door opens. The security guard goes, ladies only tonight, fellas. I didn't even force it, didn't argue. I walked away. He got in because the girl said, no, this guy's with us. I didn't question it. I go back to the front. That same guy who got in, that artist, is at the smoking section through the gate. It looks so sketch. He goes, psst. I know how crazy this looks. I'm in front of Drake's security. I go up to him. I go, what? He goes, go to the back right now. I was like, are you crazy? He looks at me in the eye. He goes, go to the back. I felt it. I go to the back. I'm standing right next to Drake's white uh, Rolls Royce, the one with the angel on the thing. Is that a Rolls Royce? I'm not sure. I'm standing next to Drake's car. His security's around me in the cars, but they're not telling me to leave because it looked and felt like I deserved to be there. I didn't give up. I knew I had a plan that night, so I get on my knees. I put the message to Drake. Drake, I'm outside the club tonight. I sound like a crazy person who's literally crying outside the club, but I'm going to meet you tonight. I put it out to the universe. I'm going to meet Drake tonight. I put that energy out there. Door opens, guy gets me in. I go through the kitchen. We walk in. I was in the hottest LA party of the night. He whispers in my ear. He goes, Kylie Jenner's here. Drake is here. Uh, Ludacris is here. Everybody's here. He doesn't tell me where Drake is. All he says is, let God lead the way. I'm not trying to be preachy about God, but every single person was telling me this. I Everybody really, talks about God in your life. It's kind of interesting. Nobody ever says anything about God to me. As soon as I accepted him for my life. Right. I swear. So I'm getting there. So now I'm inside the club, and here's where the tweets start and where how I met Drake. So you're about to get the exclusive. You're I'm ready. You're in the documentary. I need this. And I would not put this story out there because anybody can go to Drake and his team and be like, did this event happen? And if it didn't happen, they'll be like, this guy should be arrested. He's crazy. I sound crazy right now because I'm the only one who was in there, you know? So, but okay. I'll show you the text. No, no, no. Forget Look. the text. How did you meet Drake? So Here it is. You're Here it in is. the party. Here it is. 
as I'm outside, dream big, call me crazy now, call me crazy tomorrow. If I pull this off, it's because I'm crazy. Next tweet, I pray that Drake fulfills my God's plan. Next tweet, what some call desperation, I call hunger for success. That's when I finally said, I'm meeting Drake tonight. Remember this tweet for years to come. Next tweet, I'm inside the party Drake is in. I'm letting God lead the way it's happening. Next tweet, it's a video that says scared shitless, but I'm trusting the process. Soon as I tweet that, I look to my right, Sean Mendez is there. I tweet and I go standing inches next to Sean Mendez. Life is so surreal right now. I will meet Drake tonight. I'm shaking in a club with high industry people. All the Instagram beauty, the beautiful girls who I follow are in the booths. It's a lit night. I'm not giving up. And as I'm looking down at my phone, I look up. I say, and just like that, when I'm stuck, the real Dennis G, who's Drake's dad, walks right past me as I'm taking a snap on my shoes. Instead of bothering him and saying, can I speak to you? I said, please check your messages. Again, this is God's plan. He knows me. He was at Tyler Perry's Medea premiere. I have a picture with him. So I knew if I met Dennis, it would be good. But I knew he wasn't in the right place for me to talk to him, and I wanted him to have his fun. So I just trusted it. As soon as I decided that and stayed back, Kenny Hamilton, who's part of Justin Bieber's group, who knows me because I met them and partied with them, goes right in front of me. Oh, what's up, brother, da, 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 we're arm in arm. He goes, come with us. He takes me to his table. Whose table is it? Ludacris. I'm now in the hallway staring Ludacris in the eye, hitting my chest, saying, I'm gonna be on stage tomorrow with more eyes on this event than the president has on the country to dispel hate. Ludacris gives me daps, and he goes, my brother, I feel it, keep going. At this point, I'm like, fuck what anyone's saying online. I'm doing this tonight. I go back to the booth. I'm dancing. I let Ludacris do what he does. Right after that, We The Best Music's whole group, a trio, Ivan Berrios, uh, uh, the other Araki who has a beard, I'm sorry, I forgot his name, walk past me. Ivan Berrios, DJ Khaled's, Diddy's, everybody's photographer, DM him, right? DM him. Stops and talks to me for 10 minutes as I tell him this story, let him listen to this song. He doesn't tell me where Drake is yet. All he says is, you already did this, don't stop. He gives me his phone number. We try to take a picture. I'm almost there. Kenny looks at me. This is how crazy that night was. Kenny looks at me, he goes, no pictures. I go, fine. Ivan leaves, right? Right after that. You said you were gonna let me finish, let me get there. I was, didn't know what to do. The doubt is real, the hate is real, the fear is real, but you know what, the love is far stronger. Even if I have to stay up until the event and walk on the stage beaten, I'm gonna do it. I'm now standing by myself. The club is emptying out. The only people who are allowed to stay in the club is Drake's team. Guess who's standing with them? Me, because I decided not to give up because I had a mission that night, as crazy as it sounded. I don't know what to do, but I believed in myself. Before I even met Drake. So everyone leaves the club. No one's there except for Drake's like own crew. You gotta understand, and Drake's you. own crew is like 60 people, and the celebrities who are in there. And I'll talk about that. I met OBJ okay. that night, all this stuff. So let me finish. Okay. I'm standing in Drake's crew, don't know what to do. As I'm standing there, I turn around, Drake's dad is coming back into the crew. As I'm going up to him, I miss him, but I touch the person behind him. For some reason, you're gonna get mad at this because I've said it so much. I don't know why I asked him this. I said, brother, do you believe in God? He looks at me like, of course I do. I said, give me 30 seconds and read this. He reads this post that says, seven days ago I came in with an idea to Sydney, Australia. This guy ends up being Drake's right hand man. And as I tell him this story about how I'm gonna get Drake and I'm pounding and I'm shaking and I'm telling him my purpose, I look at him in the eye and I go, I snuck in here tonight. If he wanted to protect Drake and kick me out, he would have said, get the hell out of here. He looks at me, he goes, mm, he's feeling it. He knows I'm talking with a purpose and I mean it and I'm hungry. I'm psycho at this point, I'm hungry. He goes, wait right here. But before he goes, this is gonna, everyone's gonna have shit to say about this, you can ask him. He goes, how did you know my name? I look at him, I go, brother, I never met you in my life. If my name came out of your, if your name came out of my mouth today, I have no idea how. As soon as I said that, I watch him. I hadn't seen Drake the whole night. As soon as I put that energy in there, I look back into the crowd, Drake's team moves. I get my first vision of Drake face to face from like 20 feet. I start shaking because I know my manifestation is getting stronger. Drake is feet away from me. I watch the gentleman I just spoke to walk straight through Drake's crew without giving daps to anybody, go into Drake's ear, and for five minutes, this is what I see. He's sharing my message into Drake's ears. Okay. I don't give up, I'm standing there, I'm waiting. Next thing I know, 
the energy I felt I needed more, I look behind me, OBJ is there, Odell Beckham Jr., ask him. I walk straight up to him. His security starts walking up to me, I hand him the phone, I go, read, his security grabs me and goes, hey, don't try to sell him on anything tonight, I go, let him. Dead ass, I was so hungry, I looked at his security, I said, let him. He reads the whole thing. He looks at me, he goes, you got that. I walk back to Drake's crew. I'm mobbing with Drake's crew, dancing to Drake's music. Next thing I know, Drake's coming closer and closer and closer. He hugs, I believe it was Joel M.B. two inches away from me. I'm staring at him in his eye like this, hungry, knowing that I left my house that night saying, I'm gonna meet Drake like a crazy person. And literally, Adam, I'm this close to Drake. But instead of taking that moment to be like, Drake, can I get a picture? This is gonna prove all my haters wrong. I accepted that it already was done. As soon as Drake moves and makes eye contact with me and I stare at him, I see the, his second right hand man and he nods at me like this. I walk out with him, I go, what's next? He goes, brother, take my number, I'll tell you all the details tomorrow. I did it, I was hyped. So I you said, didn't meet Drake, he just looked at you. I mean, if he just looked at you, did you really meet yo, Drake? Do something for me. In the next two hours, will for yourself to touch nose with Drake. So if it happens, I'll sell my entire YouTube channel. Did I'll you, give you $10 did million. Did you touch dollars. nose to nose? Literally like this. That's how close he was to me. Okay. As he's hugging. If you could do that, I'll give you my Ferrari. I'll give you my Range Rover. I'll give you my mom and dad's keys to the house. I'll delete all my YouTube channels. I did that because I manifested that because I believe in myself, Keem. This has always been me from the start. It's the reason I blew up my channel, whether it was a good way or wrong way. Anyways, his team member, I save his name under God's plan. Right? Okay. I tell him that. I show him as he's walking out with Drake's dad. He looks at me. He goes, God is the greatest. I don't tell anybody. I just harness it in. That next day before I started that Drake promotion, I texted it to him, the team member who I met. I showed him the July 15th picture with Drake on it. I showed him what was about to go live. So Drake's people approved you putting all this promo for your event with Drake's likeness and Drake's pictures. Drake himself didn't say to me face to face, but his right hand man who went and fed the message to Drake was there saying it. As I'm sending him the text of all that stuff, he's reading each one. I'm sending videos to him throughout the day, like I'm charging up, I got energy, I'm dancing to Drake, I'm happy knowing what's about to happen. He's reading every single one as I send it. Not once is he saying, yo, Drake doesn't wanna come, stop this, we're gonna send a lawsuit. Because, okay, anyway. like we have, I mean, I have connections in this town as well, and you know, we reached out to like Drake's people and uh -huh. they said that he had no plan to play there. Okay, I want you to hit up the number that I have on my phone. With Drake's team. I, I will. But listen, so he, I'm sending him all that, right? And I have every intention. Immediately, right after I did that, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in DMs with the game, everybody. The game obviously isn't going to trust. He runs LA. This guy sounds crazy. Why would I come to his event? But as soon as Mayno hit the stage, OT Genesis was going to hit the stage, Wi-Fi's funeral stops, P, Dipset, uh, um, whoever else we had, Jay Park, I don't know if we confirmed him. Everybody was going to come. DC the Don. Shit was going to roll because all these... Rappers in my DMs were waiting for that moment. Drake was gonna be on that stage tonight. Can I prove that right now with hard evidence, facts? No, but based on what happened, no, but I can you, say you, that. You put out on social media that Drake would only be on the stage if you had two That was a fuck up of mine. That was where I let the energy get too high and I just kept wanting to manifest and feed it energy and I just kept Was there going. a conversation between no, you and not. Drake's people about no. how many viewers need no. to be? No, okay. that's where I fucked up. And I'm gonna admit that now. I'm not gonna try to act like da da da. I fucked up. I got so excited. I'm in the hotel room. I literally, in seven days, my beautiful girlfriend, my team is throwing this huge event. There, I'm watching the live stream in my hotel and I saw you say good morning right to the news. You know what I did after you do that? I started clapping. I was like, yes, Kim is supporting me. Like, this is going so I was. I know. You texted me and said, yo, it looks like you might have pulled it off. He told me that too. I was about to be late, and he so was like, I think he's pulling it off. I saying how good it was. And I was so happy. And that was in private text. And That's then, not yeah, yeah, that that wasn't public, yeah. or anything. And then you know what happens? I get in the car. I tell the guy who I'm texting on Drake's team that I'm going to the event. I'm going to the event. Everything's good. I'm meditating. My girlfriend calls. She goes, baby, and I go, baby, I'm on my way. And I hear it in her voice, she's crying. She goes, baby, I go, what? She goes, there was just a bomb threat. They had to evacuate everyone. I stopped, because they didn't let us up the street. I stopped with a group of families who were down. Their moms are giving me hugs, and they're saying, you said, please don't give up on us. We got this, love is gonna win. I finally get to go up. I'm telling everybody it's gonna happen. As soon as I get up, 
the police comes to me and they go, yo, the event was shut down. We pulled right into the lot. There was an empty lot and the police, I told them, I was like, fine, I'm gathering everybody there. Everybody right. coming down the hill surrounded me and that's when my speech happened. And you have my speech on camera, Keem. You have the footage I of I have me. like half of it, yeah. There was- I filmed you, a lot of it. I gave a shout out to X on stage last night. Did you? Oh. On my knees, I said, there was one person who I would have loved to have here and that's XXX Tantasi Young. Because when he was alive, one second, I said when he was alive, I was his biggest hater because I didn't understand his message. And unfortunately, it wasn't until after he passed that I took a deeper really dive into his message and his music, and I realized how special he was. Mm. Why weren't you, sorry, of course, why I'm weren't done. you there? Or maybe that's the part I'm, I'm so, once again. So I have it. More have, of a TanaCon kind I, of why, guy. <laughs> why wasn't I there? So I yeah, have, why weren't you there so I have it during on, the actual yeah, yeah, I have everything on text with my team. I told my whole team, I want Andrew and MC and the YouTubers to run the openers. What was happening on stage was the openers. It wasn't the actual show. I was, and I didn't want, here's the one thing. So I watched another YouTube event and I saw the YouTuber that hosted it, did the whole thing. I texted Keem and explained why I wasn't there. And I said, Keem, I'm not coming until it's my part. This event isn't about me, it's for the people. I didn't want to be on stage the whole time. I didn't want it to be about Fousey. We're backstage. I was getting there and I literally said, I'll show you text, my phone is right here. I texted my whole team and I said, I said, I text my girlfriend, I said, when I get there, I wanna hug each person, give them energy and thank them for being there before I do anything. I was on my way to do that. I just wanted to harness, make sure everything was going good before I got there for the actual show. The show hadn't even begun. I think just, and my opinion doesn't matter on this because I'm so out of the The show loop, definitely but be like, began. I would have been there like the two hours before it started if I was putting it on because I'd be like, I got to fucking make sure everything, got to make sure everybody's good. I got to make sure everything's going right. Like I got to. Uh, of course, my team though was so, so, so passionate about what we were doing. They had it under control. My, everyone knew that if you need me, you go through my girlfriend, you go through country, you go through Andrew. It was a well-oiled machine. That's why all the guests arrived safely. The concert was going good. Keem was having fun on stage. Fans were filling in. I don't care if even one fan showed. Everyone was having a good time, right? And that's why. Um, the event was promoted as peace and love and all that, right? Yes. Uh, little Poppy, I think his name was, he went up with some song about, you know, bitches are thick and they're on yeah. his dick. I'm going to send you, look. And I I'm not that. saying that's a bad song, but what I'm saying is there was a lot of controversy online of people saying, I thought this was about peace and love and war. Like, this is about thick bitches. So, oh, I, I'm so glad you asked that because... I just want to address what I the didn't, people were I saying. I didn't, when people were asking me to be on stage... I just wanted energy so I didn't listen to their music. There were certain songs, and I'll show it to you right after. I would text my girlfriend and team, end his set. What the fuck? I'm sitting here in my hotel room, and all I hear is like, pussy, 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 thick. And I'm like, no, I fucked up there. So now moving forward, I know when you're inviting an artist, view his music, view his set, and make sure it aligns with your message. But just because a rapper is talking about sex or shooting people or doesn't whatever, that doesn't necessarily person. mean that they can't also be talking about peace and love, exactly. right? Exactly, and, and that's why, <laughs> that's why, no, 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 true. I was gonna explain to everybody true. there that, yo, I know music got crazy, but the whole point is all of us with differing opinions, like I don't listen to music like that, but with differing opinions are all here celebrating what? Love. Um, I had a speech ready for you on stage and Banks I, and I wish we could have seen that. I know, I know. I wish I could have seen that, that as well. Fun. You were gonna like, I was literally gonna hold your hand up in the air together and scream, hey, guys, and the crowd was gonna go, love arrives. Rice gum, I was literally gonna be on my hands and knees telling him why I did this song, what it meant, why I care for him. Okay. It was gonna be such a fucking special I, Fousey, moment. I have so many questions. Let me try to just like get okay. these get these out. I'm gonna go walk Is behind you and go pee. Okay. Shane, how are you feeling? Do you need anything? <laughs> I'm so glad Shane's here. I know, I am too, because he keeps me very where calm right now. I just feel like he's like, what did I get left? Shane, where's your here? crew? Crew? <laughs> yeah, your crew's not with you? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Came alone. <laughs> What? Oh, I gotta say this where you live. I can't ask that. Fascinating. You know what's beautiful about this? Mm. Two years ago, if something <laughs> like this would have happened, Keem would have been on the internet already with a drama alert saying this is what happened and just saying his side of the story. We never would have got a chance to speak face to face like this. Right. And I love that. The conversations are happening in my YouTube description of the song. On the bottom, it says, it shows my love to Brian, and it also says, I want to take back YouTube to the place where everybody collaborated, and it wasn't 
fearing that one person might get on top of them, get more views than them, not in your culture of YouTube, there's other cultures, you know? And in the culture I'm in, there's, a, there's, a, there's this thing that it's about clout, and it's about who's popping, and if you're not popping, oh, I'm sorry, I can't hang out today. I can't be in your video. I mean, it's always I want to squash that. It's it's always been like that, right? And I hate that. I I don't know. I don't I don't necessarily hate it. I like it because if you're small, it gives you something to work for yeah. and to achieve. And you know, if you're big, it gives you an understanding of what success is, right? But why not? If somebody's small, like I had small YouTube, I opened up my stage and I even told you before I do it and you said, good idea, I opened it to small performers who are up and coming. Why not bring those people who are small up with us? I, I, I know exactly where you're getting to. Me and Shane had a conversation about this. Um, throughout Shane's career, anyone that he saw that he liked and thought was talented, he pushed his audience towards them. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I've done it as well. But you don't just like open that up to anyone, you know? You have to get behind people that you believe in that are small, right? I understand. So, I don't know. Okay, so I, I want to address this one thing that's happening online. A lot of people think that, and I don't think this, just so you know, of I course, do not think course. this, but a lot of people online think that your show was leaning towards, you know, failing, and you swat at your own event to get it shut so down. So here's what happened. I can't tell, I don't, I'm not going to blame anybody. Sam Pepper did DM me and say, yo, you're about to hear a lot of fake information. I need to talk to you, so there's something going on there. And I talked to my manager today, not my manager, the person who helped me manage this event. And he said, yo, just to give you a heads up, as we're in lockdown and the police look at me and say, don't even reach your phone to text, they saw Sam Pepper run out on his live stream and they said everyone got scared and that's why he got things. So here's what happened. A couple hours before the event, Sam texted me, DM me. After I, um, I think I might have DM them first, but a couple hours and he goes, yo, can I come and stream it? This is about love. I had problems with him. I said, come. That attracts his audience. Next thing you know, I'm watching Hampton Brandon's walking. That attracts his audience. It was, it was definitely, I'm not saying it was their fan. It was, it was a fan watching at home. But that's what I think. It and was one of their fans. Is saying, yeah. Ticketmaster is saying that that specific location has been, it's, it, you can even Google, has been targeted for a couple of times now. And that's why they feel so shitty about this. It was, I would never, I was, I was literally at home crying. Did you, did you think about like sending, like having a bomb squad there beforehand? Because nope. that's the only thing you can really do is mm -hmm. you, you can have the local PD come in and inspect the building before the event. Um, and if they do that, then they can't so have, shut down the event with I have with footage bomb. if you want, by the way, for your documentary of me prepping the day before at the venue, explaining to all YouTubers, here's your entrance, here's the metal detectors, here's where you go through, you have a private line. Here's I thought security was good there, but yeah. it wasn't. So I thought it, everything was taken care of. It, I never would have thought, oh, let me hit like a bomb. You know, when I told right. my mom that today, her face. She was heartbroken because she wanted her son to succeed and it gets ruined because somebody calls in a bomb threat. But I'm not worried about that because I believe that through these conversations and through the help, now let's say I wanted to do a new one. But before I do it and try to plan it in seven days, I have a meeting with you. I have a meeting with Shane. I have a meeting with Adam. I have teams around writing stuff. And I'm like, guys, how can we make this the biggest event? How do we get into the Staples Center? How do we take this next level so I can do it right? First one was rushed. I tried. I believe. Why is it so important to even do the event? This is my purpose. I want to be a motivational speaker. I want to spread love. I want to spread the message of helping. You know, I, I believe in this movement. I took a year off for YouTube. If I was going to come back, it was going to be for something good. I had no ideas of how to come back. As I'm in Australia, did the 375 person show, realized I wasn't living to my potential. Because like, I had that conversation with you privately. So I was but, like, I'm going to fly to LA and throw a show right away. What about just like focusing on your YouTube career? I'm not, I'm not doing what YouTube What about no focusing like on making good content and then building an audience and then you know blend in motivational stuff like you always used to do. You used to do vlogs. And then at the end of your vlogs or in the middle of your vlogs, mm -hmm. you would, you know, try to motivate your audience. I'm not what was wrong anymore. with that? I'm not doing that anymore. I'm no longer a content creator who serves for YouTube. My income now, even if I get zero dollars from YouTube, I'm going bigger. I want to tour the world with my story. I want to sell self-help books. I believe it's going to sell 100 million copies. I have a bigger purpose now. 100 As million I, copies. Yes, I put that do you out know, there. Do you know how insane that is? And do you know that one person one time in their life had an idea, I'm gonna put a, flame, a plane in the air and it's gonna fly people across the ocean, and they did that. What's wrong about dreaming big? 
There's nothing wrong you with dreaming big. You Friday Fortnite and you did it and you're proud in the numbers it's doing. I'm telling the world I'm gonna sell 100 million copies. If I tell the world I'm gonna sell 100 copies, what's the difference between selling a higher number than a lower number? There's no limitations in life. Hey, I just wanna throw this out there. Shane is so polite that he texted me while I was in the bathroom and was like, dude, I think I kind of got to leave. I'm sorry. I don't want to be rude. So I just want to like open the door for him to make. I'm so glad you guys got to meet in this environment. I was about to ask. Or in any environment. I can get your phone number and we talk privately. Nothing YouTube related. By the way, Shane, I'm so sorry. I just ha I had to jump in on this. <laughs> this listen, as a audience member, this is content. Mm. Okay. Um, That's a good point. Don't show it to the camera for your own sake. I always wonder if people can tell what your phone something? number is by how you're moving your thumbs, Just you know? Side topic. So yesterday I gave Banks my assurance and I promised him. Yo, you fought, you like leaked his number. He had to change his number. It was on complete fucking accident. Here's what happened. Do you think maybe like just shit like that and a lot of other things, maybe Poor you banks. need to slow down? 100%. I'm heartbroken over what happened with Banks. So my iPhone through the event planning, anybody who's organized an event knows stress can get high. The day before the event, as everything's going good, I realize the show, the song is dropping on midnight on iTunes. If Keem hears this, he's gonna think it's a troll to sabotage him. I don't get to pull off the reason I did the song, the show is ruined. Of course I'm gonna think of it's course. a troll. So, you said this about peace and love and all this other shit, and then it's a diss track so on So I grab my phone. And listen, I heard you try to explain to these guys, well, no, it was much more than that, and it doesn't make sense. Like. Like, you need to be... You've never had satire, you never had irony, you never told something in a different way. Yeah, but way and satire and art, irony isn't peace and love. But here's the thing, if Rice Gum's whole career was built on diss tracks, and you guys have no problem with hitting him down, you had no problem telling the world that I should kill myself and I'm the worst person Rice in the world. Rice Gum didn't, before he, right before Rice Gum puts out a diss track, does he say, hey, this is about peace and love? I understand, though, but if I'm trying to end it now, and I'm telling him, like, Rice, I'm doing this to you to show you, like, I want to celebrate you through this. And I was going to tell him, like, this isn't, like, it's, it was supposed to be a joke. I'm not a fucking rapper. You know what's funny? The song is called Lil Khara featuring Fusi. You know what Lil Khara means? Little, Little shit. shit. Yeah. It was a troll. It was a troll. The song had nothing to do with the event. Okay. This so this is what I think. Yeah. This is what I really honest I'd to God to think. Hear. Okay. I think that you were in Australia. You had the idea of making it back in the YouTube or whatever, in the scene. Maybe not YouTube, maybe something else. I think you came up with doing this song. You realized the song was good. I actually, I like the song, all right? Appreciate that. I think the song was good, and you said, wait, we need to do a music video. Wait, how can we hype this? How can we have like you know a big event? How can I make sure that this song pops? And that's when it came into your mind, let's get a bunch of artists on stage. I'll try to get as many artists as I possibly can, and at the end, I'm gonna world premiere this song. You were right until the last part. So the idea did get sparked. The, the idea birthed months ago, yeah, I didn't have the idea, but the flame, when Rice as my brother was on stream on Twitch and he called me irrelevant. Now the reason that hurt me is because as your brother who's collabed with you, you know I struggle with mental health, you know I struggle with depression, you know for a fact I don't give a shit about views anymore. Don't put your brother down like that, it hurt me. But if I heard that I was irrelevant, when if I had your numbers right now, I'd be hungry. It would just make me hungry. It, look how hungry it made me. Now I wanna sell 100 million copies to show the world how irrelevant I am. So you're 100% right though. The idea, first it was the event, 375 people I realized I could do bigger. Next thing you know, I've been, even as a joke on my Twitch, and you should go find this, I've been telling the world, rice gum diss track coming soon as a joke. So I finally realized, oh, I'm in Australia, we got time, let's go in the booth. And through the song, the event got created. But the event in my speech became so much more important than the song, the song was like the smallest factor. I didn't care about it anymore. So is it safe to say, the original idea of creating July 15th was to hype up the song. No, because if the song had happened, and let's say the event didn't happen, it was gonna be released in the same way. I wanted Rice on stage, I wanted you on stage, I wanted Banks on stage, I wanted to thank each person, and I wanted to tell Rice why I made the song. So the song was never made, the song from the beginning- That just seems like the worst way to promote a diss track. No, no, Have no, the no person... you're missing the intention. It's not a diss track, you're still calling it a diss track. You don't need to look at him to see if he agrees. I'm having a conversation with you as a man. Uh, no, I, I'm just looking at him for someone to jump in the middle here. But so it's we between just, me and you. I, but you're, you have this version of reality here, and I have this version of reality here, so I just need someone else to jump in. But and let's look at intention. 
Ask me the intention. Let me sit down with Rice Gum privately and tell him. That's my boy. I smoke up with him all the time. He comes to play basketball at Alex's. We chill. He said that when you made the diss track on him, it made absolutely no sense because there's no beef. I And I saw the way he said in your clip about Fusi has no idea what he's doing. I don't think Rice would even understand like why I did this unless I explained it to him. There is no beef. Exactly. There wasn't beef. It isn't a diss track. He's my brother. Everybody in the studio knew he was my brother. They knew I was doing this to troll. They were laughing and they were wondering what he's gonna say when I tell him, yo, by the way, Lil Khara means little shit. I'm trolling the whole white world. Because everybody who's reacting to it right now are saying, Lil Kara, and that's exactly how I said they were gonna be reacting, because it's a troll. I literally pulled the ultimate troll. But through that song and the intention, Hate Dies, Love Arrives was birthed, and that's why I got the idea. Look, if I could go back right now, knowing that there was gonna be a bomb there, all this up, and just say, fuck the song, and I even contemplated with my team the day before, do we go on with it? And it wasn't until after the event, late at night, I was like, you know what? Stand strong in your belief that everything is gonna work out. Release the video with under, I took off social media today. I tweeted Twitter uh, and an Instagram post. Just trust that let the narrative tell itself however it is. Let people talk, but when the story comes out, when conversations like this happens, it'll tell itself. And even if the whole world is against it, Kim, what I'm understanding now in my life, as long as I understand my intention, my team understands my intention, then anybody who listens to what I'm saying and agrees with it, that's fine. Anybody who doesn't, that's fine. But I'm not gonna spend time trying to convince them of my message anymore. Cause that's how I ruined my YouTube career. Instead of just living in my great potential and being who I could have been, which is what Logan Paul did, what Jake Paul did, I left because I let the comments from your channel, from my Twitter and everything define me. Starting from when Leafy is here, used to vandalize my name and hate I on I can't me. believe we didn't mention him this whole time. I was thinking about him a few right? different times. I thought maybe he would come out on July 15th. <laughs> I, I think he's coming here. He's the next one. He's got to be need, coming right we now. We need right? another mic. No, honestly, <laughs> dude, like, J feel, Jay Z sorry. could show up right now. I'd be like, sorry, bro, only four mics. Dude, you know? honestly, I talked to Shane, like, on Mom's Basement, right? And he doesn't follow, like, really anything on YouTube. So he is so lost. Like, yeah, like, when, I, when we were talking about Fusi, Shane is like, so he has, like, a fake hair thing? <laughs> yeah, because that's the video. No, yeah, it makes sense. I used to be scared to tell people, but now I showed people, and it's funny, because now I have grown men who come up to me at like the airport, mm. and they're like, like they don't care about YouTube or anything, but they're like, yo, I saw your video about hair loss. They take off their hat, they go, thank you, bro. I was so insecure. Mm. I go, of course, because that shit's hard. When you go bald, that shit yeah. ruins your fucking life. Mm. So then why don't you focus on that? And why don't you focus on that kind of stuff From, rather than trying to be like the, like the, the leader of, uh, concert like as as a normal person who like doesn't who it doesn't whatever like for me that if i saw somebody post a picture of my face with a date under it that i wasn't but whatever i would feel like what is this but, used right right but if you made a video saying all these similar things in a genuine way mm -hmm. i would be like oh cool do you know what i'm saying like it just feels very like he made well, a lot of those videos a lot of them. Well, from this point forward, got it. With, from this point forward, and I'm asking you guys this on this table, Kim, I see your eyes and I feel like you're still, because you're thinking about your documentary, still thinking I'm in the wrong and you're missing the intention here. And I hope you're seeing the bigger picture of telling the story not, rather than not, showing if it's a think, flop or not. I think that you are in the wrong in certain situations, in certain details, right? But I also think that part of you really wanted to this to be a. I think that you started off wanting to get popular with this diss track, all right? Then I think that you figured out the best way to promote this is by selling love and peace because who doesn't want love and peace? And then you just added, well, let's end racism because everyone wants to end racism. So if you can put out all these different reasons for people to show up to the event, you can promote the song. Fuck the song. And, and you also put out there like this is going to be a... Yo, I gave a speech about being a Muslim in America at the age just, of 28. Just real quick, there was one more thing. You also said that this was going to be like the after party of the World Cup. You know, yeah. 
Like, I didn't go to the event and see them talking about football or soccer People or whatever. People were throwing their Mexico flags in the air. Yeah, I did I, see I a did little, see a little bit, of bit of it, yeah. People it's love little, this, you know? What you're not understanding... And you, you sold it as like so many different things because just it was anything to, to get people to go. I, know. You know? Like, <laughs> I mean, look, not that there's anything wrong look. with that, but there's just there's so many angles. And by the way, know? guys, it's Kayla's eighth birthday party, July fifteenth. Like it was just <laughs> everything, right? Like, <laughs> Yo, I really. But here's the thing, bro. I know I went crazy with it. I did. You're right. But I swear to God, I did it. And like, you know, I am like with my ideas as a grandiose as they mm -hmm. can get. I did it as crazy as that, but thinking. Why should I say no if I believe that it's right? So I want, right. I did it with good no, intentions. No, I get that. But I you, might have fucked up, but I did it with good intentions. I get that. But like, you have a credibility issue because, like, you know, with the fake pranks and the fake social yo, experiments, yo, right? Yo, yo, yo. When you need did to that video with Rice Gum with Fortnite, did you fake your gameplay? Yeah. <laughs> okay, then don't hate on me for my fake pranks when a lot of people in your crew have fake vlogs, dog. You I know, know vlogs on YouTube are fake, so don't put me down for I fake know, pranks. I know, but that was Yo, that, I may that's have clearly, I may have that fake was pranks. clearly fake. I may have fake pranks, but there are some people on YouTube who you know who fake their whole careers and lives, and that's a fact. No, okay, you're not you're not listening to me. All right? I am. You you're just, not listening you just to me. cut that right off. Because you're trying to bring up fake pranks to make me sound bad. What's I'm not. I'm trying to make you TV understand. Is fake. Do you watch the Kardashians? Fake. Do you watch any reality show? Fake. Do you watch the news? A lot and of you're it, right. Fake. You're you right. Watch drama I'm not going to argue with that. I could that. say something that I know about drama alert in the clout house right now. That if I do, you know the firestorm that'll cause, and you know what that'll do to you and your life. But I respect you as a man, and I'm not going to leak that information because you looked at me, you smiled, you said no one knows this, so please keep this with you. I can say it right now on air, and it could end everything. If you expose me right now, I don't care. I would you never. Have, like, you're missing the point. I would never. Listen, let me, before I get lose my train of thought here. I'm sorry. The credibility issue because of the fake pranks and the, and the fake social experiments and all that stuff, right? I feel like people need to trust you, right? So when you promote the, promoted this event with all these different angles and all these different things that it was supposed to be, like, it comes down to... What was this? What was this really supposed to be about? July 15th. And watch what it turns into. This was just the beginning. I started my new chapter of life. That chapter you were talking about, about who I was, that person who I told you about who was suicidal, he died last night on July 15th. And I chose a new direction in my life. And I promise you guys, with your guidance, and if you choose to stay in my life, now I will work my absolute hardest to do shit right, do shit with positive intentions, no longer hate, and introduce the world as just Yusuf Erekat, you can call me Fusi, as a motivational speaker. The content I'm gonna upload from here is different now. I'm only gonna upload stuff with the message, and now I get, I'm gonna practice what I preach every day of my life. Today there was a, I'll tell you later, a YouTuber who tweeted hella shit at me. Instead of going at him on thing, called him, got his number, and I was like, brother, you didn't even ask, that's how I'm gonna start living. If I have a problem with you, I'm gonna text you. I'm gonna invite you when I'm in LA to come smoke. I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna be brave enough to be like, hey Shane, you know, I know I don't usually fit into your crew and a lot of people might have a negative stigma. Can I hang out with you one day? Do you wanna have lunch? I'm gonna start doing stuff like that to love myself again. So look, I know this is gonna turn out however it turns out to, but I'm telling you and I, I'm telling you and I, and you know how I feel about you and that's why you're wearing this shirt right mm -hmm. now. And I hope you're getting an understanding of just, the, I know I have trouble portraying of who I'm trying to portray myself as. And I ask for you guys, help me. You tell me what I should do to be credible, help me. Text me and be like, yo, Fusi, I just, don't think you should just be Just be as real as possible with trying. the people with what you're doing. I swear to God, I'm just trying. Just real as possible because honestly, when you promoted that event and then everyone found out, oh, he was talking about releasing this song and it's a diss track on Rice, you lose all credibility with everyone. I think the issue is even beyond that is like, okay, if you're gonna do events, you have to take doing events more seriously because you know what it felt like was like you just had this burst of energy and creativity and you kept talking about love and peace and respect and everything and that's good but you know when you do an event and it doesn't work out then it just makes you know for regardless if it was your fault or not like with tana her credibility has been hurt because she did an event and it didn't you know work out the way it was supposed to if she had done that event and killed it then her stock would be a bit higher than it was when she started if you do another show and you actually like 
book artists, mm-hmm. you know, do a proper rollout with like everything. Like I think Fusi Tube could definitely be a dude who's known for putting on events. It's just you have to, you know, Thank if you, you want to make that your thing, you Thank gotta you. focus on yeah, that thing. But like you said you stock, your stock will go up. Yeah. My stock went all the way up, baby, because Ticketmaster and Live Nation are working out the fattest deal for me to do this right the next time because they feel so bad with how it turned no, out. No, no, but I'm saying, dude, I, I think you lost credibility with the community. I don't think I there people will come Every to Every single person, too. they will. I guarantee you I'll fill out an arena next. I guarantee you my next show will be in a stadium. Yeah, but you also guarantee that you'd have 2 million views and, and front I was page going on YouTube to. and you're going to be on Ellen next and week and like to. just all and this I'm other gonna stuff. And I'm going to be on Ellen. It's going to happen, Keem. I speak my life into existence. I manifest everything. My book is going to be called July 15th. I'm going to tell the story, and it will sell the copies. I tell you, you it's going to sell. But you can't say that you're going to be on Ellen, because then if you're not on Ellen, then what? Like, uh, the, back to the credibility. We could all be on Ellen. Yeah, yo. <laughs> if a, if a you kid, probably could. If We're a problematic. Yo, you should be on yeah, Ellen. Yeah, definitely. You yo, should King, be on Ellen. If your daughter you tells you, Ellen, respect your daughter, by the way, anything I've ever said about you and her in the past, I'm sorry. If your daughter comes to you and goes, Daddy, I want to be a NASCAR driver. I want to be a singer at a young age. Are you going to tell her, honey, like, your credibility's on the... No, you can tell her, go for it. Well, but her Dream. brain isn't really, like, fully but formed and want, stuff, so... Why don't we, at adults, live as like we did when we were young and tell ourselves we can do whatever the hell we want to do? Yeah, but the world would be a lot different if we treated everybody like a five-year-old, you know? Dude, if, be every, if everybody wanted to... I don't, I don't to, think it would be better. I think like, it would be worse. Yeah. Like, I heard somebody suggest one time, everybody should always treat everybody else like it was Christmas. Which sounds nice, but then you're like, well, at some point you got to fire somebody. And then right. Christmas isn't special anymore. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am so mad that I have to go. <laughs> if I didn't have something right after this, I I'd be here all night. Lesser known co-host, Shane Dawson, who we just sort of had on to observe throughout this. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. All I'm going to say, my little final note on my end is um, I didn't hate you. I didn't. I know most people around me didn't have any bad opinion of you i remember when you told me about this whole thing even you were just like i think it might work and i was like cool like i know nobody had on my end right so for me the credibility thing is more like if you were to say like okay i'm gonna if you would have tweeted me and said i'm trying to do a thing contact me it's we're gonna take six months to plan it all these things whatever i would have been like okay cool but because it was out of like it was so Fast and, van- and like whatever. That the man just away. came from Tanacon. Like he was supposed to be a feature. <laughs> you, know I mean? you can't like put him in that spot. Yeah. I'm not going to jump out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Um, so I'd say my advice to you, because you're asking for advice. Yeah. My advice to you is like staying genuine, planning the next thing mm-hmm. fully, mm-hmm. and like sh- being there the whole time, like from an hour before okay. it starts. Because like. I don't care how big your team is and all, whatever, like, You're right. you gotta fucking be You're there, right. or else, like, it looks like you knew it wasn't gonna work out. You're and right. we're like, I'm not gonna get, you know what I mean? 100%. Um, have fun. One really thing before sad. you go, if I do ask for help for the next one and I go, help me make Hate Dies, Love Arrives 2, correct? Would you give me your guidance or advice in private? I'll give you what I can. From an outsider perspective. See, that's the thing, but though. You put a lot of Tana pressure. You put Michael. a lot of pressure on people to like. People are allowed to say no, though, and I would respect it. I asked my friends to retweet a tweet of mine. Mm-hmm. My best friends, they didn't do it. But it's and in like, that text, I said, even if you don't do it, I love you all the same. There's nothing wrong with asking for things. We should ask each other for help. I, I'm gonna ask Adam real quick. Adam, um, you know, you get bombarded all the time with people trying to send you their music or their SoundCloud link, right? Mm. Like, it's just like. You're, you're kind of being harassed, right? So then you yeah. create a system on the stream where like, okay, if you donate a hundred bucks, I'll play it, you know? There has to be a give and take. Just and supply and demand type y- thing. You know, you know what I mean? Know. So like, you're the Shane, guy Shane, much out love. There. I really can't wait to yeah, finish I'm this. So sorry, we should Shane. end this with a J between us three. Shane understands sorry, content. Yeah. Chris Long, you want to roll a blunt and sit right here and we'll all smoke a blunt together? Well, Keem ain't going to hit it. Hey, much love. Keem. I'll hit it once. Keem, Keem, Keem. So, I love that. Um, and I, now let's, let's, can we, now that we're going to light this, just relax and chill and I'll talk. Or do you, are you leaving? Or, uh, I'm down. Uh, for, I will continue listen, to sit listen, here. Listen. He's going to roll hey, you know another one. That? These things are gnarly. You know how you said that about uh, harassment? Mm. But I grew up with people like J. Cole as my supporter, like my, inf- my inspiration. J. Cole harassed Jay-Z outside of his office building and just waiting for him through the rain, through the storm, through everything. Jay-Z walked up to him. J. Cole said, Jay, he was wearing a shirt that said, get signed by Jay-Z or die trying. He said, Jay, here's the tape. Jay looked at him and said, that's not how it was done. Two years later, he has a line that says, um, uh, 
Jigga wouldn't even sign my CD when he see me two years later. We uh, here we are, um, uh, boom, boom on Blueprint. He went from harassing Jay Z outside of his building to be signed by Jay Z and on his song. What you call harassment, some people understand as energy, fire. That guy who I spoke to in uh, Drake's team at the club could have been like, I got a psycho Arab with a beard trying to meet Drake, kick him out now. He took my message and went to Drake's ear because he trusted where it was from. No, but like, okay, let's say your message was an email, all right? That email will go right to the spam folder. And there's no energy behind that. But if you, why don't we use social media to manifest our dreams? I mean, I don't know, dude. I we feel just have like, difference of opinions and how we operate what we believe in. I feel like you're I'm trying to teach the new way of how to manifest. In your career, in your career, right? You, would you agree that you're at a low point? No, I'm at the in highest your, point I've been. In your overall like career, I'm, okay, let's highest look at it like I'm like tangible things like money and views, like and money stuff, and though. views and stuff like that. No, let's, I'm at the 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 love and support now that I have. Here's the difference: I can get 10 million views, but it could be out of people telling me I should die. Or I can get the views I'm getting now. People telling me that this they is, love me. This is it's this is the point that I'm views. trying to make. Just just hear me quality. out. This is the point that I'm trying to make. Okay, when you were at the top, mm -hmm. if you would have went to me and Adam and everyone else, and you would have said, literally anyone, you would have said, "Hey, I want to do this event," right? That would have been so more authentic, right? But because like talking about numbers and views and all that, you're on a low in your career. It comes across as you trying to be relevant, you know? I'm not at a low. I don't care about relevancy because I'm going to be on a stage in stadiums as being a world-famous motivational speaker because I see that for my life. What you see at a low point, I see myself standing tall, tall at a kingdom because I took back control of my life. My relevancy comes from what I believe for myself. My girlfriend calls me a king. I call her a queen. I kiss the ground she walks on. She believes in my dreams. This morning she looked at me and she said, baby, this is only the beginning. But you don't really answer my question. You just I like, spin it. You I know? don't. I don't. I'm not spinning it. I just, I'm telling you, I don't agree with this being a low point in my career. I'm at a high point. But Keem, on, on certain measurements, like like me and, ha and Keem, like I know for me personally, I would say, you know, I'm at a, a high point right now in terms of my career, just based on the things that you can quantify, like views, subscribers, money, blah, 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 that kind of thing. And, you know, I can be honest about other times in my life when what I was. What the fuck did you just roll? Yeah, we're smoking big doinks out here. You don't want that? Yeah, but it started with a small J, and now you have a big... That's not... This thing's covered in keef that will knock your fucking socks off, Is it off, indica bro. or sativa? That's just about the it's, a, it's like a hybrid. Oh. Uh, indica. If you get it's super high and start acting funny, that would be, actually, that would be cool. That's gonna fuck me up. Um, yeah, it's gonna fuck you up. Oh, fuck. If you don't, smack, if you don't smoke backwards, it's gonna fuck you up. <coughs> Which might be good for you. <laughs> you slow like, you down a little yo, bit. Yo, you know the Uber driver yesterday, just to give you an idea? <coughs> Shout out much, Dan. For me practicing what I preach. So, <coughs> we get to the event, and I realize... Be careful when you hit that. <laughs> I realized I'm about to fuck up his car. Whisper to him, and I had a vlog. I was like, brother, if you let me use this car right now, not only will I buy this car and repair all the damages, I'm going to buy you a new car, and I'm going to give you $50,000. On the way home, you know what I told him? I was like, who do you work for? He said, Uber. One puff home. Hey, I said, who do you work for? He said, Uber. A guy named Jose. I said, do you got a family? He goes, yeah, I got a wife and kids. You know what I told him? With my girlfriend sitting next to me, I said, quit Uber today. You're now my personal driver. I'll take care of you, your wife, and your daughter for life because of the love you provided me tonight. And now he's going to be on my salary. So what I'm trying to do now, all my friends, what I did before this event, talk to each of them personally, everyone I beefed with. My whole squad who's with me right now, we hated each other three years ago because we were all Middle Easterns rising. Yeah, real quick, I got to ask you a question. Yeah. Then. Okay. <laughs> so this event cost you a shit ton of money. Yeah. All right. You're buying this guy a brand new Uber. You're yeah. taking care of his family, all this stuff. Yeah. You're at a low point um, in your career is in sense of making money, right? right? You told him during the No Jumper podcast that you didn't really have money like that. So are you going to go broke? No. I saw that. I knew I've been he was in two Tyler no. Perry movies. I've s sold a documentary with Roman Atwood. I went on a world tour with Roman Atwood. You got a lot of I've fucking views YouTube when since YouTube was good. 2011. Each I have multiple channels that you know I got billions of views. I got investments. I'm only, I got I'm houses. only saying that because you said you no, didn't have money but, like that. No, no, I say that to say you like you said you were spending money on this event, but you didn't really have because the amount of that. money that was I'm the spending. Quote. It's like it's it's like an amount because I'm not making any money in return. So my accountants are like Yusuf, this is all money out. There's no in. Okay, but do you see how that's like again more part of the credibility issue? Like, no, wait, because when, when I he tell was trying story, to act like he didn't have that much money and he was putting all his money into this, you know? When I tell this story in the book, I'm gonna be like, and I said this to my accountants, and I have everything that's so special about the book is I have everything in emails and texts, and I told them, even if I lose every single dollar, 
I still want y'all to wire transfer the money I'm asking you to transfer because I believe in this. So I didn't care, dead ass. Literally, I believe in manifestation. My dad stresses about money. My dad was a business owner, and that's why he always went broke. He won the lottery and went broke. Speaking about uh, manifestation or whatever, yeah. <laughs> like I told you I was gonna do the documentary, and you said that you know you came up with that in your head, yeah. but then on the car you were like saying I was here's what happened doing it that. just to make money. Yeah. Yeah. No. Who did it? Did, did I come up with the idea for the documentary, or did you in your head? Beautiful, you're right, you called me out on that. But here's why I got frustrated on the car, because you know, if, and I told you this in text, if the event had gone right, the documentary would have made me look like a fucking savage and people would have been like, yeah. yes, and it would have given me credibility. <laughs> me being on that car and the questions you were asking me because we didn't have this discussion yet, I already saw in my head because I let fear take over that this documentary was gonna fuck me up. So I looked like a fucking monster just lashing out at you. I felt like shit when I woke up this morning. <laughs> and, you, and you had the wife beater up here. It looked like a tank top. Yo, I felt like I was like, you know why I was terrified? Can I be honest? Now that we're smoking a big doink, I can tell you all this. I'm outside on a car with people around me. I got every news station there. I know, and I'm also talking about the president. I'm talking about Palestine and Israel. I'm talking about serious shit. I literally, on that stage, broke down in tears. And you, there's even a clip I can send you uh, somebody in the crowd took it where I'm getting in the car and I'm asking everybody to pray for my safety. I was so scared up there. I thought me talking about the issues I was talking about, I'm talking about politics here, real life shit, I was gonna get an assassinated, dead ass. I don't but think anybody brought, brought their guns to Fusi. But Kong. that's I'm not crazy. About people what you just said is just crazy. crazy. Why? What you said is crazy. Tupac Shakur, XXX dis, Tentacion. People diss um, Tupac Martin Luther and King Jr. Donald Trump all the uh, time. I'm not calling myself them, but these are all people who spoke out about serious shit. You're and not they, on that level, dude. You're not like a political. You're not I'm like not. a Malcolm you know, X. Did you not hear, I gave people a speech yesterday by telling them, guys. You said in the speech that you were worried about your family's safety. I said, I said the power is in the people. I said, fuck food. They start chanting Fusi. I said, stop. Fuck Fusi. It's us. I'm trying to tell them we're all kings and queens. This voice you're talking about, I'm not that voice. But everybody in that crowd together, spreading that energy of love, fuck racism, fuck everything, that's what could change the world. So I'm telling people, I can't change shit. I'm not Tupac, I'm not Martin Luther King, I'm nobody. But if I get you, 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 Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, if I be crazy enough to try to get all these people into one room in one night, this doink is helping. If I get them all in one room in one night, all of us together can At kill one point, him. did you say the president was talking about your event? Did I didn't say that. Did you ever say that? No. Okay, I heard it like it was a private conversation in a text message. No, I said, <laughs> it's on my Instagram. I said, uh, I, th I think I was sending, I forgot who I was sending a message to. I said, I want more eyes on this event <laughs> than the president has on his country. Because let me subtle tell you, shade. Let me, okay. let me tell you why I wanted to say that. That's no disrespect to the president. I'm saying that because if is that a Make America those, Great Again hat? Yeah, it is. Oh, Yo, <laughs> if every if every uh, artist who I wanted there, LeBron James, everybody was in that room, and they let go of everything, classism, why they're up here, but we're up here just because he's good at basketball and has a shit ton of money. Put us all on the same level for one night. That shit's gonna be powerful. It's no longer about celebrities. And a difference between celebrities and the fans. Fuck that. We're all celebrities if we choose to use our powers together. Support each other. You give love to me, I give love to you. You give love to me, I give love to you. All of a sudden, ideas get bigger. I did this idea when I got it on my own. Imagine if for the second I got the idea in Australia, I hit you up, how big you could have made it. Yeah, but we're, do you don't understand, like, we get millions of views on YouTube. If he would have did that, he could have pulled it off. I think I could have pulled exactly. it off on that Imagine level. Imagine if we all worked together on it. <coughs> I'm mean, just saying the world should help each other. We should help each other. We should talk. We should be friendly and kind. Well, I'm you know, gonna, you know what's I'm crazy? gonna create the next VidCon. So go we can, for we it. Can I all believe in it. That. I fucking believe in it. But if we're gonna do that, we should probably like charge people and like figure out how we're gonna split the money. And we should probably take like at least six months to plan it. <laughs> no, yeah. actually, and we should, uh, that's the problem with VidCon is they don't pay any of the creators. I know, and that's money. why we would have an incentive to actually start something dope. We, we would we would pay every creator that shows and up. Bro, to the we should get like fucking Jordan Peterson or some shit. Make everybody <laughs> super mad. <laughs> hey, Joe we'll Rogan. Bring too. Oh, definitely, definitely, <laughs> hey, dude. Like the, the Black two, Seed bro. Convention. Say Fousey. <laughs> You've been saying two for years. Every time I hear Keem say Fousey, I'm like, oh, just say Fousey. You know Fousey. what? Way back in the day, my name used to be DJ Keemstar, and mm. like people still call me that because that's how they learn my name. You know, but yo, something to you. Remember how you in the past videos all this shit, and then there was a time where you literally posted a video and said, "Why am I getting all this hate?" 
you came out of that and you're the only person of that time who came out of that alive and now you're running shit. Because you were able to do that, all I ask is that you look at me and through my fuck ups, through my things that you might know better than me, you're older than me, you're wiser. Instead of just saying like, Fusi, you're doing this wrong. Tell me in a way so I can learn, so I can come out of it just okay, like you did. Okay, I'll tell you. That was the best way. No, not now. In no, life. No, Too let late. me tell you like right now how I did it. Okay. Oh, no. So. Oh, you're going to tell me how you did I thought you were going to tell me what I'm doing wrong in my life. I was like, I'm too high for this. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to tell you how I survived, I'd love to you know, I'd why love to am I still getting hate. Um, a bunch of people had old clips of me when I was trolling and saying horrible things, okay? But I was saying them in the context of comedy. They were for online trolls and stuff like that. Some stuff was legitimately bad, like the Alex clip I'm sure what everyone has seen. But all that stuff when I didn't ever think I was gonna even have a fucking YouTube career that mm. was out there, other than, mm. cause like way back in the day, we didn't even get paid. Mm. Like all gaming channels couldn't get partnered on YouTube, right? So this was all for fun. Um, so. Sam Pepper and Ice Poseidon are here for the record. Well, what the fuck are we gonna do? We don't, well. We can get ice on the mic. I'm gonna actually tell them, tell them I'm going to be like 10 minutes because I gotta go to a meeting. Okay, yeah, tell them to come in in 10 minutes as soon as Keemstar is done. Yeah. Because we're gonna seat. finish this and then they can both Bro, come on. Can I explain one Content thing? Content fest. So this is gonna sound, uh, this is not, this is gonna sound crazy. It's a high thought right now, but what I've been doing, so yesterday after the event, if you're wondering how I handled it, instead of like, because I, I could have been so sad, I turned off my phone, uh, I, got, I ordered food for all my friends. We played Drake music, and we were dancing with good energy. And I told them, I was like, guys, my career and life gets ruined when I'm on my phone re finding bad about me. I ask you guys as my friends, if you see anything good about today's event, share it with me. Because what that'll do, you sharing with me and us all looking for good, it's like a frequency. Yeah, but you're also no, living, no, no, if you do that, you're also li living in a world of yes men. You can't do that. No, 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 you're living in a world of positivity. Listen to what I said that. Right now, this started with you and Shane. Y'all started energy. All of a sudden, I come, Keemstar. Now we got Ice Poseidon and Sam Pepper. There's energy around this podcast <laughs> right now. That's he, what I'm trying he to say. Said Ice Poseidon We're and Sam Pepper like so it was crazy. Like president or something. No, but, no, but it I is great. Years, we were all in the same room together smoking. The so fuck this yeah. shit on that for putting that together. Keem, good shit for coming through. I respect yeah. you for that. No, bro. no, let me explain. I've always told you all I wanted to do was smoke with you and chill. Before, oh, I want to hear what you want to say, and then I want to make a statement, and then maybe we could end this after that. Uh, okay. I, I just want to say real quick how I survived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I survived on YouTube by being real and being honest. There were things that I did that was wrong in the past, and I had to apologize for mm -hmm. them. I had to own those, right? But there were also things that I, I, I wasn't guilty of. There were things that were being made up that were complete lies. So I defended myself on those things. I kept it as real as possible. And going forward, I knew that I had to make my show more entertaining, you know? I didn't need it to like put my voice and I needed to share my opinion on my show because before I didn't as much as I do now so I could have a relationship with my audience. And it was just those two things, really. And, you know, my channel just blew up because I focused on that. Are you focused on the entertainment? I know you're focused on sharing your opinion, but are you focused on the entertainment to build up the credibility with an audience? Mm. That's beautiful. Um, how I plan on doing it moving forward, and you can tell me if this is not good, I'm gonna use social media far less. Every thought that comes into my mind doesn't go on the internet. I take time to just be off of the internet now. And I only create when I, gen like I'm not gonna do daily, I'm not gonna do vlogs, I'm not gonna clickbait shit that I don't believe in. I'm only gonna post something that I've actually took time and when the idea came to me, you know when you wait, it comes natural. I'm only gonna post content in those moments because I'm no longer, Fuck subscribers, man. I love my, but you know what I mean? Fuck the right. chase of subscribers. Because anytime I chase subscribers and views, yeah, money was good, views were good, subscribers were good, but I was miserable and everybody hated me and the money didn't make me happier. So now that I'm saying like, J. Cole, fuck money, spread love, I'm gonna try to use YouTube now. Like, I don't wanna be at the top because I know what that comes with. Like, if you wanna be a Logan, a Jake, a, a Deji, a KSI, you gotta be ready to have anybody say anything and everything about you and you can't give a shit because that's why you're at the top. If you give a shit, you're not. I can't do that, so I'm gonna manage it how I can. So I'm only gonna use YouTube on a, a frequent, like moderate level that my mental capacity can sustain. Because I, as somebody who goes through depression and bipolar, can't sustain a frequency of every day because then I'm forcing it, 
I'm not living in the moment. I'm not present. This whole conversation, I haven't touched my phone. I've been making eye contact with you because I'm making a conscious effort to be a better person and listen more. I got ADHD. I have to look away. Mm. Do you? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like bad. <clears throat> have you ever, it's a personal question, I'll ask later. What I do is I just try to multitask. That's the only way I can focus. But I bet it's aided you in the fact of how much you've gotten done at oh, once. Oh, yeah, I'm a machine, yeah. Yeah. How, You're not working at one thing at the only one thing. You're probably building an empire while somebody's, like, building a castle. Can I ask you a question, Lucy? <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you a question. How does it feel to have had, like, like when we think about YouTube, if, if there was a YouTube heavyweight division... You held the throne for a period of time. Like, you were that number one dude, like, the same way that, that Jake Paul or yeah, Logan Paul yeah, feel yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I agree Regardless with of how hated they were, yeah. you were, like, the fucking champion. And to guys like me and Keem, yeah. it was kind of like, what the fuck do all these people see in this dude? He's crazy. He's a fucking uh, yeah, yeah. lunatic. Honestly. Who is honestly. this guy? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. you were doing fucking numbers. Thank you. That, Ro you know, Roman Atwood, you could have probably put him in that category around the same time too oh, where he was like he was right up out there the just yeah. killing it that's my brother how life. does it feel you still Congrats do to you, Roman you still do, I love y'all you still do decent numbers you know it's not like you're fucking out here not doing shit the video yeah. you made about confronting I me had a, like eight, you, 800k I took a year off right yeah created a new channel <clears throat> called it the cats family turns Fusi made a million subscribers walked away from that one too. you doing all the different channels obviously yeah. has not so, been good so for your question? retention yeah, yeah. the question really is just like how do you feel when you look at that and when you see somebody like Jake Paul doing five million views a day does does it not feel like I know that like the somebody who was the the yeah. champion of the world is always gonna fucking look back on that and uh -huh. like miss that feeling or that rush of being number that, one you know why that's such a beautiful question because that's sort of why this whole thing came about. It humbled the fuck out of me. And it killed my ego and it showed me, yo, you, you, you can't treat it like you're gonna have it forever and not be grateful for it, because then it could be stripped away from you. There was a time I tweeted on the internet like a jackass, and I said, oh my God, I got paid 300 something thousand this month from YouTube. We shouldn't be getting paid this much. The universe heard that, said, fuck you numbers down money down and everything because i attracted that to myself mm. so when i got to the bottom wait is that when your cpm started crashing uh that yeah that's the trajectory of it well you think when you snitch really on funny. your earnings they, they they fuck your shit up he made a bunch of money so he did like this humble brag i saw it as a humble brag maybe it wasn't and he was he showed that he made 300k in a month and he said we shouldn't be making this much i was like, so ungrateful we're we're, we're I, I thought you were saying that we were being overpaid i was but, it, but then when I talked to Tyler Perry about this, because he's worth, he's the highest actor in the world, I said, Tyler, you have so he's much. He's the highest actor in the world? He is. I'm the highest actor Ooh, in the world. Yo, oh but I asked fuck. him this. This is a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about porn. It's okay. Yo, Listen. Johnny, roll another one. We should get ice in here. Yeah, wait, wait, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, Chris, go get ice in here I'll swap out no! for you. I, I'm swapping out as well. You, you want are? To okay. Hey, see, man. hey, much love. Thank you, brother. I think we got it. I think we, we learned a lot. My brother. See you, man. Yo, thanks for Take that. Care. Thanks for that. So we're good now. We don't got a thing later? For later no, I think we're gonna... Those are the main questions. Yo, but can you I do me to... a solid? And now after talking about this and reflecting Get them two on in here. also this footage, see how you can implement it to tell an actual story <coughs> in reality. So leave it where people aren't picking a side. They're just seeing what happened. Does that mean? I think I got it. All right. <laughs> Love you, bro. Yeah, see ya. Bro, that shit got me so high. <laughs> I, I forgot to say what I was going to say uh, about Tyler Perry. Oh, he told me, because I asked him, I was like, you made so much money. When do you, like, why don't, oh. Sam Pepper in this bitch. Nice Ice Poseidon in this bitch. I'm streaming. You want me to quit that? And you can keep streaming. It don't matter. Right. Keep streaming. We have energy here. Just, uh, you guys want to sit down? Somebody on that side? Yo, Ice, on you side? look so different in real life. <laughs> yeah, a little different. Huh? You, you know what Ice look looks like? Right now. Cut my hair. You look healthy. What's up, Sam? Ice looks like those like racist Jewish cartoons that like your fans are always posting. Racist Jewish cartoons. You know what I'm saying? Like the fucking awful oh cartoons God, of what a stereotypical play. Jewish dude. Like your fucking fans are the types of people who post that shit on fucking Twitter and people's replies and shit. But I'm, to be honest, you kind of look like that. I mean, I, I hope not. I mean, <laughs> thanks, dude. I, I guess. I mean, shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. God damn, we on the Sam, we on the Sam Pepper live stream right here. Yo, me it's and him lit. Are actually, have you guys met? Shit? No, but we're Eskimo brothers. Is that what you call oh, it? God. Oh shit! Wow, you, guys, you fucked the same girl. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah, then we did have sex with the same girl. Don't say your name, please. I no. got a girlfriend now. I love her so much. Fuck it, dude. No, I'm not saying it. Don't worry, but that's yeah. kind of funny. Yeah, and we share the same <laughs> sentiments regarding the situation, Yeah, too. I feel like when I went in her, I felt your 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 energy in that pussy, dog. I did. I did. I felt it. He felt the energy. What the fuck did this just turn <laughs> into? Was, you sorry, guys are gay. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry just to turn up, but I mean, I guess that's the same as what you did. That's so beautiful. I love that. That's um, energy. I mean, I obviously DM'd you because I wanted to clear things up, but then I watched in the stream and like you're loosely dropping things to imply that I was somewhat involved with what went oh, down. I never That's said the that. kind of vi that the vibes I was getting. I apologize Ooh. for that. I apologize for yeah. that completely. Even when I talked to my manager, he said, yo, the reason I did this to Sam and he explained like some shit about running, yeah. I never once, and even when I said it here, when I explained that you and Hampton Brandon came, yeah. I, during this live stream, I said, I'm not saying it was their audience, but I'm saying it, it was like, it was a fan. It wasn't me, it was a fan. And that's what I was expecting. I yeah, never well, would put you down fan, like that. but someone, yeah. So, so I you wanna hear my series of events what went down? I have no then, idea, I, I haven't wanna, even heard yeah, it yet. I wanna, I wanna like try and tell you what went down because there was some like uh, kind of borderline uh, problematic behavior from some of your staff. Um, I don't know your relationship with uh, John Fitzpatrick. Or do you, do you, okay. is he your manager no. or you work together at all or you help put on the yeah. event? Yeah, whatever. So him and Country, I both had some altercations with them at the event. So you know how it went down. I DM'd you, you said come by. I talked to your girl or your assistant. My or, girlfriend. Yeah, your girlfriend. And she came and gave me password, uh, the passwords to the Wi-Fi and she gave me bands and I went in. And I was streaming, streaming, streaming. And then uh, we got uh, called out. Uh, someone said there was a power cut, which obviously it turned out not to be a power cut. They mm -hmm. called us into another room and they said, look, there's been this bomb threat um, and it's, we think it's a prank. We're gonna clear everyone out. Once that's done, we're gonna pull people back in, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm still streaming at the time. All of this is streamed. Uh, I go outside, Wi-Fi is kind of shit. So I go back, sit in the VIP. Oh, I, let me rewind. Mm -hmm. I'm side stage, right? Right at the <laughs> very so beginning. Honest. This is when Adam is on, this is when Adam's on stage. I, this voice comes up behind me and they're like yo you want a Wrigley's deal and I turn around and it's fucking uh, John Fitzpatrick and John Fitzpatrick used to be my manager back at Collective oh shit yes this goes deep yeah so yeah so this is kind of yeah so anyway he he says that to me and it's a snide remark because of all of the drama that happened back in the day he dropped me as uh, from Collective and also I had this Wrigley's deal that was for $70,000 for one video and I lost that deal. So he comes up behind me and says, can I get you a Wrigley's deal? As a snide remark, like, fuck you, you got dropped, you lost everything and you lost that money. And I'd send nothing to this guy. Uh -huh. um, and so I'm just, I'm just standing now, I'm like, right, whatever, I don't engage in it because I, you know, I know I'm better than that. And I, I, to be honest with you, I think he was a bit drunk, but I don't think that's an excuse for saying anything. I walk off and I'm explaining to my stream what's going on. I'm I don't believe he was drunk. I don't know, okay. okay. Well, he's at the bar a lot. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter if he's drunk, sober, whatever. Let's not make this, uh, like, just tell it, but don't without, like, because I, I work with him. I don't want to make him seem like a bad person because I, I respect how he works with Okay, me, okay. So. I'm just saying, in my opinion, I think he was drunk. Uh, don't take that for fact. Um, I walk off and I explain the, the story to my stream mm -hmm. and he's kind of like li lingering in front and he's hearing the whole story What the story I just told you about how the drama and la la uh -huh. I walk I walk a bit further forwards and then he comes back to me again for his second dick And this time he says to me, you know why Wrigley's you know why Wrigley's uh, actually didn't want to work with you Wrigley's is a huge company. They have a stadium like everyone knows Wrigley's gum. Who are you? What's your name again? What's your name again? And he just looks at me and he just keeps saying over and over again, what's your name again? Is this on stream? What's, yeah, it's on stream, but the connection there was really bad. So I was going in and out of S. A lot of it's on stream and some of it isn't. So I have to pull up all the clips if you want to see them. I have to go through them and I'll compile them, whatever, mm -hmm. if you really want to see it. But I'm, I'm telling you the truth, right? What's your name again? What's your name again? And I'm like not playing into it. I'm just standing there, pointing the camera at him, letting him have a say. Because when people are idiots like that and just brainless haters it's much more uh productive just to film them because the live stream sees them for who they are so i point the camera at him he's saying it over and over again and then uh eventually he walks off and then that's when the bomb threat happened uh we all get pulled outside the work the service is really bad now i walk back in a little bit i'm kind of like getting my wi-fi i'm standing around and this is when uh country walks up to me so country sees me inside and he says yo you can't be here 
Which is a fair point. I think that's completely fair. I also heard like you were in an area that no one was allowed to be in. I was like, you know where the oh, you, I don't know if you did you check I out the venue before? To get into yeah. My own so venue. I was in the VIP area, and that's everyone was being holded on this like outside section of the VIP area. I was in the VIP area where the food was, uh -huh. and there wasn't many people around, maybe one or two. Um, people using the restroom, la 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 la. So he comes up to me. He's pretty. He's coming in pretty hot, but I I'm, I completely agree with him. If he wants me to like move out of an area, I'll move out of an area. So, <laughs> wait, Fusi throwing I mean, shade by looking at Ice's chat. No, I'm trying to read. I didn't read or the, the, the no jumper doing. chat. I yeah. So he comes up to me pretty hot, uh -huh. and he he starts kind of like he starts come. You know when someone says come with you and you start walking, but then they're like still like uh -huh. pushing. Who's this from? Uh, country. Oh, because that's my like. He'd literally he'd take a bullet for me. Okay, but so you weren't doing... there, and there was no one for him to take a bullet for. He, and I was he, and I was already leaving. He was. I'm just telling you how I know my team. He was probably told. He's an aggressive person. He was probably told. Saying? Somebody probably told him. Yeah, yeah. No, like he'll he'll do. Somebody probably told him keep an eye out on this guy. And I know exactly who told him that. Anyway, so he starts pushing me. He starts pushing me. The moment I go around the corner. John Fitzpatrick standing right there. Okay, it makes sense why country's being so aggressive with me now. I keep walking towards the exit, and they're chucking me out the main e exit right now where all the fans are waiting. Mm -hmm. So all the like VIPs or whatever you call them, influencers, were in a separate section. They've chucked me out into like where all the fans were, which I don't give a fuck. I go out. As I'm going out, John Fitzpatrick grabs my streaming phone, rips it off me. He says, I'm taking this. And country pushes me out of the door. Country stands there, he's a big guy, and blocks the whole door. Every time I try to reach to grab my phone, give me my phone, he pushes me back over and over again. Eventually with like, the cops have seen this because the cops told me I saw you getting kicked out and saw the whole thing go down. Probably two minutes after of this going backwards and forwards, I finally get my phone. I'm like, fuck this, I'm out of here. I don't want to deal with this fucking swatting. I don't want to fucking deal with uh, this drama. I don't want to deal with this manager being an, like an unnecessary asshole to me. Mm -hmm. So I start walking down the hill. As I'm walking down the hill, this other guy comes up to okay. me, and he I, I don't know his get name. Get to the get to the no like, no no. It's all what's relevant. What's going on for? Like what, no, what, what, it's all relevant. It's all relevant. This other guy comes up to me, and he starts asking me why you know, why are you here, why are you here, what are you doing here. Um, and I'm like, I'm invited, and he's like, how? Who invited you? I'm like, Fuzi said I could come. I spoke to his assistant, girlfriend, whatever. I show him the DMs, and he says, fine. In Adam's 22's vlog, which I later see at a later date, which is relevant to what I'm gonna tell you, Country is in the background talking to the police, right behind me, right? He's talking to the police. The moment I start walking off, I'm walking down, Country comes running down. You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. And the police have said we're free to leave if we want to. You're not going anywhere, and he's pushing me. And on, um, what are them, you know them black kids' names who are with you, right next to you vlogging at the same time? I have a footage I can show you later. DDG in them? Yeah, I don't know. They're, they're pushing me, uh, they have video of country pushing me, grabbing my arm, not letting me leave. And I'm like, why are you detaining me? Like, what if I, like you, you don't have the right to do that, first of all. And I haven't done anything wrong, just let me go. <coughs> and he won't let me go. He keeps pushing me, keeps telling me, keeps telling me. This goes on for t enough for everyone of the influencers to see it's going on. Um, then he starts shouting, officer, officer, officer. These two officers run over to me, instantly handcuff me, search me, and put me in the back of a police car for three hours. Mm -hmm. While I'm sitting in the back of the police car, <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was, whilst I'm sitting in the back of the police car, they left me alone. You cracked me up, dude. You're a good spirit. I like I'm you. Just You're just chilling. I'm just, I'm just chilling, dude. I'm just. We're, I'm here to. Let's just hear out the story, guys. Okay, okay, Come on. Okay. Because we're going to go on for fucking ever, otherwise. Whilst I'm sitting in the back of. Fuzzy, you <laughs> want to listen to this because you're going to have to address this. This is your oh, team we're talking it. about. Oh, okay. Whilst I'm sitting in the back of the police car, right in front of me is the whole police report. Four pipe bombs have been laid underneath the crowd. They're going to be detonated, and the police told me that they said they wanted $5,000. Suspect. Guy wearing a black T-shirt, shaved head with his nose pierced, okay? Not me. It, you were wearing a black T-shirt yesterday. You have your nose pierced. You have a shaved head. That's who... That's who that, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you did it, but I'm saying the person that called... Oh no, I'm not saying you did it. The person yeah, who called it in okay. was trying to frame you yeah, as, the, sense as, of humor, as, yeah. the, as the suspect, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, so I'm sitting there thinking, then why am I sitting here? Like, why am I sitting in the back of this cop car if I'm not a suspect? 
right? They never called in my name, they never called in my details. It turns out after three hours of me sitting there and I worked these details out and I asked the cops, they say, you know the people that chucked you out? One of the teams, so I don't know whether it's country and I don't know whether it's John Fitz, I can't confirm this. Mm -hmm. One of them two told the police I was shouting that I had a bomb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to answer? I mean, like, do you not think that's like the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? Can I answer now? Yeah, sure. I give you the floor, so can I get the floor now? Oh, absolutely. All right, first of all, um, I'm happy to be talking to you. Me and you did not talk to each other for a long time, and I admit, as a friend who was with you at that time that everything did happen, I did distance myself from you, just what anybody else does in fear of like, oh my God, do I, do I be a, a real ass person and support this dude or do I do what all the sheep are doing and distance myself? I knew you personally and I did do that. So first and foremost, I apologize for that. I should have at least texted you to see how you were doing. This is years ago, man. Yeah, no, I know. So I'm happy to share the room with you now because I've grown a lot as a person. Uh, thanks for that apology. And you had a lot of fun with me at the time. Mm -hmm. Like me and you were, were good friends. So I appreciated that, man. Mm -hmm. And I knew you and I did abandon you. So I do apologize. Yeah. If I could go back, I would have treated it with tenderness and care and just been like, man, I, I know what you're going through. I apologize, you know? Even if, even if, I'm not even saying you did it, but even if, right? We should still be there for each other, right? Right? Uh -huh. So I, I say what I'm about to say with love. It's the only way I know how to answer it. You might not okay. like it. It's not the answer you're looking for, but I genuinely believe this. I believe in energies. Energy. And I believe literally through energy, I attract, like we attracted, you attracted Shane, me, Keem, now you guys. The drama in your life starts way before July 15th. You live your life through drama. You stream drama, you profit off of drama. Everything you do is for content. Uh -huh. You're running away from the cops every day of your life. Uh -huh. You're living in fear. You're getting in fights with your friends. You're getting in fist fights. You're getting slapped for people uh -huh. because that's the life you're choosing to live. Yeah. Gator, gator. So I have no doubt <laughs> that the you. energy that you walk around with attracted itself to the venue. I'm not saying it was your fault. I'm uh -huh. not saying it was you. I'm not saying it was your audience. <clears throat> but the issue here isn't country. It isn't John Fitzpatrick. <laughs> It's how you live your life as so a person. So you're saying because of my energy, it justifies the fact that one of your staff shouted, you li that, told, lied to the police. You manifested it into your life. I manifested that one of your staff <laughs> member True. would Read lie the to secret. the police and commit a criminal offense Read by the confiding. secret. Because you live your life that way every day. Go. How can you justify that? When's the last time so you So when were... a school shooting happens, you say everyone that got shot in that school shooting, they manifested the fact that you were going to get no, shot. No, no, what no. a retarded way of that. thinking. I didn't say that. Don't use the word you're retarded saying, first no, off. Saying, Yo, the truth saying, hurts. Uh, no, and I said that, it with love. Because you're that pressed as shit right now. You're angry right now. You're shaking. You're shivering. There's because water in your what, eyes. What you're saying is actually insane. Because the truth it. fucking hurts, Sam, and I'm saying it, it with love. Hurt. It's comical. When's the last time you were arrested? Um, uh, When's the last time you talked to a cop? Uh, When's the last time you got in a fight place. with a friend? Every day of your life, dog. But, but, bro. Start being happier. I'm Start being nice to person. people. I'm a happy person. Crush your beef with everybody. Stop getting into fights. Okay, so what did you do for the what did you do for the swatting to happen at your event? What did I do? Yeah, no, because your 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 negative energy must have brought that there. Not true. I thought you were the most positive and happy energy vibe. Not true. Guy and that's going. why I invited Vitaly. <laughs> but so, but why? That's so why I invited King. So then, why Banks. did the swatting happen then? Because the energy, if the energy there was good, if you had positive vibes, then that shouldn't have happened. Don't you know the secret? Did it you read the secret? Because if I you invited win it, it you. Will happen. So were you winning a swat in? It happened because were I you invited winning you. A SWAT in? No, but I was willing to make the most noise that anybody has ever heard. And guess what? No. You now didn't. look what's happening. You didn't make the most noise. You got Keemstar. Sat I just sat you in your place and told you how I feel <laughs> about you, and you're literally aching in your seat, dog. No, I'm not aching. What you're saying is actually the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Well, I told you, you how I feel, deflected. and I'm staring at you in the eye, telling you. No, I didn't. Was. I said to it's you, one of your issues. team member lied to the police and said I had a bomb so that I would get arrested and then put in the back of a police car. Damn, I wonder what happened last week. Well, you said you got arrested at VidCon. What about the trip you guys just went on? I watched that shit. Yeah, you were VidCon. getting bitch slapped. You were getting in fights. You yeah. were cussing out with girls. You do this every day of your life, dog. Thanks You're living for, for this content. You're attracting this Pepper's shit to you. Chat. You, what do you not understand? You ain't a man, dog. You're right? a little boy, especially you, how you're you reacting to, to this. this. That, that's fine. I'm young at heart, man. I'm 24 and years old. And I love old. you, and I'm saying this with love, but you're unable to listen. I listened to you the whole time, and I told you how I felt. Yes, and what I was stating is like reality and facts. I told you what happened. This is your reply to that. Bro, if someone from my team lied and said that you had a bomb, bro, that's your fault because you vibed that.
That's what you said to me, I swear. Like, I'm not taking that out of context. That's what you said. I stand by every word that I said <laughs> this whole time. And I ben, still love you no as a brother. No one's That's gonna the take you me. seriously though, bro. Watch. You're a meme. Watch. Wait, You're a meme, I'm a meme? Yes. Fuzzy. Yo, yo, you wanna bring hate into this? Since you fucking fell off of YouTube, how many fucking movies have I been in? My <laughs> mentor is Tyler Perry. I just crushed the fucking world on July 15th. I bought my mama house, Sam. I bought, I bought myself a house. I bought myself a Ferrari. I bought myself a Range Rover. I've donated over $100,000 uh, oh, right, every right. single what, year to charity. What, what's the words? Uh, what is it? Lose your ego. Yeah, so why the fuck are you telling me I'm a mean now? It, what is it? Lose your ego. I bought a house. I bought a what car. What the fuck I've have you done to money. Money and me? I've been in this many me I've been in this many movies. Lose, I still say lose your love, ego, bro. by the way. Lose your ego, I'm by the way. Your I haven't even flinched. Lose your dog. ego. I've got a house. I've what got a car. What have you done? What have you bro, done to call me a mean? You surround yourself with yes men, and, and right that's why I'm a fucking leader and a champion, dog. You know that's you why I'm gonna become a world famous motivational speaker. You have money, and you give people money, and they say yes. Yeah, because I help people. You know what I told my friend who started streaming with me? Tell me if he's done this for you. Tell me if anybody's done this for you. I told him that if he flies out here, I'm going to buy his parents a house <laughs> and I'm going to make them live a good life. How, does that How have you guys supported each other I, I, like I that? I let him sleep on the bunk bed. He does. <laughs> and it's good for you. But what I'm saying is I help my friends. Yes, he helps me a Don't lot. Don't come in here trying to talk to me I like a fucking walking meme. No, I let no, people you... talk shit about me on the internet, not in real life, dog. Oh my god. Look at me in the eye when I talk to you. No, it's awkward though. <laughs> it ain't. It is. It's a little it ain't. Awkward. You're scared. No, I'm not scared. You're scared. I'm not scared of you, Fousey, because you... I'm worried for you. I'm just, okay. And I, I'm worried for you, and that's how I told you what I Look, felt about you. To me. And I still love you, and I can stare at you and say I love you, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want you to change. Bro, you I stop being a walking L. You stop being a meme. Start doing shit I for your it life. Wasn't about hate. I'm trying to tell you, you're living <laughs> your life with hate. Way. You're living your life through Look, hate. Listen you, to me. You attract hate. You came here to call me a you're walking meme, bro. You're making breakfast. Bro. I'm making dinner. You're in the summer. I'm wrapped up in the winter. J Cole. <laughs> J Cole, yes. Bro, it's it's simple. It's a J Cole line, you, dog. It, 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 what, what, my end of my point is. Are you trying to say you're ahead of me? People. People are not gonna. Bruh. People are. I gave you the most attention you're ever gonna get for your whole entire career tonight, right. dog. I don't care. Yes, you do. That's what you live for your life sure, for. For sure, I've got more views right now because I'm talking to you. Because it's fucking content. And, Fuzi, I'm what as a human being to a human being, this whole saga in your life is amazing. It's amazing for everyone to watch because it's really, really fucking entertaining, right? Regardless of anything. But as a human being to a human being. I'm genuinely worried about your mental health a little bit because the way you go on is a little bit erratic, okay? And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having any fucking sort of fucking issues, but genuinely from the way you watch and, and being in this world for a decent amount of time and knowing people that have bipolar and stuff like this, I'm not saying you do. I, do. I get them vibes from you, okay? And you surround yourself with all of these people That's that are a constantly superpower. saying yes to you, yes to you. So the more the more manic, manic you get, and and the more of these ideas you have, like putting on a concert in five days, you probably could have had a concert which was really fully packed, that had all of them views. I mean, we didn't get to see the true potential of it. But if you would have just like Sam, calmed down a little bit, I think there's only one way to deal with this: get Fuzi in the RV. No, stop, <laughs> stop, guys. Oh, yeah. But no, I'm being. I'm trying, I'm trying to be. To spread love, no. I'm trying to be. I smoke with you every I'm trying day to be army. real right now. No, I'm actually no, trying to be look, real. I get what it, you're saying. That you got all these people saying yes, and and when you have these crazy ideas, yes, 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 and I don't think it's helping you. You're not around people that are helping you. You're not around people that are being real with you. You're not people that are sitting here taking you. You're around people who bitch slap you, you live on stream. Yeah, and and when that Why are when you I doing said that? I didn't want to be around. You're around people who cuss you out. You're around people who like. People fucking violate you on a daily basis. It's, I'm around people content. who tell me they love me. You're around people who tell you they hate you. I surround myself with people who protect me. You surround but yourself with people who don't give a fuck tell about me they you. They hate me if they hated me rather than be around me and say they love me when they don't. My people do love me. That's why I asked her to be my girlfriend after last I'm not year. Saying you're I girlfriend. I'm not talking that's about why that's all girlfriend. my friends flew out here at the flip of a dime. And that's why they'll do anything because for me. Because you said if you fly them out here, you gotta buy their parents a house. Because I love them. They're they gonna say me. yes. Come on. So you look like a bitch me tonight, and buy me a house. Sam, as your boy, it. you look like a bitch tonight. You don't understand it now, but I, I hope, don't know I hope when you're older, you watch back and this even, and realize look, how, how much of a bitch look, you were even tonight. Even if I look like a bitch, right? 
me coming here and saying my point in being real and not being someone who sits here and says, yes, Fuzi, what you're doing is amazing. It's all about the energy. Mm -hmm. When someone put me in the back of a police car by telling the police that you got, I, yeah, I yeah, bombed yeah. that it's my fault because the energy fucking landed on me. Shut the fuck up, no. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, not an, I'm, I'm not a fucking hater, Fuzi. I think I love, I've loved watching your fucking saga for the last week. It's been very, very entertaining. And I my know career was actually a very nice watch too. I'm sure you've seen that. Your, what, sorry, yes, my career was actually very fun to watch too. I'm sure. Yeah, you saw the ups that. and downs, and every time there's a fucking new Fuzi outburst, I love watching it and, and watching the fucking drama alert and seeing what the fuck's going on. Right? Mm -hmm. It's fun. People love to pray into other people's lives. Okay. When your life has problems, what, watching someone else who's very successful have problems helps ease that a little bit. Okay. That's why reality TV shows work, and that's why people love prying into other people's lives because it takes away from the issues in your own life i'm just saying the way you deflected exactly what i came here to talk to you about in my opinion is the you deflected ace. you deflected why i called you a bitch no because I'm you doing, did listen because me, you i got nothing me a left to say to you to if me. you want to smoke and talk outside we can do that but i have nothing left to say to you here on air we can handle this like real man off air if you want to continue the conversation but, I've addressed but everything, here on point and you did you just deflected talk to me outside then if you want to continue off the stream what does that mean though it means talk to me like why the, but like, why would you want okay because i'm done talking currently to you. people here could you don't be, even understand currently me. people here could be thinking that i'm a bitch or you're a bitch right you're lucky I if we go out there i'm never gonna know how it ends why the would you not want to just have your say and everyone in the world know, yes, Fuzi Chu? Because right. I'm a real man and I don't need yes men on the internet to tell me who the fuck I am, you this little isn't bitch. WWE guy. Put Thank the mic you, bro. Down. I'm staring at you in the face this and is... telling you that you're missing what I'm saying. But if you want to talk what's outside that face mean? to face. What's the standing up mean? What's it that mean? Means. What's the getting closer mean? What's the grabbing mic? Like and subscribe. I don't want to do anything bad I'm and I'm trying to get, get to you. Subscribers, get the emote in the chat. I'm trying to say, if you want to talk yeah. outside without him, Without him, without him, or the whoever is watching, yeah. and handle it between two real humans yeah. face to face and understand each no, other. That's what I'm doing now. And be, no, this makes, this makes no watching? difference. This makes no difference. You know what makes a difference? The For us to do it in real life, because I don't agree with what anything you said. What did I do before? I DM'd you. I don't agree with anything you do, anything you stand by, how you live your life. We are not the same. I'm a fucking that's champion. Fine. No, You're beta yeah, as fuck. Yeah. I'm an alpha. I'm a lion. Oh, uh, that, oh that's Rawr. a yikes from me on that one. <laughs> and you're a yikes from me on that one. I love you. I'm going to head out. If you want to talk to me about being on the RV, bro, you got my number, right? <laughs> uh, we got uh, Twitter, dude. Can I take these J's? Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. You. Appreciate Shout it. Shout out to Bear Woods. Hey, before I leave, you want to Those see the song get that came out that everybody's talking about? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Let's I would it. love no. it. I bet it's better than Let's EBC. not play, play like a bit of it because I don't want to get a copyright claim because okay. so far for this whole video, we're good on the cop no copyright it's content. Four Ghosts by Lil Cutter. Featuring Fusi. Now, Lil Cutter means Lil Shit, so I'm trolling the world. There's a video and everything? Oh, you're playing Fortnite? That's an no, no, no. advertisement. Look. Okay. There's an advertisement <laughs> for Fortnite. That's fire. Yo, Khaled, how can you not work out for me? Can I get on your album, maybe? Absolutely not. Don't play yourself. Featuring yeah. Khaled, by the way. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Yeah, because Khaled talks to me in real life. He's my Palestinian <laughs> brother. Do you know DJ Khaled? I know his son. This track. Uh. They love you first, they diss you next, that's just a game. Game. Who rapper lives with his ghost rider, man, that's a lame. Lame. A character with no character, man, that's a shame. Shame. I bought my mom a crib, that's a fact. Bought myself a crib, matter of fact. You renting where you live, your whole crew's paying rent to live, that's a fact. Ego. So much happened, I've been absent. Online spazzing, throwing tantrums. True. They've been lying to the youth. Nah, pretty honest. Now it's time to tell the truth. Sam ain't got no spirit. Ooh. Got no deeper layer. Ooh. One goes writer. One goes Fortnite player. Mm -hmm. nah, one goes thinker. Really not relevant one goes Twitter poster. Add it up. That's a Sam Pepper. Stole everything in his life. Um, Jake Paul was your slurp juice. Jake Paul name drop. I practically birthed you. Can't wait for the band Hadid. When they caught you in the RV sleeping, mm. <laughs> they. <laughs> Where are those lyrics uh, from the song? <laughs> brought it back to Cali with LeBron. Ooh. K signed Deji acting strong. Logan warned me not to let them use me. 
Tyler Perry put me in his movies. Hey, show me the facts. It's not what you know. It's the weekend. I'm on a roll. Bella Hadid DM me back with an XO. <laughs> hey, and you want to do something? You know how I'm going to end this on your stream? I'll show you Bella Hadid in my DMs. You I don't care. Nobody cares. That's bitch. why it's so funny. Wait, Bella Thorne DM'd you? Bella Hadid is No, DM'd. she didn't. Bro, you got to smash the no. brag. What? If you're going to brag about a girl doing something, <laughs> no, you got to, like, no, get no, head no, or something, wait, right? You can't brag about a DM. The weekend always gets in the way. Whenever I think I'm close, there's a picture of her in the weekend. That's why the line is. Dude, fuck the weekend. The weekend got some clout, dude. But he ain't got Fousey to clout. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. The weekend ain't Fousey to. I got Bella Hadid in my DMs. What's the last girl you've had in your DMs? Probably the gal I'm seeing. Oh, okay. Ooh. Okay. You still you still doing stuff behind your girlfriend's backs? I forget, though. It's about ego and it's about clout. You still do stuff behind your girlfriend's backs or not? I don't have a I don't have a girlfriend until like the last couple of days. Oh, are you loyal to her? I'm gonna be. We gotta yeah. talk about that. I hope you stay that way. Treat her right. My girlfriend is my queen. Was that I don't a deserve little, to... Shall we talk about your past? Is that what you were just bringing up mine, right? What's my past? Shall we talk about yours? No, because I don't do that. No, talk to me. We're in talking about current now. Exactly. I'm telling you, you're not I'm gonna like that something. when I drop that on stream. I've said my past to the world. You just said to me, yo, you gotta cheat on her like you're cheating on your other girlfriends. I, oh yeah, that was a low uh -huh. day. It was low, right? Yeah. You never no cheated one on cat. I've cheated many times. Yeah, I fuck should. it, dude. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> fuck it, I'm no, honestly. Like, that's why I'm asking him. No he one, knows I've cheated, so I'm asking no him. No one. I treat my girlfriend. No like one. Queen, no one cares. Your whole song's about. Your whole movement right now is about lose your ego. At the beginning of your song, you just say they only care about clout, la la la, right, and yeah. then you drop Bella Hadid's name. Bella Hadid in my DMs. Yes. No one cares. Four ghosts on YouTube. Do you think Bella Hadid sitting at home like, damn, Fuji just shouted me out? No, she's like. That's a yikes from me, boys. That's fucking cringe. I'm out. Bro. Unsent bro. message on Instagram. I hope in every single stream for the rest of your life, your audience reminds you how much of a bitch you look like tonight. I'm sure they will. Thank you. You little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Count how many times I called him a bitch, flipped him off, told him he's a little sucker in real life, and he's a bitch who acts on the internet. And I'll give you guys, like, put up a thing. I'll throw a party in LA and throw a pizza party for you guys. I'll order that many pizzas. In yeah, honor of this little please bitch. Please don't roast me about this in the chat forever. Bro, your life is ruined that Please, guys. Bitch. Don't mess with somebody trying to spread positivity and love. But I lo okay, wait, wait. Again. I love that sentence. Say it again, please. Your, life's, your, 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 life, is, your life is ruined <laughs> after this. Don't, this? You gotta, you gotta go out this. You yeah, can't sure. go out the front anymore. Your ghosts. Chris, film. Now on iTunes. Bella D, did my DMs with an XO. Thanks for the Thank promotion. You. Thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. Fusi, you gotta go out this way. Bye. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. I mean, if you actually answer my DMs, you DM me and then you and then I'll DM you back and then you don't DM me back for like weeks. Wanna come too? Let's do like. Oh, I'll go. Oh yeah. Set up like. Fuck Keemstar. Everybody, I'll put Keemstar a little no mouth. It'll be dope. All right. Hell yeah. Can Bella we just D, summarize that DMs. whole chat with the last sentence he said before Holy he walked out the fuck. door? What? This is the last sentence he said when he walked out the door. Don't... Uh, you, uh, How's said, your life ruined? He said, yeah, your life is now ruined. Don't ever fuck with anyone who's trying to spread positivity. <laughs> Can you make a little more... Like, come on, Fuzzy, my guy. Like, I don't want to believe in you. I want positivity. I want the ha world to be a happy place, but... You, like you, you, you have anger issues. You have fucking some sort of issue. Like I think he's funny. Oh, that's I think, I think he's, he's hilarious. Yeah, he's hilarious, best. but he's not trying to be funny. But that's why he's funny. Yeah, of course. And that's what I said before the stream. I said it's content, and I fucking love this. And this is like such an amazing saga right now. The Fuzzy Tube saga right now is just fucking amazing because we're all gonna watch it at the edge of our seats. Like, what that shit crazy stuff is he gonna do next? The same with Miley Cyrus when she went off the rocker. And she fucking started smoking and doing, you were like, what's Miley Cyrus going to do next? <laughs> it's the same shit. He's, he'll, he'll go through this phase for a bit. He'll maybe calm down. He'll probably apologize for like, yeah, guys, I was losing my mind. I was manic, la, 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 la. And then it'll fucking calm back down and it will repeat again in a fucking year's time. It's like the Fousey Tube cycle. Can I just say one thing is that. Is when, there any water? When I woke up this morning, I thought to myself, I thought. I hope that tonight on the live stream we can just get a bunch of people to come through and just, you know, 
just talk and like we'll just get some good clips for the YouTube. Yeah, everyone, never in my life did I expect it to be like this. No jumper on uh, YouTube. Go and watch the live stream now. I'm just going to end this. It's pointless having two streams. So, <laughs> all of you 5,000, go over to No Jumper right 23K now. 23K watching this right no now. Go to No Jumper right now, okay? Just search No Jumper and watch the stream there. I'll be back later to recap. Yeah. So what, what, what did you think about the concert yesterday? Because I was on the way, and then it got shut down while I was driving there, which mm, I, I fucking heard. hated. I was, like, trying to fucking get over there. Because you thought that it would be normal to be, like, 45 minutes late. In reality, it was shut down 45 minutes after it started. Yeah, I figured I'd just get there. Everything's already happening. i just yeah. fucking have some good time. I don't know. Be, Insanity. What did you think about it? I mean, all right. To be totally honest, like, I showed up and we you know we walk in there's there there were like a fair amount of famous people there like styles p was there mano was there it's just all the like like there were some rappers that were going to perform and shit wi-fi's funeral was there but then you get out there and it's like not even like a thousand people and apparently that venue can hold like 5500 people so it's kind of like damn like well, you know, it's it's a decent amount of people. And the but live stream wasn't two million either. It didn't look that crazy. I mean, crazy. the live stream had sixty thousand viewers. Like that's a point. Full, that's pretty good. That's a full yeah. house. Yeah, but a lot of people, you you got to think that they were just watching it to try to like see him fail or something in a certain way, don't you think? That they were just sort of like oh, they yeah. knew something crazy was going to happen. I mean, that was definitely kind of my attitude when I went. It's like whether uh, this is good or whether it's bad, this is going to be insane. I don't think anybody watches anything for positive outcomes. I think a lot of things that people watch especially live streams people watch them to see the crazy shit happen yeah um, you know what i mean like when they're watching sam or they're watching me like they just want to see us get hit by a car dude let's be real yeah, so yeah i mean it, it doesn't matter though because it's still a viewer so yeah it's not yeah. like it's not like 60,000 people who wanted to follow youtube uh Fousey tubes movement was watching the fucking live stream it's a mixture of people that want to see a car crash and it's a mixture of people who are his supporters and i mean you know what? He honestly could have filled that. I don't doubt Fuji Tube. I think, honestly, maybe he could have filled that arena up. But setting yourself a five day goal mm. is it's just stupid. And just not paying artists or booking artists is just a weird way to go about it. Like his whole thing, it was like this experiment to see if he could book a show without doing any of the things that are normally done to make sure that a show goes well, such as, you know, booking artists way in advance, paying them a certain amount of money to make sure that they show up, advertising it on the radio, on Facebook, all these different things that they do to sell out a 5,500 person venue. If he had done all those things, yeah, I definitely think that he could have probably done it. But he probably also would have had to like pay the artists and all that kind of stuff. Instead, he tried to just get by on just the energy of love and happiness and blah, blah, blah. And in the end, it didn't get screwed up by anything really related to his lack of preparedness, really. Yeah. It really got shut uh, down what, due to something shitty that could happen to anybody at any given time. What kind of upset me uh, or irked me, should I say, the most about the whole thing was before the event, it was kind of pushed, and, and tell me if I perceive this wrong. It was pushed as this kind of charity vibe. It was pushed as this, like, this is something for the world, right? Mm. And I feel like that's maybe why a lot, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel that's why a lot of artists got involved, because they thought they were doing something for a very positive, and, like, you know, he was going to talk about a charity or talk about something very, very... Fit. But it was... It, you know when the diss track leaked, the fucking four ghosts? I thought it was a troll. I thought, oh, this must be an old old song from a long time ago to think that that whole event was put on for Fuzzy tube to walk out there and perform a diss track against rice gum <laughs> after telling all these artists come here like i'm doing this big positive movement it's all about the kids it's about yeah, making yeah. our world a better drake come here this is about <laughs> making just the putting world drake's picture on the face on the, he on the said thumbnail. that drake was going to perform before him and then he was going to go on drake was going to be the opener <laughs> for Fuzzy tube to perform a diss track against Rice Gum. Did you guys hear a story told Keemstar and me about, about how he was at the club and how he like got into Drake's entourage and was like, you know, got people to agree that he would come and all this like, you know, it's part of this ridiculously long like four hour live stream. I think stream. he's a good, uh, he, he's, I mean, I think he's a good liar. Let's be honest, <laughs> that the, oh, the whole thing was all about him proving to himself that he could do it. Well, he I just wanted to prove that he could do something insane in a really short period of time off of this ridiculous wave of energy that he has because he just got off his antidepressants. I, I, heard from I don't think it was worth it, though, honestly. like, what, I don't see what he got out of it. Like, I mean, I guess, like, I, you get, like, uh, some recognition or whatever, but was he, it worth the amount of money he spent? He probably wasted a bunch of money, yeah. I heard off the grapevine that um, 
he it all stemmed from this meet and greet he did in Australia where no one turned up. Oh. And I, I just from the grapevine. Uh, someone told me that he did this meeting green Australia a very very low amount of people turned up and that really triggered him And he was very upset and I and apparently since then he's been trying to like prove himself He pretty much admitted that when I did the no jumper interview with him uh, He said that like because he's talking about how he, when he was out there on the Roman Atwood tour or whatever that there was like 3,500 people and then he went out there uh, Recently and it was 350 people or something like that, which who knows if that was even uh, Accurate, but yeah, he definitely like mentioned this Australian tour thing as a thing that made him which I guess you know it makes sense because we've all watched his career and it's like for a while he was getting like two million views per vlog multiple different channels putting out a ridiculous amount of content but then he would always just fall into these like dark depressions where he would just go away for a few months or even like a year he's his own worst enemy like straight yeah. up like for me I've had ups and downs mm. and some of them like weren't directly related because of me but with FoosieTube, I feel like he could have had a very consistent career yeah. and been very successful and made a lot of money if he wasn't battling himself the whole time. Yeah, and for sure. And I mean, 100%, like in a sense, a lot of his content was kind of captivating or at least like the fans couldn't look away because he was like exploring his own mental illness on stream like he or on, on his vlogs. Like he would sit there and fucking cry and just do things that like it would never occur to me in a million years to actually put that, that side of me out there if I was going through something like that. But then those same like manic episodes are what led him to, you know, not consistently make you know content and just go away and then he would come back and his views would be way worse and everything i mean if he's su succeeded in anything through all this it's that everybody's all of a sudden talking about him which nobody's been talking about him for like the past year mm -hmm. when you look at somebody like jake paul logan paul you could say that they're uh you know not necessarily the most savory characters but they're certainly acting in their own best and interest they just make a fuckload yeah. of content you know even somebody like me i'm like you guys you know, like we're fucking making shit all the time and like even if i was really upset it's like i'm not going to disappear for a few months i could not imagine myself getting that upset you know well, uh, i mean i think i mean i don't really know what's going on in his head but if he has like uh you know bipolar like he said then you know this is definitely not the you know the job title for him like this is not healthy for him you know mm -hmm. what i mean um because as a content creator you are gonna go through like happy spurts depression spurts like it's just part of it so if he can't handle that, then he's gonna obviously he's freak like the, the fuck out. He's like the type of guy that gets triggered by any hate comment. You know, you know, he's the type of guy that reads that shit and it actually hurts him. I mean, and I think yeah. anyone he's been pretty upfront about that about yeah, how the comments will fuck him up. Anyone that's in the front line, like how he, like the Keemstar thing when he was on top of that car and he like did that fucking roar. You. No, he says you. <laughs> Like and his face drops and goes really long and I mean <laughs> he's talking about fucking wanting to kill himself so it's pretty fucking dark but the fact that um, that Keem was the, the guy who made him go that far is just like stupid like it's fucking Keemstar he's a gnome like uh, you've got to take him for what he is like he does his job he reports on fucking news and just like but that's the whole thing with FouseyTube is like the way he just fucking freaked out on you on stream like I would not probably I don't think anyone could make me like fucking stand up and scream in the middle of a podcast well? or anything. I think he just did that for attention no but right? that's why he he's such a captain that's why he's kind of a captivating content creator is because he is his emotions are just running rampant at yeah. all times like all of us it, of are very person. reserved in comparison to him he goes in CX Network oh yeah I'll put FouseyTube on the CX, CX Network I think he would make a perfect fit on his life yes Paul is known <laughs> Oh no! You, you want him? I'm out. Yeah, bring him in. Yep, get him in here. Brandon Hampton's oh, here. Oh God! The p type of the type of people. Scoot over so he can just sit there. The type of people that um. God, I wish we got to see Brandon Hampton and Fusi together. That would have been fire. The type of people that uh, Paul likes to <laughs> have around him are these people that are very unpredictable because they they provide they provide good content. Sit down, so man. That's you want to get I in? I think Fusi Chu would be a great fucking. Uh, a great member yeah. for the uh, for the What's up, guys? for the uh, CX network. You want to get in here, Hampton? I just want to say hi. What's up, bro? But you're not even on camera. We gotta get we gotta get the the shot. Take I want a seat. I want you guys. 
Do you want Sam and Ice to switch so that you don't have to be seated directly no, no, next no, to him? Does that make you nervous, Paul? I'm just watching the fight. I was enjoying. I want to get here. I was get on the mic. Come on, get in there. You know, Sam. He, I know. Get in here. Get no, on the mic. Tell us your opinion on Fuji Tube. Why not? I want to hear it. In, no, come on. Oh man. We get in here. Yes. Ten toes. Ten yes. Where's the camera? Right there. Right there. Right there. Ten toes in the fucking chat. What did I think about? Brandon Hampton on no jumper. Who never, who never thought up, it was possible? How you doing, bro? <laughs> Attempt at Fuzzy's a white boy cool, handshake. Fuji did his thing. He spent a lot of money on a project and it didn't go his way. Look at you smiling. You are such a snake. Anyway, I only come to I say like hey. I was gonna say I like I bring you. some girls I like here. Yeah, I bring it for you, bro. Thank you. I just, I just, Is thank that you. Gucci? No. No. It's Fuji. Oh. Maybe you could get me on some Gucci shit soon. I can. I shoplift there. <laughs> oh shit! I told you, bro. <laughs> you got bands? Yeah, I got. Some red, red, I, I'd be scamming. I'm a known podcaster I, slash I credit card you, scammer. I heard you were. Definitely in tune. Oh, I got stripes in the oh, scammering God. streets. Yeah. Hey, bro, well, ask about me then. Ask about me. It's like, we're not doing none of that. God damn it. <laughs> That's a meme right uh, there. <laughs> I'm just going to roll this blunt. I'm sort of like nervous because there's so many big entities here. How do you feel being around ice? Like, what's the energy right, right here? I think, it's no, pretty I, spoke, I think it's pretty neutral energy, honestly. We spoke off stream already, so here yeah, we go. Yeah, we already squashed Since over. you confronted him at his apartment, which we all saw on YouTube. Uh, no, there was another, like, it was off cam. Yeah, you talked off cam. Yeah, that was, like, sort of for the, I'm not going to say it was fake, but, like, it's, like, for... I would hope it wasn't fake. It, I mean, like, it's not, I mean, your, your life is sort of fake, bro. It's sort of fucking crazy, oh, so. Oh, we go. I no mean, one knows you off stream, so it's, like, everything involved is, like, on stream, so. I mean, I guess that goes for it's any It's so extra, creator. and you have to act extra oh, if you want to oh. have a fan base and I shit mean, like that, so. I disagree. I, I think any content creator has, like, definitely their personal life, but... I'm pretty transparent compared to most. Wow, you've actually worked on yourself and waited for these kinds of topics to come up so you can speak very well. Oh, God. So, media about? training. I suppose, great, have you been to media someone, training? Yes, I great. actually majored in PR, so. Oh. Oh, yes. That was good. Puerto Rico? You know, it's like, ah! <laughs> I should have figured oh as much. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so this is the this is the big topic at hand. Why do you all of your personal relationships in your real life cause you so much problems if you majored in PR? Like literally, the subject at hand, the reality of the situation is such as Caroline, Steve, the most toxic people that you have around you that basically you view as. Just staples in your life that you won't get a, get rid of, and like literally. Well, those like are just money. people that you, you don't necessarily like. You are supposed to fake until you make it, and basically you've proven to a hundred well, people that's that not true. you basically go off a whim multiple times because you, your biggest projects projects fail. Uh, no, they don't. Go, what do you mean? What's my breakfast? In my opinion, things don't go as sweet as they could be because UFC uh, X was a success. Like, All the RVs were a success. Agreed, but they they could have went better and. They didn't run off of like friendship. Well, I mean, you were there, like, but you didn't really help. You were just smoking weed, dancing the suspect all day. So, what do you mean? I didn't get paid for that, so you got paid for every time the song came on, bro. <laughs> shout out to Trap Dez, bro. I'm not talking no shit. So uh, you're only in it for the money. No, shouts out to Trap Dez. I'm shout. I'm, I'm in it to be basically what I want to be, an influencer. You want to dress like me? You want to be like me? You want to not deal with snakes like me? Then get up and fucking not let put mother. Oh, he's trying to put us in a box. Let's go. <laughs> That's all I have to say. He's trying to put us in a box. What are we talking about? I mean, you know, he brought up the not the non-success. I my never events. got paid for any of my work for him. Now he's bringing this shit up. He is such a manipulative Wait, bastard. You're the one Wait, you got, granted. You got granted. Granted. I'm, I'm smoking it. this back. All I'm not paying you money to be on my platform. You came here, Adam. I'm sorry. You came here, Brandon. What are you talking about being in the box? I'm here for it. Oh no, I came here to watch the argument. But this is the situation that me and him are speaking about that you're butting in on. As you're rudely interrupted, shut the fuck up, Snake. I'm so sorry. Leave your butt buddy alone, bro. I'm so sorry. If you had a pussy you guys be fucking why are you leaving this is fun we, he doesn't have a pussy and i still Adam, fuck him I and what i love you too i was i had previous plans i only wanted to be in the behind the scenes for a second you going to the club uh no delilah's i'm a loser bro show me how to have fun i will i'll come back can i i know some I, girls that, that you'd can like you? can you pee on me i don't think so that, that would be weird <laughs> i watched my girlfriend pee on a girl the other day um <laughs> Oh my God! See, yeah, give oh it to me, God. Brandon. Wait, how do we get out of here? Uh, right out that that Why door right there. Chris will guide you out. Fousey, bro. I know. Fousey is out there throwing a tantrum. He's still I'm out like, there. I came in here like, what's gonna happen? What the fuck? He wasn't really too 
uh, specific on what was going on, but he left like broken. As much as it's weird <laughs> that Fu- <laughs> you know what's funny is that Fusi left, but you know he still watches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Uh, that way or that way. Uh, I really appreciate your outfit. Later, bro. I appreciate I'll hit you your outfit, up. Brandon. Thanks for saying hi. God, that was fascinating. That was amazing. Whoa. The content is flowing. I, I, I almost like next? can't think of anyone else who could show up that would I really be that. I said before we got here, this is just turned into Ice's living room today. It's just open rain. Whoever fucking turns up is invited in. See, I want my podcast to be like this. I want people to just be like, it's just a fucking royal rumble. <laughs> don't say it. Don't no, say I don't. It. No, no, no. No, it's fun. It's just allow it. And it's if really it was fun. rappers, it could get dangerous real quick. There'd yeah. be a lot of bad things I mean, that could come about. But if people want to come on here and hash shit out, debate, talk about things, I'm happy to be a platform for that. Yeah, I really wish he would have stayed to talk about more of uh, what he was saying because... That was odd. That was really odd. <laughs> Can you believe, what, what, from your guy's point of view, because I know I'm in shock about it, but I, like the way he addressed a, a very serious situation, someone lying to the police and saying they have a bomb. Mm. Like, what if I panicked when the police came up to me and ran? I would have been shot dead because uh, someone just told them I have a bomb. Like, it's a very serious situation. And, and, but Fusi's analysis of that was... You manifest these things into your life. No, he said it's my fault. Yeah, because of my energy, <laughs> I made his friend lie to the police. What? What's your, honestly? I mean, memes aside. I mean, that's just an excuse because he doesn't know the answer. And do we know for a fact that his his coworkers? It was slept? someone from his team. Uh, the policeman told me on his recording. He's recording everything. The policeman told me someone from the team who chucked you out told them they had that I had a bomb. Mm. I mean. And it's from a policeman's mouth. Have you thought about talking to the cops and being like, I think this happened. Can we consult the body cam or whatever? Yeah. uh, At the time, I really should have done it because now Uh, I don't have a fucking... I could probably call up the police station and find out what officer dealt with me. But after being in the police car for three hours, I was just happy to be the fuck out of that. And also... Sam, I have the cable. I didn't know... We got uh, a charger right here if you want. Also, I didn't know that it was... uh, I didn't... I, my confirmation for the fact that I think it was country was because I see him in your vlog talking to the cops right before the cops come to me. Who? Hang out? <laughs> no, there's no hanging out. We're running a tight ship here. These are either on camera or no. All right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. We're, wait, is that weird? It's I just weird. don't want no, like no, people no, hanging no, out. Like it's normal. just a security type thing. No, you know? We don't have normal. enough people here to no, watch people. It was so. that kind of well, uh, you'd have people standing around your, outside your place all day. Could you imagine if people thought that they could just come in here? How many people would be showing up? It's bad enough that like at least people. I mean, it's not that bad. I just I do it, and it's only like twenty people a day. Yeah, but you have a different uh, fan base than mine. My, I have a lot of weird, weird fans. They show up with drugs and guns and shit. I've seen it. I've had somebody show up with a stick. Yeah, a stick. Yeah, like a walking stick. Yeah, but people literally show up fucked up off drugs with drugs to show how much drugs they have. And that's weird. That's like, oh, my God, I cannot believe that this is my fucking life. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that would not be something I would want to deal with. No, it's, it's insane. That's why we try to just run a real tight ship. Nobody's allowed to come in. Anyway, yeah, so... The Fusi thing. Did you, so did you realize you had issues with Fusi before you were kicked out of Fusi Khan? So, okay. So me and Fusi have a lot of history. Right. From, like, I'm talking like minimum of five years. Like, we used to make fucking fake pranks together back in the day. Mm-hmm. And um, then, then he went on this kind of all righteous kind of movement a while ago. Like, this is, you know, this isn't the first time he's done this. Like, he's done it a multiple times. And when he was on one of them springs at a time, I, I tweeted out something like... Um, you know, I tweet out something like, like, you preach about all this shit, but, like, you're not a perfect human being. And he acts like he is. He acts like he's this, you know, this perfect human sometimes. And I tweeted out. So I feel like, I feel, I feel like that he, there might have been some tension. But I think the reason why he did DM me back and invite me to the event, because he's trying to prove to himself 
that I am a good person and I do believe in positivity and I do believe in letting hate go and that's why I invite Keem to the event, would you say? Yeah, yeah. Because he definitely had an me. issue with Keem. Yeah, yeah, and, and I made the fucking video talking shit about him, so he basically, you know, that was a big part of his whole plan was like, I'm gonna, you know, come at, you know, somebody like academics, Keem start me and just basically people would sort of clowned on him and come at us with so much energy that he was gonna do something amazing that we would all be down. And we all, like, academics said he was originally, then he just stopped talking to him i said i was down and i actually went keemstar chose to basically hire a documentary crew to make a documentary about what was going to happen throughout the course of this whole thing and uh, you know fusi at a certain point wasn't very happy about that since he obviously knew that keem was just gonna run with like what, a hit piece. whatever fucking narrative think, uh, he wants you know i think you guys are looking too deep into it i think he just invited everyone that he could to get as many people there as possible oh yeah because he was trying to get any possible rapper that he knew he was hitting me up just trying to get me to like get all these different I, artists I'm to so come i'm like i think the energy thing is like a marketing tactic well maybe also, i'm just maybe i'm too logical this is, I don't know. and also yeah no i think it is and also here's a very controversial one so don't like hold me completely to it he definitely runs on the uh on the muslim market as well pretty hard like he pushes the whole um that he's really good to his gods and like the praying on his Instagram and all that's that definitely shit. a huge part of his, like, his that's base part of audience. That, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm not saying that he isn't a religious person. I'm not saying that he does praise his God and like he, you know, he is everything. But he uses definitely uses certain aspects to his uh, you know, to his advantage. I feel like it's hilarious that he knew about everything, EBZ, everyone. Who Fuzzy? Yeah, that's well, crazy. He watches the streams. I've How talked to him. In, I've oh. talked to him in DMs before. He's like, uh, he's invited me to come, uh, you know, stream with him and shit like that. And he he wanted to know about the live view and like all this other he's shit. He's probably just seen like highlight clips on YouTube or some shit. Like I can't imagine him sitting down watching like. Why not? If I mean, if it's like, I want to like see you in the, the same, chat next time, my guy. It's Let the me same see you thing. In the chat. Yeah, it's the same thing as a YouTube video. But when you really like look at how mad he got at you there, like I'm gonna be honest, I haven't screamed at someone like that in like at least ten plus years. He got so fucking mad. There were veins popping up all over his neck and shit. Like, what? But I'm kind of still... St like, if someone were to just ask me, like, why did Fusi get that mad at Sam? I'd be like, I don't really know. I feel like no one's really... To this point, he's not had someone actually approach mm. him and very, like... You know, like, sternly question his motives and mm. question what he's saying and call him out when he's saying like just stupid stuff because he was kind of getting well it was kind of like that with keemstar earlier where he was getting a little bit flustered and stuff because keemstar was trying to just hit him with like actual logic and shit and just ask him like pretty good questions but with you he went full wwe and that he, was crazy he grabbed the mic did the wwe thing where he got the mic and like Crazy over me shouting in the mouth. I was really thinking, I'm like, wow, what is going to happen if he hits him? I was thinking, man, if he hits him, this shit is going to go so viral. So I was just... Yeah, you were just like, let it happen. <laughs> I let mean, it would, if he hit you, it would honestly be good for I, everybody. I, I, yeah, I was ready. It would have been good for everybody because it would have been good for me. My shit would have gone viral. It'd been good for you. Everybody's talking about you all of a sudden. And it'd be good for him. Everybody's talking about him for all of a sudden, even though it is completely... Uh, in you know counter to his, his I mean, message I, I i know he's manic and i know i probably could have pushed his buttons a little bit harder and got it to the point where i don't know what would if i was thinking in my head what would happen if i just stood up right now head to head with him he was he wasn't gonna hit you thank you i don't you think so he was gonna much. hit you thank either you, you want to come sit here and yeah, smoke yeah. that chris sure. like he's not stupid like he wasn't gonna hit you he, nah, he, yeah. i think he's just trying to play it up i don't think he would god like him knowing how much shit he would get in for hitting you, it would he would have to be so mad to actually do it. <laughs> People in the chat are saying they don't want to see EBZ on the RV. They want to see um, they don't want to see Fuzi on the RV. They want to see EBZ first Fuzi tube for UFC X2. Wow, that uh, is a great idea. I would idea. love to do that, but I mean, I don't think Fuzi tube would uh, do that for you know the message he's trying to portray. I don't know that. if Fuzi tube could could handle being on the RV. I would like to go on the RV. I also wonder I if I'd be able to money. handle it. I would pay money. I would love to see FouseyTube go on my stream for one day and then have him do the Reddit recap because I know what the fuck's going to happen oh my <laughs> after God. he goes on for a day. Imagine if he knew about the Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> you think he knows? Because <laughs> imagine know. their evaluation. Like, you are their leader, and they still are insanely critical of you. Think about what they would say about him. 
I mean, it would just be uh, like I don't even know, dude. I mean, they would just point out all his insecurities. Do you guys think you're gonna be able to handle this conversation while I go take a piss for like 45 yeah, seconds? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I'll wait for you before I light this up. So, I honestly, if I came up to you yeah. and I said I was gonna drop a hundred thousand dollars and I have a hundred thousand saved up on a concert, what would you say to me? Would you go with it? I would tell you how long have you got to plan it? How much are the tickets? How are you gonna Three make Three tickets, five days. I would say no, you're fucking an idiot. Like I'd yes. say that to you. You wouldn't be you like could, you could say to me, Sam, I've got a hundred thousand and ten thousand of it can go to you for organizing the event. I just want to fill out a stadium. I'd still sit there and I'd tell you, you're a fucking idiot. I can take your $10,000, but we're never going to get the place filled up. You know what I mean? But the people around him aren't them people. There are people that say, yes, I would love your money. Like, let me, let me um, help put on this event for you. You know, it, when Those people are going to get something out of it. Yeah, when someone's throwing money around and saying, I'm going to pay for you to do this. I, you think he has, like, actual like real people, like real friends yeah. like will help him out? He's had these two kids that have been with him since I've known him. Um, I can't think of their fucking names now, but they're in a lot of his vlogs. And I saw them at the event. And they've been his friends for a very, very long time, but I still don't know whether they're the type of people that would... You know how he, you know when I said to him, the problem is you surround yourself with yes man, and you know what he said, he, did you hear the reply? He said, yes, I do, because I'm the alpha, I'm the lion, I'm the boss. And when you have that, like, the problem is that he has that mindset where he's happy to accept every fucking yes man. So he, d he doesn't even care that they're yes men. Like, oh, how would you? I would say that that is probably a pretty accurate. It seemed like everybody that he was with had fully drank the fucking kool-aid on what he said he was cooking up that they were just down for whatever he just is a psychopath there's, there's no <laughs> doubt about yeah. it My fr i have a friend that's bipolar and he is act he goes he's manic he's manic 100 percent right. manic he's a fucking psychopath right. that like, no doubt me about and paul it. have seen many a fucking yeah. bipolar person I, even in the in last this two type weeks. of world i feel yeah. like yeah, yeah i feel I like his intentions people. are good i'm sure and like in his mind somewhere but it's just he's a fucking idiot <laughs> it's funny it because it there's there's very different perspectives on this because people who are aware of what Fusi accomplished during his time on YouTube are very like you know in awe of what he's done and everything. But then for certain people, which I'm guessing you're put in that group, they they weren't really observing him during that run, I mean, and so to them they're just like, who the fuck is this guy, and why the fuck is everyone taking this shit so serious? I mean, yeah, I've known who he was, but yeah, I've never really like watched his shit. I've seen some of it. I thought it was stupid because I, I can tell it's like the frick, the Sam. fake prank shit or whatever. And then uh, I don't know. I just he like is a nice guy. Like comes off as a nice guy, but he's just <coughs> fucking. Insane. So, yeah. I mean, he's just. I mean, yeah, he's pretty out there. I mean, getting off the fucking the meds will do that to you, you know. Yeah, I want to do my thing. So, um, you can stay here if you want. I just want to go do my thing. No, no, we've we interrupted enough anyway as it is. I mean, you can stick around if you want. I'm I mean, a, it doesn't matter. It's fine by me if you want to keep talking about shit. But I mean, all right. Well, I'll I, go do your thing, and then I'll make. I mean, unless you want me to come with. No, no, no. I'm just right. gonna go back to my apartment and stream or whatever. So. All right. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Hey, Peace out, dude. Much love, brother. Of course, of course. Thank you. Peace, bro. Wow, what a fucking night. Can you turn that monitor back on too? Yes. <sighs> oh man, I wish every night was like this on here. Maybe I can arrange that. I just need more like contacts, more people who want to argue about shit with each other. You just need to be quick on the situations when they happen. Mm. So like, you know, like you, you, you should have reached like, I don't know if you did, but like you, a moment that happened, that whole event just happened, you should have hit up Fousey and said, look, come on no jumper and talk about everything that happened yesterday. Yeah, you I mean, know, you can bait the drama. Really the well. funny part is just the fact that I was doing what? up until the point that it stopped was a very, very good Shane Dawson interview. Like, me and him were having oh, a great Shane. conversation. And he's, you know, Shane is is a very, like, delicate flower. He's a, he's, a, he's such a sweet, nice guy and everything. Did anyone even update the title of this stream right no, now? No, I haven't it's changed it at all. Based, <laughs> based on the title and everything, you okay. would think that this, we, this stream we, was still me and Shane. We had, like, 25,000. We had 25,000 at one point. That was yeah. definitely our record. Yeah. Huh? 
Uh, if you give me the fucking mouse and if you put the if you put the the keyboard or the the monitor right there, boom. Sorry, that's just a streamer inside me. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're smart. Although to be real, <laughs> and we still honestly we still have twenty thousand people in here, which is fucking crazy. I don't know, but I mean, what am I going to change the fucking title to that's better than Shane Dawson? The no, fake, the fake title's it. almost keep, better. Keep the clip by. <laughs> and it's not like I'm going to be able to do another. My, Post my Fousey Tube. Uh, My thumbnail's fire right now, no, though, even though it. it's completely inaccurate. It. Yeah. Fuck it. Clickbait. Clickbait gang. The, the real question is how many, how much I made in donations during that, because that's something I wasn't paying attention to. Yeah, I all. donated to you before I came over. Oh, for real? See, I, I haven't been looking at all. Ask, I donated saying ask, um, ask Fuzi why, what someone from his team said I had a bomb to get me detained. And then I was like, fuck it. Like, and then everyone in the chat was saying, Sam, just come, just come, just come. And then... I was like, fuck it, I'll turn on my stream, let's fucking do this. I love it. I also, I just love the, I love being able to be like the vessel for the CX drama. <laughs> like for like CX drama so to just play off here. Cause it's just a, it's just a good like neutral venue for it. Because I just kind of know, like if him versus Brandon Hampton, I would love to do that podcast, but it's not like, I'm, I'm not worried about it. You know, yeah. it's like, cause I'm, I don't give a fuck either way. I'm not like invested. I yeah. think a lot of us are all waiting on the, um, the EBZ interview. Um, and we should like, definitely cover this up there. Yeah, we're, we're, we're all waiting on that, and we've got to get that fucking gator gator some plays, you know? <coughs> oh, yeah. So, um, gator gator. I'm good right now, thanks. Right now. <coughs> uh, but, yeah, I don't, I don't know where this is going to go from today. I don't know whether he's going to plan a new event or... What do you think? Like, To be honest, I think he's probably going <coughs> to... Well, let's be real. There's two options. One... He gets super motivated. He actually tries to do some types of projects, whether it's the, cl the cl something clothing related, whether it's new types of content, whether it's more events, starts to do them in like a serious way. That's a possibility. The other possibility is that he sort of takes this, realizes that he took an L on this, and then is so upset about it that he just curls up into a ball in his room and we don't see anything from, from him for a few months or he moves back to Jersey and just chills or whatever. And, you know, I hope that doesn't happen, honestly, in his defense. Like, he does have the capability. Like, he wants to be a motivational I speaker. He wants to do books. He could do that stuff. Like, I'm not saying he's going to be the biggest motivational speaker in the world, but he clearly has some sort of ability to talk to groups of people and but he, he does have like an, a douche he has an existing I fan base he doesn't stop because I he need like the is content. sitting there bragging about every he just name dropping everything in the world every he brought person, it out of him so bad it's so Loved it's like it. i was we were laughing at that from the whole time we were sitting back there laughing at everything just name dropping everyone and what he owns and what he does it's like, who gives a fuck Literally. shut the fuck up i don't give a fuck <laughs> fucking shut that? the fuck up Good. I mean, when money, he, fucking I need, and I need fucking him to stay it. around for a bit because it's too entertaining for him to uh it's too entertaining for him to go right now. Have you seen the Uzi? I mean, him, him coming around has definitely been a fucking. Uh, a, Have you read the description? A content of the video? factory. No, I haven't. Okay, I, I didn't read, even know he put it I'm out. I'm just gonna read this to you because this is fucking amazing. So this is a description to his four ghosts song. The top section of the description says vision board. Okay, he's got a vision board in the description of his video. Okay. Number one song on the Billboard Hot 100. <laughs> wow. Okay. No, the second one. 350 million views in under three months. Club banger. <laughs> no, no, he actually wrote this. Like, he sat somewhere and wrote this. On the radio in the entire world at least once a day. Manifest your dreams as I did. Help each other achieve each other's dream. Kill your ego. Literally, what is the thumbnail right here? The first frame. Him sitting on the phone in front of a uh, Ferrari with DJ Khaled on the phone because he's friends with famous people. <laughs> Kill your ego. Let July 15th live through four ghosts. Don't be scared to announce your dreams to the world. God is the greatest. And then, below that, I'm not going to read, is a fucking <laughs> huge paragraph, which ends. And this is my favorite part of the whole paragraph. It ends. <laughs> I have willed myself to be the guest on The Ellen Show on Friday the 20th to introduce myself to the world as Yusef, and then his full name, which I can't pronounce, the motivational speaker. <laughs> so he's, it's the same with the Drake thing. Yeah. He's actually not on The Ellen Show. He's written, I have willed myself. So he's saying, I'm believing so hard that I'm going to be on The Ellen Show that I'm confident enough to write here that on Friday the 20th, I'm going to be on The Ellen Show. Mm. 
I mean, and that's really the question is, will he take the inevitable failures on things like Fusicon on that? Because regardless of what he says, Fusicon would have been considered a failure at the end of the day because Drake realistically would not have shown up and there still would have been like a thousand people. His story about Drake was, I made eye contact with him. Yeah, that, that, dude. That's what the end of it was. Could yeah. you imagine? Oh, Drake didn't say anything to him. Bro, if that story happened to me and I was going to sit here and tell that story, I would be like, yeah, I went to the club and I saw Drake. <laughs> You know, like that would be the whole story. He took like 15 That's fucking like, minutes yeah. to tell that That's story. Tell that story. <laughs> Tweeting about it. He was like, everything. This whole thing was based on he made eye contact with He Drake. named like 40 people in the story, like different celebrities yeah. that he like. And this dude's manager, and, and this dude, and this dude's. And like, in the oh. story, everyone is like talking about God. Everyone is like, God, God will. God will allow that to happen. Like, who the fuck says that in real oh, life? Oh, yeah, I remember. I've heard, of that. I've heard up to that plot where one guy said, like, yeah. And I'm not I'm not even necessarily saying that he was lying, but it just seems sort of weird that all these things are happening. No, I mean, I believe he made eye contact with Drake. That's great. Yeah. A lot of people have made eye contact with Drake. That's not really that big a deal. Pretty much 200,000 mm -hmm. people that watch him at a concert have yeah. been there, you know? But the, okay, so that's the question for Fusi. Does he take the fact that he's not going to be on the Ellen show? And does he, on the inevitable failure of that, does he take that and like that causes him to go back into a deep depression and he shrivels up into a ball and stays in New Jersey and doesn't do anything? Or is he able to say, okay, fine, that's not something that's going to happen, but I'm still going to keep going. And still, you know, he just has to be a little bit well, more realistic. If it's, if, it's his, if it's bipolar shit, if he's really bipolar, which he said he is, <laughs> it's like what I saw when I experienced it with my friend that did it. It was like he'd go through a stage. Like every year it would happen. He'd go through like a stage for a couple months where he was just fucking that's doing what crazy does. fucking he's shit. Done that for so and then long. the rest of the year is just normal, super cool, super chill. Yeah. And then he just fucking... The rest of those couple months, he's just fucking full bore, fucking psychopath. I hope it continues. Like, I hope he's okay, and I hope like his health's okay, and he stays safe. But I honestly hope this continues at least for like a month because it's like I've been sitting here. My phone's been texted by a bunch of other people saying, "Thank you, Sam. Like, I'm so excited to see where this goes now. Like, we're all at the edge of our seats watching Fuzzy <laughs> Tube right now because." It's amazing. Like yeah. everything's amazing. Like that clip of him outside with the air, air, AirPods on, the fucking one of him praying to Allah uh, with dr uh, God's plan, pain in the towel, doing. And the he's Wolf he's Wolf when he's Street. praying, he's looking up. Yeah. Like really looking at God. That was so fucking uh, intense, man. And yeah, and he, uh, the Wolf of Wall Street chest pound, and I don't know, like. And him standing on top of the car with the crop top and the purple socks. Well, this on. was pretty exciting. This I, was amazing. I thought he, you guys were gonna. I thought he was gonna attack you for it real. It feels so good to be part of something <laughs> so, that's so clearly <laughs> gonna be legendary. Just sitting as fuck. there, and he's just over you, just fucking yelling it. I was just like, what the fuck, right now? It's so amazing. It, it feels like you're on the fucking Jerry Springer show, just to be part of something that crazy and it's real. Do you think um, he genuinely believes that um, I like in his head? Does he genuinely believe that I took the L in the situation? Like, is he actually walking away like, I fucked up Sam. Everyone in his chat from now on is going to say, Sam, you're an idiot. Well, he kind of like, has, like, the, more of that bro mentality, so calling you a bitch a bunch of times, mm -hmm. and you just, like, sitting there, and like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. But in his mind... Yeah, him is a win, in his mind, is now. In his mind, he will always take the W in every situation. It's, like, impossible for that. him to really conceive of him ever taking an L. Like, like Keemstar was trying to get him to say that he's at an all-time low in his career or whatever, and it was just not happening. He yeah. would not say it. No, he's on an all-time high. And I was saying, I'm like, you know, based on things that you can measure, like views and subscribers and shit, you know, you're not at the point that you used to be at and stuff. And he just could not, he could not acknowledge that or say that, you know? No. God. Which is weird. Like, you know, it's like, but that, I guess that's just who he is, is that we're all just kind of watching because we know that with this huge burst of energy that there inevitably will be like a decline, but... We all are kind of hoping that he could just pull it together. What he needs to do is somehow put a team together while he's doing good. And like, just needs yeah. a couple of people around him to be like, look, slow down. Yes, we can mm. do an event. Yes, you can put your message across. Look, this is what blew my mind was when I ho saw this whole campaign, <laughs> what did you guys think what, what it was going to be about? This is what I thought it was going to be like. 
I thought it was a clever ploy for him to drop an album, right? And I thought the album would be something where he, it, it's not going to make be necessarily good rap, but he's going to be putting forward all these messages about like positive and like about how the world's in a decline, talking about politics. Like I thought that's what was going to happen. I was fucking mind blown when it turned out to be a diss track to Rice Gum. <laughs> Can you think of anything more small harnessed in than that? Like oh, he's no. saying two million people are gonna watch the live stream. <laughs> you can't ta- get two million people to watch a live stream talking about Rice Gum. Like, uh, do you know what I mean? Getting Drake there for a Rice Gum, like who gives a fuck? Yeah. You know what would be the perfect ending to the whole thing is if he gets sued by Drake for putting his face on that flyer? Oh my god. Yeah. Possibility, honestly. I mean, yeah. it's such an obvious, like, illegal use of his image that, like, loses all his money, <laughs> sucking also, dick one day for fucking 20 bucks. <laughs> what, what I thought was. No, his, his boy Dennis wouldn't do that to him. <laughs> what I thought was kind of low, a low blow of him, and I don't know what he was expecting from this, was you know that text conversation he posted of Banks, and he says, please come, and Banks is like, look, I'm going to come, but don't let, like, don't disappoint me, right? The whole rap song is about clout, clout gang, which obviously Rice and, and, and Banks put together. Like, how do you think Banks would have felt if he was standing there side stage, had told people he was going to Fuzzy Tube's event, and he's standing there when his, one of his best friends is being held fucking abuse at on stage? Like, That's a really good point. Like, I, when I saw that text message <laughs> and then I saw that shit afterwards, I was like... What kind of backhanded shit is this? You're literally dissing Clout Gang in it. Yeah, because when Fousey Tube when Fousey Tube originally came here, the weird clip of me when I'm in the backyard with my shirt off, which is basically like I just thought it'd be funny to take my shirt off and just not say anything about it, so I just did that. And uh, then he ended up using me in the thumbnail for like confronting my biggest hater, and obviously I look like a fucking skinhead because there's this huge bald white guy, which is it's just so funny that he got that many views off that because it's just perfect. But uh. During that whole conversation, he played me the diss track, and he's like, what do you think? Should I premiere it? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you must. He did. He told me right after. He walked I was like, you have to. I was the yes man. <laughs> I was just he like, was do it. Yes <laughs> because why the fuck yeah, not? You know, it's fucking hilarious. How, why not? Thing. I was just like, yeah, man, fucking do it. I was like, you know what? The thing is, is that. It gives, uh, this is what I actually told him, and I think it's true. I'm like, it gives the world something to sink their teeth into so they have something to talk about. He was and, doing it anyway. And then at the end of the day, like after everything, then they get through to the message of peace and love that you're going for. But in reality, it's like doing a diss track about Rice Gum really kind of like negates his whole message about yeah. peace and love. And also, I just, I don't even think peace and love is a message because what do you do? Like, say you're an advocate for like veganism or like, you know, anti racism or whatever. It's like there's a very clear change that you're trying to make in the world. Like, being into peace and love is just like, yeah, no shit. Everybody likes peace and love. So, what? At the concert or the event was gonna change, and, and, well, yeah. and what 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 I was gonna end racism? This is, what, racism. <laughs> this is what, racism. what was gonna bring everybody in. What the fuck yeah, was gonna happen? That's my I think favorite it would have been even worse because <laughs> you know how we all were hoping this positive thing. I think this is what would have happened. He would have come out on stage, and for however you know how he rant like he goes like when he starts talking he starts yeah. going for however long he would have ranted forty five minutes about positivity. And then after all of that, he would have turned around, drop it, DJ, and then he would have done the rice gum <laughs> diss track in front of everyone. It would have been just amazing. Like the transition from like the positivity to the rice gum diss track, then and there, like coming from his mouth, would have just been fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll see it another day. He's never uh, going to premiere the diss track now, right? He'll do another event, but he won't sing the diss track. I don't know. I mean, he put it on YouTube, right? Yeah, it's up. I mean, as much as he says, like, oh, I'm not governed by views anymore. I don't care about views or whatever. It still seems like he's pretty much just, like, trying to make a bunch of clickbait yeah. vlogs. And he, like, you know, a diss track is just something that you only do if you want to get a bunch of views. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes you feel like he's just kind of, like, telling himself what he wants to hear and that in reality it's like he's pretty much doing the exact same things that he's always been doing and i mean at the end of the day through all this it's like he got a bunch of good content so whatever right how does a concert end racism (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> it's funny too that he was saying he was upset about the song lyrics that the rappers were doing because they were saying like you know fucking on your pussy sucking my dick blah 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 all this shit and uh it's gonna happen you know and he was like oh no that's like not what this concert's about this is about ending racism and peace and love man it's fucking idiot <laughs> I love that you're just coming out the closet as not being a Pussy Tube fan. Yeah, I mean, he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's super nice and whatever. But I'm sure his intent was it? good. But he's, as an outside perspective, as someone that is a nobody, I don't really give a fuck. He's a fucking idiot. Do you like want him to disappear? Sounds like a, douche. Sound like a douchebag. Well, even though you think he's an idiot, do you want him to disappear right now or do you want to see where this goes? Oh, no, yeah, I'll keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's I, great, I right? I, you, Adam knows that. I'll yeah. sit here all day. And that's why, that, it on that's why I think the world's starting to learn that as well. And I think YouTube didn't used to be like that back in the day. People yeah. were like, get rid of them. And like, it wouldn't surface because like there'd be so much hate. But now I think people are getting smarter and they kind of troll and will it on. So like, yeah. they'll be like, yeah, Fousey, like, you've got to do another show. Like, we've got to see it. But yeah. really, like, they're just they're baiting him. Yeah, no, I'll yeah. be, I'll, I'll be that actual guy, and I, I was almost tempted to say it when I was sitting here next to him, like, dude, you sound like a douche. Just stop. <laughs> I'd say it to Adam. If Adam was doing some weird shit, like Adam, stop. You look like a fucking idiot. Yeah, I say it to him all the time. You're good for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what I would say is that it's kind of says a lot that I don't think any of his fans were upset. That I think all his fans pretty much felt like they saw what they kind of got, like yeah. it being a disaster. Was pretty much like par I mean, for the was, course, yeah, and everybody sort expected, of seemed. Expected by I was happy with it. Oh yeah. The diss track has even forty thousand thumbs up and fourteen thousand down. So there's Not forty thousand people out there <laughs> that are still were like, oh wow, like thank you, Fousey, like yeah. for this. So you know, there are people out there. Um, but Jesus, I mean, I wonder whether we're going to be invited to the next show if he puts one on. I hope so. Oh, well, even after this podcast, yeah, I think for sure. I mean, he doesn't. I mean, uh, he doesn't seem scared of a an honest analysis of what the fuck's no. going on in yeah. his head. No, he doesn't. It doesn't matter. That's why. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. Whatever happens, like it's just what what we think doesn't matter. Because I always like <clears throat> my initial interest in Fusi Tube was hate watching his content like i just watched it and i thought yeah, yeah yeah what the fuck is wrong with this guy and what the fuck is wrong with the millions of people who watch it i was determined to watch it until i could understand to some extent why this was happening or like why this shit was popular you know like yeah and it, it just took me a long time and i just i feel lucky to like have been privy to just watching all this insanity unfold but uh, yeah, it has always just been strange to me that so many people watch this stuff. But I get, you know, a lot of people just identify with what he's going through, where he goes through a lot of depression and just feeling meaningless and all this kind of stuff. But at the same time, obviously, that is his also, his a lot undoing. Of be led. Like a lot of people want to, uh, like they they're a little lost in their lives, oh. and if they can watch someone who will tell them how to live their life, it's easier for them to. You know, okay, if I follow these step by step, he's telling me that I'm gonna be happy if I do this. I'm pretty fucking miserable in my life. I'm worth giving anything to draw, and they buy into it, you know? I mean, yeah, it's pretty audacious to go out there and to just say, this is about peace and this is about love, and actually expect people to take you serious. Because could you imagine if I went outside and started saying that, what people would think about me if I made a fucking video right now where I was like, peace and positivity, inspiration? Everybody would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because people know me to be like yeah. a pretty, like, honest person yeah, yeah and for him to just go out the fact that he's able to go out there to whatever extent it almost surprises me sometimes that he hasn't gone into like religion to some well, extent of like being some sort of like person like raising money or something because he seems like he can just sort of do that but then i was thinking about it, i'm like that would really limit him mm. like the modern day religion is he not should, it's uh, not religion it's just positive energy you should go into uh, QVC commercials because I think he'd definitely be able to sell me a good project, like pro like product. He's like, mm. he's got the energy. He can name drop other people that use the product. Yes. He's got like the power. He's a salesman. Yeah, yeah, he's a salesman. That's yeah. what he is. Fousey is a salesman. He's I a mean, salesman who became a YouTuber by accident because he just sort yeah. of saw it as an as yeah. like oh, I'm gonna try to do that. Yeah. When I think about like the attributes that would make somebody like a natural daily vlogger, I mean bipolar shit whatever that's definitely like not a thing that you can really have to be a successful daily vlogger but he still took it up anyway 
I just it, it wasn't necessarily to me like the most natural calling for him. He just found his way in, and that's why it's been so bizarre watching his whole saga. Is because he's just not the kind of person that can that can really do the daily vlogging thing, but he needs to to be a successful YouTuber, and then it just inevitably kind of goes off the rails, and you get to watch it happen. God, if he did live stream and it'd be done. Oh my God, that's another fucking hit. I wanna. That's what I think. That's what I should work on him with. I think for what he should do is he should do like half a day streaming with Fuzzy Tube, and then after that. He should go live with Isis fans watching him go live for the first time IRL. Mm. That would, and Isis just like, okay, leave the house now. You're a free bird. Let's go and see you do your IRL stream. To see him do that would just be amazing. <laughs> I would love to see that. Fuji Tube IRL for like a whole day. Mm. I'd watch every minute. I would love to just know what happened. Like if he had a schedule and he actually stuck to it and you actually get to see whatever he was going through, it'd be pretty fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Seems like kind of a weird experiment, but you know, why not? Yeah. I mean, I, you look at somebody like Ice, he's just like a very like steady person. He like wakes up in the morning and he just sort of goes about his shit. Ethan. Kind of an ideal personality type for a daily streamer, you know? I guess you too. You seem pretty measured as an Englishman. <laughs> I try to be. It's, fuck, it's taxing. Live streaming right. is fucking taxing on your life because you don't have any privacy. But you know what I feel like is even more interesting though is like as a British person that it's kind of even more out of the ordinary for you to be walking around with a stick with a camera filming yourself all the time that that kind of thing is almost like more looked down upon uh, I over. Look fucking stupid. Yeah, if I walked through London with this, people would just be like, what the fuck is You, you wouldn't do it there? No, I would. I absolutely It would stand would. out way more. The, when you start live streaming, you learn to just fucking give a fuck about how you look at all. Yeah. They know everything about you. They know your most fucking... If you fucking sneeze and snot comes down your face, <clears> there's no <throat> editing that shit out. That's there, you know? Mm. Like, forever. So you start to... You definitely lose a lot of your, fuck, your, your ego and your... Like, oh, God, how do I look today? After a while, when you vlog, you're all like, how's this angle? Is the lighting good? Uh, like, let me cut this up to make me look as good as a <coughs> possible as a person. When you live stream, it's f you, you catch a lot more love and a lot more hate because people see every fucking side of you. You're good and you're bad. And they forget that other people get to edit all that shit out and make themselves look however you... I did it, you know, I was a blogger. Yeah, but you as a person who's kind of... You saw, like pretty much the pinnacle of like vlogging success at that time in your career what makes you want to do the streaming thing now rather than chase after doing like the regular youtuber thing that you used to that you've actually like yeah. proven to be able to do i think the main thing uh for me is as time's grown on i i i think with a lot of kids as well is apps and social media has changed so i think vine was a big pinnacle of this it was six second content okay then snapchat stories then instagram stories everything's instant everything's like this and when it when it comes to me i find it very hard to work long term on a project and with youtube videos it would be like a week of thinking up the idea then a couple of days of filming then a couple of days of editing and then maybe a week after that an upload and it's just that ADHD uh, kind of lifestyle that, that's in, like, in this generation now. With live streaming, it's fucking instant. I was at the, the, the event yesterday, and you said it yourself. You said, I feel like such a fucking, like I feel weird right now because I'm vlogging, and people aren't going to get to see this until hours after the, well, you did a fucking fast edit. I don't know how you did that. Yeah, but my girlfriend was not happy about yeah, that. She went home and started cleaning, and I went home and started editing, and she was so pissed I wouldn't help her clean because I wanted to get that shit up ASAP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so like normally Sorry. it would be the next day. Yeah. And with live streaming, I was walking around with a stick and I was like, all of these people here that are, are vlogging right now, it's kind of irrelevant because everyone who needed to see it has seen it now. Mm. Uh, and I think that, and, and that plus the fact that it's instant, instant interaction. So if I'm somewhere and they don't like that, they can tell me, Sam, this is fucking boring, move on. Or Sam, we, we want you to go to No Jumper and confront FuzzyTube. I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the live streaming mentality and them saying that, so. I heard that from uh, Ice too, where he said that like, he can't make vlogs now 
because he needs that chat. Like he needs to know that there's people watching what he's doing because like the chat motivates him to keep going. Yeah. He said he's like he wouldn't really know what to do if he just went out and tried to make a vlog, which they I thought was really shit. interesting. Like at the end but of the day, I'm like, okay, like um, sometimes they do, sometimes they're good about it. Like, like sometimes at the end of the day, they're like, no, keep streaming. We want to see this. We want to see this. But sometimes, like the other day, I was with these two chicks. And my friend was kind of like getting it in with one of the chicks and the sh chat was like, end the stream, end the stream, end the stream. Because they knew that if we ended the stream, then he could go off and smash. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. they have our backs when we need it. But also a lot of the time they want the content and they want us to film a lot of stuff. So yeah, yeah definitely the chat is, it, and it, what, it, what, it, it makes it rewarding. Because mm. when you do something cool and you see that fucking, that spree of like messages, you're like, fuck yeah. Like, that's fucking content. I Never mind the do. donations. Like, they, like if you do something cool, then they fucking just donate a bunch of money, and you're, exactly. it's like literally like, oh, my bank account just went up because I did something cool on stream. Yeah, I, and the fact, not even that, the fact that someone's sitting at home who's just willing to fucking drop you a, like a hundred dollars because they were sitting there and they were like, that was sick. Like that brought me happiness, and I want you to have this as a thank you. You're like, no fucking way. Like, you, like that's awesome. Yeah. Like to see to see that, or just even the chat and like, just you know, appreciation for people. We put, like streamers, especially Ice. Uh, he's put a, a lot of his life out there, and he ta he takes a lot of heat for that as well as love. Uh, you gotta have an appreciation for the for it, and and that's why I can never like. Just iced for me is just like when I saw that, as you said, I've seen the whole vlogging shit. I've, uh, you know, I've been around the fucking clout gang. I've, you know, I used to live <coughs> at the house. I spent time with banks. I spent time with all of these fucking influencers who are at the top of that fucking game. And when I saw Ice, he had 400,000 subscribers, and I've never seen a fan base like his in his yeah. whole in my whole my whole fucking nine years of doing YouTube shit. He's so so small in this in, in in numbers compared to all these people, and he has so like anything like he can just need something and it's there. Like the fans are the most craziest. Like like that's so smart. That's so witty. That's so funny, and they're just so fucking loyal. Yeah. Like they're just there, and that <coughs> is for me. That was like whoa like what this guy has created is revolutionary and give it a year people won't be vlogging like mm. i honestly believe it give it a year people won't be vlogging that'd be daily live streaming yeah i mean i definitely see it just the the vlogging thing is slowly starting to seem like this sort of like old-fashioned thing in comparison to just strap because it's so easy to do this now yeah and when paul used to have the fucking big ass camera on the weird fucking tripod and everything and he was doing it it seemed a lot more like unattainable but now the motherfuckers just use phones and shit it's just like way easier and i don't know i still like doing the vlog thing but like for us at the event the other day it was weird like we're both making vlogs of yeah, it yeah. and then at the same time we got fucking we're hondro live just it. live streaming yeah. the whole thing yeah. so like there's a big segment of people that didn't net probably have to watch the videos afterwards even though it is cool to see like that compilation of the moments afterwards yeah 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 uh, at the end of the day i find that when i have him do a real vlog with the with the good camera and then i do an iphone vlog and then we also do a live stream it doesn't fucking matter they all get a shitload of views people are thirsty as fuck for something cool to watch yeah it's all content people want to watch something it's always different stuff in it anyway and it's like interesting to them to see what the differences are probably to the videos too i feel like yeah and it's like you might get a little less views per video because, but you get more in total. So fuck it, it's more shit. I'm gonna head out because my I literally left my girl at Ice's house. Which is a bit of a <laughs> Came out here on a, a mission. A little bit of a worrying for. Nice. Um, so I'm gonna go save her. And it was well. Thanks for letting me come in. You. No, no, my pleasure. It was great to get to hear so your perspective on everything, my man. Yeah, I think now at this point, we're just going to get into doing what we normally do on this stream, and we're going to play some motherfucking music for donations. That's what we normally do. And then, Chris, I hate to tell you, but as soon as we end this, we're going to have to start chopping clips. Because we're going to have to get a bunch of shit split up for this shit. You might as well get that motherfucking editor kid over here. Let's hit him up. Let's hit his bitch ass up, see if he wants to fucking get over here and help us. Uh, well, does it really matter? Yeah, because we're going to be sending it to different laptops. What'd you say? He's in Virginia. What a bitch. All right, I'm going to stop.